ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these, but, 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 but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Yeah, you know the deal. We back again. Yo. A round of applause for Jersey's finest. A lot of content creators not worthy, but they minus. They get offended and start singing like the whiners. Talking like they tough, but it's only screaming and whining. My homie just do us to catch you don't come to Your squad get run through by the time you come to you duck food You suckers talk tough on the internet Revealing all your threats now we got you trapped in the net Just do be on this grind y'all better hustle up You dead lifted 90 pounds we doing muscle ups There's really no comparison His voice sound like a derringer Throwing a towel it's just embarrassing My dog just very philosophical and psychological and he mixed it all with good boxing news. These YouTubers feel like Bishop, I guess they got the juice. But it's lonely at the top to just to feel like child abuse. Be respectful, he don't want to talk wild and loose. If you can't relate, you get dismissed like a mild dispute. These weird cats will tell lies, did they hide the truth? Why beyond views? You lose your life when you collide with dude. It's just do boxing. Or you cowards quit jocking. Kirk is official with no other options. Yeah, yeah. You know the deal. Judah Ben, we in the spot. Just do boxing. Yeah. And of course, shout out to Mrs. Doom. Holding the whole family down. Word them up, word them up. What's good? What's good? Salute. Salute to the fam on this good Tuesday. We back to get boxing is just due. Y'all already know. If you catch this on the playback, smash the like button, sub to the channel, turn your notifications on, and come rock out with the fam. What's good with everybody, man, on this uh, rainy Tuesday? How y'all feeling? All things was good, bro. How you feeling? Miss Joette, peace to the queen. How you feeling today? Trey skills in the building was good, fam. Mike Kirkland, my bro. How you feeling? Cash Crypto was good, bro. Justin James, JBT family in the building. Fight game was good with it, bro. Lonnie Lee, JBT family in the building. Kyle Cooley, peace and blessings to my guy. How you feeling, fam? Salute to everybody, man. Y'all smash the like button. We going to build a little bit. You know, man, y'all already know what the hot topic is. But for me, I'm getting a little annoyed with the um, with the Earl Spence's damaged goods talk. And he need to retire. I mean, we, it's just like we had this conversation before. Thrill Hill, what's good with it, bro? How you feeling? I just think it's it's... I don't know, it's in bad taste to at least not allow this man to get back in the ring and, and somewhat redeem himself, so to speak. Salute to my baby girl, Miss Just Do It. You snuck in here, didn't you? You snuck in. And I, I you know, I just think um again, this is this is kind of one of the reasons. It's a prime example of why you don't give people what they want. You get what I'm saying? This is you couldn't get no better than you know, getting that fight and, and getting it out the way. And it's like the only thing a lot of these people, and most of them are, I, I, I would believe Terrence called for fans. Frontline was good with a fan. And it's just like, you're not allowing this dude 
to even get back in the ring. The sight of him getting in there with Fundora got people tweeting and mad and complaining and, you know, staring up more false narratives and duck talk. And I really ain't trying to hear it, you know. I mean, people should just educate themselves on the business of boxing and, and a lot of these moves, I think, can make more sense. You know, I think I hear them saying, um, you know, Earl Spence is following the trend that Loma set, which is, you know, getting a title shot after you lose. But shit, you know, they've been doing it for Loma for how long? So, you know, seeing Earl Spence get an opportunity after a loss ain't the worst thing in the world. I'm not trying to hear it. I'm not about to cry for nobody. You get what I'm saying? Uh, I, again, I was saying it yesterday. I don't think it's the, uh, uh, a matter of the PBC trying to freeze anybody out. I think it's a matter of loyalty. And that's just that simple when you look at it. You know, who who are, who have they been invested in for years on end? Who has been easy to work with? Who has done nothing but deliver time and time and time again? Who who the guy, you know, chasing down the most dangerous opposition, you know, after getting thrown from cars and stuff like that. So you think this man has sacrificed his body literally to still give people the right fights, going against his advice, his advisor team and, and still to deliver a fight, giving up way more than he should have to give us a fight. And the only thing People could say after the fight is over, oh, he got his ass whooped. I told y'all he one dimensional. He basic. He need to retire. He damaged goods. I, I'm I'm really not trying to hear none of that, man. At least allow that man another opportunity in the ring to see where he at, and you go from there. But I mean, they said the same thing about Miguel Cotto. You get what I'm saying? He got beat up and he got cheated, which we know he did with Margarito with them hand wraps, right? He looked bad. His face was is a bloody mess in the ring, right? People say he was done. What did he do? He came back. Not only did he come back, he avenged the loss, you know what I mean, and beat the hell out of Margarito and went on to do some other great things in the sport. So miss me with the, you know, he damaged goods. I mean, if you wanted to really speak about damaged goods, Aisha, peace and blessings to the queen. How you feeling today? You want to say damaged goods. I mean, you should have said that the minute he got thrown from a damn car. If we being honest, like the first time he got damaged, it wasn't even in no damn fight for real. It was being thrown from the car. So you want to speak, you know, damaged goods talk. You know, you should have been saying it after that because I don't care, you know, how, how you know, tough you think you are or how tough you think he is. You know, he he t and then you know what's crazy? Earl spends so much of the truth. Like he really got the perfect nickname for more reasons than one. It ain't just him fighting in the ring. It's just he embodies what it means to be the truth. The dudes even said it to people. He said, you get thrown from a car and see if you be the same. He's been telling people for years. He said it in the buildup of the fight with Terrence, him and Terrence Crawford. He said, Terrence Crawford, I made a video on it. Terrence Crawford should be the favorite. I mean, you, it don't get no realer than that. Like, he, this, is, this dude really is the truth. And the only thing. Us, a lot of us, and not meaning us in particular, but when I say us, I mean in the boxing community. A lot of y'all, the only thing y'all echoing is retiring. He done. And like it's something funny about, you get what I'm saying? His situation, he went and gave us a fight. He lost. So what? You move on. Yeah, the rematch didn't take place. But again, the same people that's complaining, you get what I'm saying, are the same ones that were saying they didn't want to see a rematch. They didn't need to see it. You get what I'm saying? They was worried for Earl. They don't, don't, we don't need a rematch. You know, it was too one-sided. Earl need to move on. Then when he move on, you you complain? Like, I, I just, you can't make this up, man. You just got to get this man more credit than that. Don, what it do, family? How you feeling? Al Booger in the building. What's good, bro? 12 threes in the building. Macho, my guy. What's good with it, bro? <laughs> we could bet 100K on that. He said, let's bet a million. <laughs> I remember that. Bruce Gass, salute to the OG William Old School, my brother. Sly in the building was good with it. Caption is crazy talk. What's that? I don't know what you mean. Tasmanian Wolves was good with it. Virgil Ortiz versus Earl Spence is a very ideal. Why can't that fight happen? Stupid fights are being made. I think, to be honest, I think, um, you know, once he actually gets to 54, I do think that's a realistic fight. But for me right now, just looking at it, if, if I had to put, you know, something on it, I would say they, they, they very much still trying to see where Virgil Ortiz is at, I think, personally, health-wise. mean, you know, reason being, if you see the last fight that he had, it was against, uh, who was that, Frederick Lawson. That was somebody that, that was like a showcase fight, and rightfully so, because he'd been, you get what I'm saying? He'd been out of the mix for a minute, so I, I knew he wasn't going to get thrown in there with no killer. Uh, I forget the name of his next opponent that he's supposed to fight, Virgil Ortiz. Damn. 
but more than likely he gonna he gonna stop this dude too. I forget. Damn, I forget the name of his opponent. I hate that. It'll come to me, man. But yeah, so right now I think they really still testing to see just how healthy Virgil Ortiz is, respectfully. So I don't think they'll throw him in a fight like that. And I think people still want to see where Earl Spence is. Like it's a it's a it's a lot to unpack with this situation, but we, we definitely gonna build on all of it. You know what I mean? Um a lot of people still questioning his health, and that's fair. That's a fair question. But how do you get a question answered? How how are we gonna get the answer to the question if you don't allow Earl Spence to get an opportunity? If soon as he he know he throw his hand back in the hat, his name back in the hat, you know people crying. Ah, oh, he need to retire. Ah, oh, he oh this is this is this is the you know. This is what how they do you after the title shot. I guess everybody need to uh you know get beat up and they get a title shot. Like I ain't trying to hear that. This is low. He won. He lost one fight. Think about how many fights he won before that. He gave you title fight after title fight. The minute that he get another opportunity to be great, I'm not gonna sit here as a boxing fan and complain. And I love Terence Crawford too. So if he was to get the fight, then so be it. Let's see it then. You get what I'm saying? But I'm not here to be crying about you know, the opportunities. I just want to see the fights. And I think that's what people lose sight of at the end of the day. You're not going to tell me Fondora and, and Spence ain't going to be a fun fight to watch. And it's just not a guaranteed win. And the reason being is because there's so many unknowns, which is why you would want to see the fight. So the same people that said, nah, I don't want to see the rematch. Why don't you allow him? Did you say he need to take a fight or tune up in between and see how he look? Well, all right, there you go. You got an opportunity he fight if he's to fight Fondora, maybe that opens the door for a rematch for him and Earl for a belt at 50, 54. I just don't, I think people short sighted. I, I don't know. These are the same people that was saying it'd be hard to sell a rematch, right? It'd be hard to sell a rematch because of what happened in the first fight. He need to get a get back or a tune up fight to show what, what he still got left. Exactly. Well, Fondora is that. What better test than to get in there with a dude that's six foot five and a half and, 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 and try to break him down like Earl Spence known to do? I just think it's a good fight, and I think it's very distasteful for boxing fans to be claiming, you know, damaged goods. They all damaged goods. They all damaged goods. They you, they all take punishment at the end of the day. They all damaged goods. It's just different levels of it. They all been through it. But still to this day, now, Terrence Crawford, yeah, that was his worst physical beat down in the ring. But still to this day, his biggest battle, his big, the, the most damage that I think he sustained that we can't measure on a, on a sheet of paper is him being thrown from the car. So if you wanted to cry damaged goods, you should have been crying it then, man. That gave that man an opportunity to resume his career. I'm not trying to hear it, man. That man gave us nothing but the right fight after right fight after right fight. Even when it was the best against his best interest, he still delivered. And that's and that, that's the guy that you support, win, lose, or draw. That ain't somebody you shit on and demand that he retire without even seeing him again. That's all it took. One loss and he done. His career is over, huh? He can't fight no more. Man, just like Earl Spence said, man, miss me with that retirement shit. I ain't going nowhere, bro. Salute to my baby girl putting a color in the chat. I will support you always, but I love when I see color in your chat because you are dope and you're giving the people dope content. Facts over fiction. Much love to my baby girl. You know it. That's how we do it over here, man. Y'all smash that like button. We and we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these, but, 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 but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Salute to the fam in the building. I just had to. I had Earl Spence. If if nothing else, man, he damn sure gonna get his just due over here. And and I and not like I said, it's never these bills ain't ain't to protect the fighter. He's a damn good fighter in his own right. He don't need me to protect him at the end of the day. He could care less what somebody talking about. He gonna do him. But I think conversations like this need to be had. I don't see one reason in the world why this man can't be allowed another fight to see exactly where he at now. Now, again, cool. He getting that fight, and it's for some reason, he looking like Stir Fry, and, and, and Fundora just have his way with Earl Spence, and he make him look like he don't belong in a boxing ring. Then you revisit that conversation. Then that's a more fitting conversation because you will say you don't want to see him continuously taking punishment. You get what I'm saying? You figure him being out of weight class, he should be a little more healthy. Now, I mean, like Paulie said, be able to breathe a bit more and it should be a, a better look for him overall. So at least allow him that opportunity. You get what I'm saying? Like, how, why is it when anybody else is so-called weight drained or whatever the case had a fight, they, they take a fight and lose. They can't come back. And I get it. He's 33 years old. I understand. But everybody's different. Everybody is different. I mean, look, people wrote him off right when he got thrown from the car. Remember? 
he was different. He was never going to be the same. And that they were true. That was true to a certain extent. But he still defied the odds, got in there, and continue, continued to win some big fights before ultimately losing to the best fighter in the world right now in Terrence Crawford. It's just that simple. Ace, what's good with it, family? Oh, the Mexican at my job thing. Pitbull, the number one fighter in the world right now. Hey, man, Pitbull has arrived, man. We're going to talk about Pitbull a little bit, too. Salute to my baby girl, 12 3 said, Mexican don't come to work on Monday. <laughs> they said, hell with that. <laughs> we think he got victory. <laughs> Pitbull won. That's over with. You know what I mean? We ain't going to work. No, holiday. Next gen, what it do, family? How you feeling, 12 threes? And the base I got that old T. Edgar hey, Chavez in the building. How you feeling, Jersey in the building? What's good with it? You don't believe that title? Oh, what? The damaged goods thing? No, nah, hell no. No, I don't believe it. That's why, you know, I throw the title in there because that's what I'm hearing. So, you know, I'm going to throw that question mark. Nice, bright, and red. Hell no. Spence going to get his just do over here. Don't mess with Texas in the building. Silver Rider Low. What's good with it, fam? How y'all feeling? Nah, he, it, it's like, and I really mean this about him. Like, I really rock with him. The first time this man loses, it, it, that's what we doing? Like, y'all act like he, and this is for just for the people that's talking to retirement shit. You act like he lost to a bum. He lost, that's, that's Terrence Crawford. That's elite level competition. So you telling me this man is not even allowed to get in there with somebody that's not going to be as good as Terrence Crawford and see where he at? You get what I'm trying to say? It ain't like he lost to some run-of-the-mill fighter. You get what I'm saying? Think about where Terrence Crawford is at. Losing to him is not a bad thing. 39 other dudes lost to him as well. You get what I'm saying? Kyle Sports, JBT in the building. What's good with it, my guy? Great build, by the way. Fight game. What's good with it, fam? Feel me? Listen, I, I, I don't care how people feel about this. I, that man going to get his credit. I don't, I don't think I'm saying nothing crazy. You got to build build these fighters up. Why shit on them and throw them out the door after one loss? You don't want to see them again. Again, when remember they cried Mario Barrios was weight drained and, and he got knocked out, right? He got knocked out by Tank. First and only time he been knocked out. Look how he went on the look. And I get it, he ain't 33, but you get my drift. He got an opportunity to get back at it, and he went on to win some some damn good fights. Now he looking better than ever. That tank went looking better than ever. Mario Barrios looking like, you know what I mean, one of the players at 47. You get what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I think it's just crazy talk, man. Get that man his flowers. He went out there, and this is part of the, this. This is the part that these casual people, I don't, I don't know if they casual. It's just the way they think is casual. This is part of the game. What do y'all think happens when you get in there with the absolute best? A loss is, is possible. It's very possible. You even heard Earl Spence talking about losing in the in the room. You heard him talking about it. I ain't never heard him talk about it. I thought it was a little odd, the timing of it. But he was acknowledging the it's the real possibility, yo, I could lose this fight. You get what I'm saying, man? That's part of the game. You lose and you get back at it. You don't say, ah, nah. All the work I put in, you know, and I get it, the injuries and all that stuff, but still allow that man one opportunity at the bare minimum to get in that ring and show you that he's still the truth, man. That's just where I'm at with it. I'm not against him getting no opportunities. I'm not about to sit here and, and, and cry that a guy that gave us fight after fight after fight. And again, Mr. No Tune Up himself, the guy that didn't want to fight no tune ups. The first time he actually take a loss because he doing stuff that probably don't even suit him best physically. Sitting at that weight class that long. He knew all of that shit. He knew it was risk. He still went in there. Guns blazing and took his L like a man and had to be saved from himself because he damn sure wasn't going to quit in there. Oh, man, that's the dude that you applaud, man. And I don't give a damn. If he go out there, he go out there and mess around and he lose to lose again. I will look at him no different. He'll still be the truth to me in every way, shape, or form. It's just what it is, bro. Losses is part of the game, bro. You know what I mean? And, and boxing ain't forever. So, you know what I mean? That prime don't last for, forever either. And one could argue his prime was somewhat shortened because of the, the, the outside the ring things and, you know, obviously the accidents and stuff like that. So, I don't know, man. Just get that man a shot to get back in it. And I like his attitude. Miss me with that retirement shit. He ready to get back in there. And with a six foot five and a half guy coming off a, a not only a loss, knockout loss, his first loss, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> in another layoff, that's not a guy that you applaud. See, we too short sighted because we too busy crying foul play on this, you know, and you know, against Terrence Crawford. That's not the case. Think about what that man would be risking right now. Off a of knockout loss, getting right back in there with a guy that's coming off a pretty solid win, you know, 
shaky and questionable in some areas, but you know, he came off a damn good win over Tim Zoo. So I don't know, man. I'm not against it. Lonnie Lee, my guy, man. Much love, always supporting the grind. Salute to you, bro. Just do spins. No spins better than we do. So if he wants to fight people, just say it his speech. You get what I'm saying? And he said it best. Lonnie missed me with that retirement shit. I'm not trying to hear that. Like you don't get the call. You don't get the <laughs> you don't get to retire me, bro. Yeah, I know I got my ass whooped, but I'm about to get back in there and somebody else gonna have to do it. And, I, and that's the attitude I like. And, and any other time we would applaud this kind of energy because it's Earl Spence, it's like, nah, he don't deserve a shot. He just got his ass whooped. What why if Fundora is ducking, Fundora is ducking Crawford. First it was Tim Zoo was ducking Crawford. Now and now it's Fundora. And then at the same time, Crawford is ducking boots, man. Miss me with all that duck talk, man. This business and these dudes is looking for the best opportunity possible, especially if you're a guy that's 33 years old like Earl Spence. And damn for sure, if you're a 36-year-old guy that soon to be 37 like, like Terrence Crawford. And we ain't never got to box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back, but, 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 but now it's time friend, for yeah. you to get your just do. Ken Norton got a shot at heavyweight champion George Foreman right after he beat my, by Muhammad Ali. You get what I'm saying? Talk to him, Bruce Gass. And Bruce Gass got a wealth of boxing knowledge. That I know. 704 Joe in the building was good with it, man. With the rumors of Earl having to run in Vegas the week of the fight to make 147. I'm going to see how he looks at 54. That's all we saying next gen. Just give him an opportunity, bro. How, again, like boxing at least owe him that. Look how much he sacrificed and gave to the sport. No complaints, no nothing. Took his lumps, took his ass whooping, congratulated that man and, and slid and went to live life. That, that's how you do it. That's how, so again, that's how we do the fighters that give us what we say we want, which is the best fights possible. That's how we do them, shit on them. He lose, giving us the 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 most, the best fight he could have gave us. Oh, nah, yeah, retire. Yeah, it's, it's over for him. Yeah, he, he done. Damaged goods, yeah. I don't want to see him again. Why the hell not? You a damn life. I don't want to see him again. I know what I seen in there, and I know what I didn't see. And I know for sure from, from that fight, I damn sure want to see what he's going to look like at 54. And I think most people should, too. Real boxing fans should want to see him again to see where he at. B-Dog, what's good with it, fam? I'm going to show you nothing but facts. Appreciate you, Ace. Much love. You asked me, you look drained and unhealthy. And the Crawford fight, he like he rehydrated terribly, too, bro, for what it's worth. For my eyes, Trey, you know what I mean? He did. So, and again, not to take it, this is nothing to take from Terrence Crawford. That dude went out there and he was on, I mean, that was the A++ plus 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 game. You get what I'm saying? He was like a man possessed. Him and Bo Mack put together the best game plan I think you could have put, put together against a guy like Earl Spence. And he executed to perfection. So that's none of this what I'm saying about what Earl Spence was or wasn't is a discredit. Terrence Crawford in any way, you know what I'm saying? And people need to lay off that he ducking boots talk too, man, because it's a whole conversation that, to be had with that. I just don't I don't look at it that way. I would love to see that fight, but I it's not I don't think it's as simple as him ducking. PLG ski was good with it, fam. Shelton was good with it. Earl needs to prove himself that he's still Earl. You get what I'm saying, Shelton? And how do we do that? Get that man an opportunity to fight somebody. You get what I'm saying? Ashley's corner was good with it, cuz oh. How you feeling? Um Dre Finest was good with it. He say I'm late, but I look good. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Robert should go train EJ. Yeah, Robert Garcia did say, I think it's a video I could play if y'all are interested in hearing it. Robert Garcia said he was willing to train Earl Spence. Barbara D, peace and blessings to the queen. How you feeling today? Hope you're doing well. He said EJ and Danny Garcia are the last of the PBC alumni. That was... That was there when they went from Fox to Showtime. Now you got that seniority at PBC. You get what I'm saying? To 812, man. He sacrificed a lot for them as well, man. They got him to fights and he delivered, what is it, 29 times, I believe, before. You get what I'm saying? 28, what is it, 29? No. You get what I'm saying? One loss is not bad, man. So they, they and again, salute to PBC and his, and his family over there for not having the mentality of some of these boxing fans trying to throw that man away. And, and not only that being, but being willing to put him in position to get another meaningful opportunity. I'm not against it, bro. And I, listen, I understand everybody's point. I heard a lot of different arguments and takes on this. It's all good. I heard people make excellent, uh, you know, positions for Terrence Crawford. To me, it's not an Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford type of thing. I'm just looking at it like I appreciate what the man gave to the sport. And the minute that he, he stumbled and take a loss, 
It's like, nah, don't give him another chance. He he don't deserve this. Don't miss me with that deserve. Deserve is a is a weird word to use in the sport of boxing, bro. You can't tell me the, the guy that, that missed the no tune up himself don't deserve some. Well, you get what I'm saying? You can't tell me the guy that sacrificed and just gave you what you were supposed to get as a fight fan don't deserve some shit. You think you get what I'm saying? One loss, oh yeah, yeah, he don't deserve, yeah, yeah, he don't deserve this. We look what Fundora just did. He just got knocked out. I get it. It wasn't as one sided as Earl, but miss me with that. A knockout loss is a knockout loss. He got knocked out. Mendoza caught him and knocked him out in a fight he was winning. Cool. We get it. But he still got knocked out. He got back in there. We get the cut. I, I think if the cut didn't happen, I think Tim Zoo would have won. But that didn't happen. The cut did happen. You get what I'm saying? And Fundora found a way to win. He boxed and did some things very well in there. So it is what it is. He came back off a knockout loss. And Earl Spence is, is I get it, he older. He been through more and more mileage. I understand all that. But the man defied the odds once. Let's at least give him the opportunity to see if he could do it again. And against the dangerous, wiry-ass guy like Fundora. You get what I'm saying? That's a dangerous fight. That's not a, a gimme for anybody, right? As we just learned with Tim Zoo and Fundora, because people like myself was expecting Tim Zoo to pull it out. You get what I'm saying? So I just ain't against guys getting opportunities when you showed that you sacrificed, you gave us the fights you're supposed to get as a fighter. Why wouldn't they give you an opportunity? Why wouldn't you? That's how you treat the guy that 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 do right by you. Loyalty. You know what I mean? Never gave you a reason to question him. Always got in there and gave us the right fights, man. I'm going to keep pushing that because Earl Spence is that type of fighter. And I love Bud Crawford, too. So, And, and again, you think Fundora, Fundora, yeah, these dudes all say they fight Bud Crawford, but it's, it, they, they'd be more, they ain't in a rush. I'll tell you that. Mike Kirkland, salute to my brother putting that color in the chat. Always supporting the grind for always giving Spence his due. Losing is part of fighting, man. Spence fan for life. We now nah, you a Spence supporter, bro. Because if you was a Spence fan or these quote unquote fans, you would be crying retirement and ah, uh, he done and calling him one dimension. Them fair weather people, you really support them and it's win, lose, or draw. That's why I say the fans is, is, is much needed in the sport, they're important as well. But supporters, it hit different, bro. When you truly get behind somebody and support them, and you just want to see them win, win, lose, or draw, you rocking with them. That's what we are with Spence. And that's how I, that's how I approach it with all these fighters. I want to see these dudes win inside and outside the ring. And if you just so happen to take a loss fighting the best fighter in the world, who am I to cry retirement? He lost to the best fighter in the world. And especially from the Crawford fans, y'all definitely feel like he's number one. So again, you meet the, the, the plan after losing to the best in the world is retire. <laughs> what? How'd that even add up? What math is people doing? Nah, man. Earl Spence, get back in there and do you, man. Do you, man. The world is watching. And we ain't never got to box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back, but, 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 but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Salute to my brother, Mike Kirk. Appreciate you, bro. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all smash the like button, man. We gonna keep rolling. We lunching the way your brother. You learn, come great by learning from a loss. Y'all still my guy, Earl Spence. You get what I'm saying? You you learn. You get. We ain't even going there. We like ah, nah. He's damaged goods. He's not healthy. He's, he's not gonna be good. He, you know, it's no way he's never gonna be the same. Like shut up. He told for the people that's not listening. Let me reiterate. He said this a long time ago after being thrown from the car. You get tossed from your car, and you see if you still be the same. I mean, if this ain't the most honest person that I, I, I or one of the most honest boxers that I've seen in quite some time, I mean, you got me up, man. Like this dude don't lie to you. He told you how many people would tell you that another fighter is supposed to be the favorite, the opponent. Yeah, he's supposed to be the favorite. It was dead serious. No trolling, no nothing. A lot of other dudes would have sold you a bunch of uh, a crock of shit. Nah, I'm going to be better than never. I'm going to be, you're going to see the best Errol Spence you ever seen. Notice he ain't never did that. Notice he ain't never did that. You got people that get sparked, knocked out, and come back talking about how they better than never, had the best training camp. You're going to see the best version of them and then get knocked out again. He never did that. I think that take, I get that man a lot of credit for that. He never sold you that he was going to be exact, the same exact dude again. He never told you that. He never told, but what he did tell you was he didn't want no tune-ups and he was going to give you the best fights possible and he was going to chase down all the belts. And that's exactly what he did and all the way up until falling short. I respect every move he made. He missed me with that shit. You applaud fighters like that. That's all I'm saying. And I ain't no fanboy of nobody. I just respect real athletes and guys that really put on for the sport. I don't think 
you know, uh, screaming retirement is doing that man any favors. Like, that's just p- straight shitting on him. You get what I'm saying? That, that's shitting on him at his finest, bro. Give that man an opportunity. Just like just like he earned. And I feel like if he ain't earned nothing else, he earned that. Don't tell me he don't deserve a Fundora fight. Why not? Who the hell is Fundora for him not to deserve some? Let y'all tell it that Fundora deserve a Tim Zoo fight because he damn sure was a late replacement. I think people forget that Keith Thurman was in that spot. I think people forget. They really forget. Remember, Fundor took advantage of what? An opportunity that was given to him, and he was ready, and, and he made the best of it and took the win. Don't give me this with somebody don't deserve, man. Fundor ain't somebody that, it ain't like it's another version of Crawford that, that Fundor is. That's not that. Don't tell me a Earl Spence don't deserve to fight Sebastian Fundor. What exactly has he done in, in, in boxing? Aside of clearly getting a win over Tim Zhu, who we obviously seen, that cut impacted the fight. And not to take away from his performance, but he was getting touched up. You get what I'm saying? But what did he do in boxing that tells you Earl Spence don't deserve to fight him? They both got knockout losses last time I checked. They both lost once. Think it's an entertaining fight for real, for real, to be honest with you. A very entertaining fight. Zoom versus peace and blessing to my Brody. How you feeling, bro? Man, this is the money. We're not buying Bud. Like, we buying Earl. That is true, too, man. That is true. That is true, cuzzo. That is true. Fighter being about the business is the only way the sport will grow properly. Yeah, you get what I'm saying, 12? And I just, I just think Earl Spence has represented that to the fullest all the way up until taking his L. And I rock with him even more after the loss. I don't know about other people, but I, I speak for me. I rock with him even more after the loss because we know damn well he should have been out of 47. We know this. And he said, the hell with that. I told y'all what I was going to do. I got a plan, and I wanted that last belt. And, again, he fell short, and I still rock with him. And, th- and again, he's right back at it, wanting to get in there with quality opposition. I just don't see how you don't applaud that. That's all I'm saying. How you don't salute that as a fight fan? It don't, he don't got to be your favorite fighter. You don't got to meet – Cases for how good he is and none of that. You got to be able to tip your hat as a man. Be like, yo, that's what's up. Dude ready to get right back in there. You get what I'm saying? Banks, the boxing fan. What's good with the family? How you feeling, bro? Joe in the building. What's good, bro? BJ33. What's good with the 18 days? Yeah, man. I'm waiting to see it, man. I'm tuning in. I'm tuning in, Joe. I think I think, I think, think Dad going to show out, though. I do. I think he in great shape. And he's very focused. He's focused as he's ever been, I think. It, but I think it should be entertaining for as long as it lasts or whatever the case. However it play out, I think it should be entertaining. Taking one loss and stop the fact that you can sell out an arena. I'm telling you, when, <laughs> when titles don't sell, fighter styles, personality sales. I'm telling you, Cuzzo, they don't get it. They don't get it. That's why Samson was like, yo. And I'm not even big on talking about what Terrence Crawford is not. I feel like he he checked every box when it terms in terms of being a great fighter, and that's all that matters. The other stuff is the other stuff. Yeah, you might could criticize it, but I don't really go there with it. Um, I just know Errol Spence it just happens to be a bigger draw. You get what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you, and that's just what it is. And I feel like that's what Samson was alluding to, saying Terrence Crawford won't sell no ninety thousand in no Cowboy Stadium. And people take that as a slight. That's not a slight. That's him talking from a business standpoint. That's what I'm saying. You can't be sensitive about what the facts of the business are. And and again. When we all will we'll, we'll yell out in a heartbeat, boxing, man, boxing is a business. But then we'll, when it's time to understand the business, we don't want to. You get what I'm saying? They're about their bottom line, that, that dollar, man. You follow the money. That's a lot of times. And then you can understand these moves that's being made. Following the money. Tell me, a lot of these moves that's made in boxing are financially motivated. And it's just it's up for people to understand that. And their business, you know what I mean? With, with business in mind. You get what I'm saying? People ain't trying to lose money. And, and when has some, to my understanding, when have they ever lost money on Earl Spence? Even though I did hear that the, the, the him and Crawford fight lost money, but I, I don't know if that's fact, so I ain't pushing. And the people are pushing the white-ass narratives. Yeah, man, we ain't doing that. And I want everybody in here to know. Y'all make sure y'all smash that like button. I'm not saying Earl Spence should retire and he damaged goods. He And then, like I said, he by his own admission told you he wasn't going to be the same fighter from getting thrown from a car. It's just people just didn't want to accept it. You get what I'm saying? They, they, they take because because they look at it as an excuse. No, that's the reality. It, you shouldn't have to get tossed from one to know that you the, you will be a much different person after that situation. Just much different person. Much different, man. And that's what it is. And that's what you've seen with EJ. But 
the end of the day, mentality wise, you see a much different person too, because he about that smoke, man. And I just can't be mad at a fighter that's on it like that. Yeah, I'm telling you, you you're getting yeah, we ain't the ones getting punched in the face, and then soon as somebody trying to capitalize for all the risks that they're taking and all with all that head trauma, we complain about that too. Now these dudes ain't in it to just be getting the rock 'em sock 'em robots. They're they're aware that boxing is a business, and they're aware some of these dudes are aware they're earning potential, and they're going up, they're going about it the right way. Zach B, what's good with it, fam? How you feeling? Everyone's saying EJ ain't ready, but if EJ say he's ready, then I'm going to yeah, go with the world champ. He's been in there. Facts. I'm not gonna who am I to tell him he ain't ready. You get what I'm saying? What's good with it, Jory? How you feeling, bro? Zach B in the building. You get what I'm saying, Barbara D, man. Get that man some, get that man, get that show that man some love and allow him to be great, man. And I think that's the best way to do it. You get what I'm saying? Just see, let him let us let him show us where he at. And if he don't got it, then okay. Then let's have a conversation. You get what I'm saying? If he ain't good, then okay. But how we gonna know? We never see him again. Like who has a real fight fan knowing what he put on as a fighter, whether you loved him or, or didn't like him that much. Why would you never want to see him in a boxing ring again? That's not the type of talent that I look at and say, I don't never want to see him in a boxing ring. The only thing I don't want to see is him get his ass whooped like that. But at the same time, how would I know if he's never to get back in? There? So, again, if he gets in there and Earl looking like some stir fry, like I said, and Fundora is say hypothetically that is the fight. Fundora looking spectacular or something like that, looking like some type of world beater all of a sudden, then you know we got a conversation to have. Then you know we got one. But until that happens, Man, I ain't writing that man off. I'm not writing him off. I ain't writing him off after the car accident. I just was, I, I didn't know what to think he was going to look like. And he came back better than what a lot of people ever would have. And a lot of people probably would have called it a career right there after the accident and said, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and retire undefeated. That man said, hell nah. I still got business to take care of and I ain't done. I ain't nowhere near done. Dig what I'm saying? Got to appreciate that. And again, I can make a case for Bud Crawford. Who am I to be mad if they order the fight between him and Fundora and Fundora decides to pursue the fight and he actually wants to chase greatness and, and go after Bud Crawford? Who am I to be mad at that? What has Bud Crawford done again? It's not about deserve. Both of those dudes put in enough work where deserve shouldn't even come up in the conversation when we speaking to them respectfully. They Earl Spence put in enough work where we shouldn't be talking about what he don't deserve. And Terrence Crawford damn sure put in enough work where nobody should be talking about what he don't deserve. It's, that's not the conversation to have. It's who going to make the business first. And this business, is it's Earl Spence is supposed to look out for him and his situation. Terrence Crawford is supposed to look out for him and his situation. Neither guy is wrong. Him saying get to the back of the line, that's fighter talk. He he's saying what he's supposed to say. Earl said, I don't, I don't do lines. You know what I mean? And listen, it's just what it is. And we're gonna see who get the fight. Either way, I'm supporting it. I'm saluting it. But next time Terrence Crawford in the ring, I'm supporting him, saluting. I would love to see where he's going if it ain't a fun door fight for him. I'd love to see it. Trey Skills in the super chat. Much love and appreciation, bro. So I will understand if he was fighting a bum, but I respect him more for wanting to fight fun door. More fans need to hear this. You get what I'm trying to say? Salute the man. He ain't again. He got his ass whooped. He didn't win a single round. Maybe the first round. I think he might have got the first round against uh Bud Crawford. But after that, it was one way traffic. And, and yet, and still, he want to get right back in there with a damn, a, a damn NBA player. You get what I'm saying? He want to get in there with a damn full blown shooting guard. You get what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. And in in a fresh weight class where he ain't been up, he ain't fought above forty seven in years. You know what I mean? And do his thing, man. You got to gotta salute it, man. I just rock with it. And again, Bud Crawford was to get that fight. I would be there, right there, front and center. More than likely calling it, you know what I mean? And, and enjoying it. Because I already know what type of time he on if he get the fight. And we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back. But, 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 but now it's time for is. you to get your just do. Salute to my guy, uh, Trey Skills. Much love, bro. Spence don't got to retire yet. Naeem, he don't. Salute to you, bro. Fighting winner don't run to the belt. Uh, Samuel, what's good with the family? How you feeling? So, you know, just mad because the, the laws didn't stop. EJ, facts. <laughs> you know what I mean? PLG, facts, bro. It don't stop him, bro. Just like a loss didn't slow Wilder down. And people be mad. They be personally mad at the fighter. Why, why are you mad? Because he didn't quit on his career? This the same dude that didn't want to tune up after getting tossed from the car. Did you really think he was going to quit because he got his ass whooped? 
Did you really expect that from Earl Spence? Well, newsflash, he didn't quit. And I'm da- I'm glad he did. And again, even if he took a loss, so be it. Then that's what was in the cards. But at least I'm, a, as a fight fan, want to allow him, from my perspective, an opportunity to show me that he done. Somebody else showed me. That's Terrence Crawford that sh- made him look that way, right? That's Terrence Crawford. Fundora ain't no damn Crawford. He a much different challenge, right? Obviously, stylistically and all them different things. But he ain't no damn Terrence Crawford. And nowhere near it. So, yeah, let, let's see the fight. Frequent fly. What's good with it, bro? How you feeling? Naeem in the building. Yeah, they can't stand them facts. Well, the facts is B-Dog was good with it. Earl's just more charismatic. Whooping them ain't going to change that. Nope. It's like, uh, I think Ashley's corner, she said it. Um, You know, beating him don't make you, just because you beat him don't mean you become him. I believe she said something along them lines. And that that's just a fact. You beat him, but you don't become him. You get what I'm saying? And you got the utmost respect, but you he still is who he is. And the real ones, I think he had a legit fan base. So them people wasn't going nowhere. You know what I mean? He ain't lose no damn fans. He probably gained more. You get what I'm saying? To be honest with you, because people was like, damn, that dude went out there like that. Got to rock with Earl Spence. Win, lose, or draw. He had Crawford. Crawford whooped his ass. But, man, he, he ain't quit. And he, you know what I mean? Went about his business, man. Went about his business. I've been hiring 9,000 Cowboy Stadium now. Are you reaching with Fondura? Hell no. Oh, um, no, nah, I, th- I think he just said, you know, he don't think Terrence Crawford would sell the, the 90,000. But shit, that'd be something too. You know what I mean? That'd be a lot with Fondura too to sell out like that. He <laughs> said, my oh, salute to everybody in the building. Yeah, make sure y'all smash the like button. But yeah, it, 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 we never know. Ricky Williams, my guy, what's good with it? Look, y'all been saying how boxing. Is a business stop saying and accept it being the best doesn't mean you sell the best shop. These are rich men looking to get richer, and that's couldn't be more facts. Ricky Williams, my bro, that is a fact. Though, how you feeling, Rick? What's good with it? Freestyle media sports, what's good with it? Said my boy, I'm back. What's good with it, fam? How you been? How you been, Lamarcus in the building, my guy? That's good with it, but this is boxing for sure. I don't even know if he's gonna make it in mostly. Nine out of ten. Someone will survive. It's a blessing. He's still here. That's why I say he's still this dude. Even after all the trauma that he could have suffered in that accident, listen, we ain't here to cry tears. He, he he over it, but the man still trying to deliver meaningful fights, entertaining fights, and I just tip my hat to that. So again, when I seen a guy like that had the career of an Earl Spence and what he been through, and still despite it all, fell one fight short of his ultimate goal and big becoming undisputed. I'm not here to shit on him and talk about what he don't deserve when he put himself in a position to get the opportunities or his team. You get what I'm saying? Could he, you can't be mad at his team for him having a good team because that's what it is. Earl got a good team. Earl got a good team. They loyal to him. He been loyal to them and they been loyal to him. You get what I'm saying? And it's a and it's a plus that he's able to, you know, be a be a draw and just the, the business is good. Like the relationship is good on their side. Salute to my guy next then. You know, 147 was running from the IBF from 147 to 54. Bruce got to get back in the mix, too. Everyone should want to watch the guy versus their best opposition. That's true. That's 100% facts, cuz they, sh- they should every time, all the time. Ha <laughs> Salute to my guy, fight game, man. Much love in the uh, in the cash app. That's my guy. Oh, that's where you don't. <laughs> Salute to my guy. And you. we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, well, well. I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time yeah. for you to get your just do. Much love to my guy, fight game. Just like the real world, the rules don't apply. Hold on, where my boy at? Damn, it jumped on me. My bad, y'all. I'm getting back. Love to my guy, man. Said, his knee they just do you got it got to give it to him man you got to give it to him in the real world the rules don't apply when it's money at stake get over yeah and that you get what i'm saying rick and it's it's not about it's not about doing people dirty you get what i'm saying it's it's, it's simply about the money it really is when it's all said and done you hearing the, the tone of what these people are speaking from you hearing people uh even 
you, Tim Zoo didn't even win the fight, and it was already his team talking about a potential vacating the title to fight Errol Spence because it's more lucrative. Then you heard the team Fundora echo the same sentiments. Come on, it's the money. These dudes want money. Yeah, they want to be great too, but they want some damn money when they get a chance to make it, and you can't fault them for that. I think it's just wise to understand it from that perspective. Dudes gonna want they gonna want that bread, and let's be honest, with one loss. He's fighting Errol Spence it still would be like a legacy type fight for for Fundora. What exactly did he do to deserve our Errol Spence even coming off a loss? He ain't did a tenth of what Errol Spence did in the sport of boxing. So again, when people say what well, Earl don't deserve, are we sure Fundora deserved the fight Earl? Are we sure Fundora deserved to fight Tim Zoo? That's not even the right word to use, but he he got the opportunity and he took advantage of it. You get what I'm saying? So again, if it was about what he deserved. What he deserved didn't have an income, didn't have an impact on the fight. He went out there and won. So whether you felt like Fandor deserved to be there, since that's the word everybody throwing around, don't deserve this, Earl don't deserve. Man, all that dude did was put on. Bud don't deserve. All he did was put on. I ain't talking about no business stuff. I'm just talking about the fights and, and whooping ass. They put on. Don't tell me them dudes don't deserve a shot. And whoever they going at, there's just a matter of who business is going to be situated first. And if I'm looking at it for my money and I'm taking a bet, it, it would be Earl. They got a great team behind him, and he's, he's shown it. He's gotten every fight that he's won in the past. I don't see why it would be any different. You get what I'm saying? And people have to look at that. It's just the facts. That's what we're going to make his next fight go crazy. And pay for. People want to see him, uh, freestyle media. They still want to see him, bro. Not like his personality don't sell well. He doesn't get fans what they want when they want it. It is what it is. And, and again, you know what I mean? Playing hardball all the time. Rick, don't, don't bowl. You know, don't go over well with the fans. You get what I'm saying? Because we be just wanting to see these dudes chase them, them fights uh, in a timely manner. And when when they don't do it, you know, people are able to call it out. And you know what I mean? Fans gonna have their reservations. So right on point. Let's do Earl Laws one fight. People want to retire. Imagine if Ali retired after his first law to Frazier. This is what I'm saying. Like kill that. Imagine if Cotto retired after Margarito cheated and beat him up. You know what I mean? Jay Tassi said, how's Bud not a draw to be in Spence? It should help him. The thing is, Jay, the thing is, Jay, um, sometimes we 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 mistake skill and talent, right, for, for like, being a draw. So if it was based on Bud's talent alone and, and accomplishments, and he would definitely be the man. But it's just not that. You get what I'm saying? Earl's in it. Again, they got the track record to just speak from it, so – it, 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 it like Jay, it's like what, what what Ashley's corner said. Just because you beat him, don't mean you become him, right? And I know you look at it like, well, you beat the man, so you should become the man. And Terrence Bud Crawford is the man in every sense of the word, but it still doesn't necessarily your skill set or talent or the fight that he just won translate to. Oh, now you're going all of a sudden be this big ticket seller. It just don't go like that. You get what I'm saying? So. Earl Spence, even with his one loss, ain't like he just lost a bunch of fans and people don't support him. See how crazy they was going with him standing in there with Fundor. You get what I'm saying? In that little moment they had, where is it? Do I still got it in here? Yeah, I think they was going us. They was happy to see this dude in the ring. Do I still got it? Or did I get it out of here? Well, here he is. What do you have to say? I was trying to get it on. He got the beat dog now. Let's go. Now, is this your first time seeing him in person? And what do you think about his height? Uh, yeah, it's my first time seeing him in person. I mean, he got a, he got a pretty good height, but we'll see. We'll break him down like we always do. No, he's one of the greats right now. He's one of the pound for pound. So if I can fight him and get a win off of him, it'll be good history for me again. Well, maybe we'll see it this year. Thank you guys both. And Sebastian, congratulations. You are now the unified one. Body ass, long body ass, man. But I don't know. I know Tans Crawford said um, Earl looked like a linebacker, but Earl looked healthy right there, bro. Earl looked healthy in the face. I ain't saying he on no fight weed or nothing like that, but he looked healthy in the face. He don't look like he too big. He just don't look like he had obviously been in the gym every single day, but he don't look too big. You know what I'm saying? And I wait to see him. Facts, freestyle. You get what I'm saying? Look, this is the same dude that defy odds after being thrown from a car. Maybe he defies the odds again. You don't know, but at least allow him that opportunity, right? We, we at least want to see. Know what I mean? He, he getting there and chop Fundora up. Then what? Now he cooking with grease again. Now they might start the rumblings about an Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford rematch at 54 like people said was going to happen anyway, right? I just don't get the issue. I don't see the issue. You get what I'm saying? It, it just don't. 
he 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 don't look drained. You get what I'm saying? I th I thought he looked solid. He looked healthy, Barber uh, B dog. He looked healthy. He looked like a healthy dude. So again, man, I just I'm not against these dudes getting opportunities, bro. Um, I ain't I ain't crying for nobody to retire after one loss. I want to see him again. Like I said, and I'm gonna keep using the point because it's a damn good one. Margarito got his ass whooped by by. I mean, Margarito whooped Cotto ass. He was bleeding profusely. His face looked a mess. He looked crazy in there. He looked like he ain't want no more getting hit with them hard ass hand wraps and all that. And people thought he was done. That, I actually felt sorry for Kodo seeing him take that beat. And I was like, man, this look crazy. And then you come to find out it was something flaky with the hand wraps. And Kodo, it, you, should he retire right there? By, by, by people logic, Kodo, you should have been done right there, bro. Why did you come back? Why, Kodo, why, to explain to me, why, why did you come back and, and beat? and beat margarito in a rematch matter of fact whooped on his ass in a rematch why did you go on and do other great things after after suffering your loss to him you get what i'm saying he didn't call it quits and i'm pretty sure earl spence is is from that same cloth hey miss like he said miss me with the retirement talk i ain't going nowhere man and now he in the ring with fun door and people crying nah bro let's see it bro it, it'd be a good fight it'd be a good fight that's all i'm saying terrence crawford get it it'd be a great fight as well and Terrence Crawford. And again, it's it's easy, man. I don't see why people can't understand the play. They making it all about Earl Spence. It's it's a two-sided thing. The other guy got to want to fight him and sign on the dotted line, right? So if if hypothetically, if Terrence Crawford were to pursue Fundora and he would then drop the WBO title so he don't have to fight him and pursue a fight with Earl Spence, that would be because it's a two for one with Earl Spence. And I said this yesterday. Well, Earl Spence, both fights to me are legacy fights, especially for a guy like Sebastian Fundora. One of them is obviously what we feel like would be even you, you, you're not beating Terrence Crawford, in my opinion. I don't care 36, 37 or not, you're not beating him. But you, you, you're going to get your ass whooped, but you're not going to make as much money. And you fight Spence, you make more money. And you, you know what I mean? It's more unknown. So you figure you might have a better shot. You get what I'm saying? It just is what it is. He was never the same after what the car accident no he was never the same he told he told I, I i think if you coming in on the right part of the conversation yeah spence was never the same after the car accident never but he still showed you that he still had something more than what people thought because you know again people was writing him off and he showed you otherwise you get what i'm saying but versus spence after earl beast front door aj I, I i can see that being a play i don't see one reason why that can't happen you get what i'm saying think people are just too short-sighted and they be mad for no reason again man everything ain't gotta happen right now it's still listen fundora keep thurman falling out the fight in hindsight you as far as name recognition on the card when his name when he fell out the car you probably thinking like damn the car gonna take a hit but him falling out of that position opened up two other good fights boha chuck and mendoza was a damn good fight mendoza took a beating in that fight got his jaw broken all that and fundora fought tim zoo do you see how do you see how one fight a, one fight could potentially open up other opportunities you've seen it with that keith thurman falling out of the tim zoo fight opened up a fight for fundora and tim zoo which was ended up being a bloodbath they gave you every bit of your money's worth they went to the to the wire tooth and nail type of fight and, and Boa, Chuck, and Mendoza was a damn entertaining fight. You get what I'm saying? And they went the distance. So, again, man, is some fights create other opportunities in boxing. And, and I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for it. I need to go to Coach Kenny and activate that poverty DNA. <laughs> I like that. Not even a fool with that poverty DNA. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Lock in. You need to. You need that gutter training. Yeah, Mr. Improv, what it do, family? How you feeling? If Calvin Ford trains Earl, might be a problem. Um, Robert Garcia said he'll be willing to train him too. Everything doesn't happen. In fact, Barbara, you get me? And again, that's not me saying that Crawford don't deserve anything. Because if you said Crawford deserves whatever opportunity he got that he got coming to him, he, he put on for the sport. I would never sit up here and say Crawford don't deserve something. That's just me. I know everybody got their different opinions on Crawford. I'm just different. I focus more so on the fights and how he delivered in these fights. I know some people will say the timing of him and which fights he didn't deliver. And that's just a different conversation. But as far as the work that actually is put in, the body of work, the 40 fights put in, I can't say he don't deserve this or that. 
You know what I'm saying? Especially after participating in the biggest fight of his career. I can't sit up here and say what he don't deserve. And it's the same thing for Earl. Just because he lost don't mean he don't deserve another opportunity. That's all I'm saying. And salute to both of them. I don't care who gets the fight because either one of them is a damn good fight and it'll be entertaining. And like I like I said, Sebastian Fundora proved me to be tr true and didn't make me out to be a liar. He's never been in a boring fight. The last fight he just was in with Tim Zoo was entertaining as well. You know what I'm saying? Head clash and all, head button and all, it was entertaining. You know what I'm saying? John Sills said, the only reason you told my bud is Spence is Bud is Spence showed up. <laughs> it's uh I feel you, but listen, man. I, I I like Bud, man. I think Bud name is gonna always come up, especially when you you speaking about potential fights that he can make, right? Because we know what kind of talent he is, right? And he's always proven it. So, you know what I mean? It just is what it is. I I I expect his name to come up, especially after this win. I just would like to see these dudes back in the ring without having to, you know go back on significant layoffs and again all this talk is somewhat premature it's not really premature but in terms of the fight actually materializing there's going to be some hurdles to overcome because sebastian fundora from what i understand is going to have to get his nose uh you know what i mean surgery on the nose he got his nose broke so that's going to delay the fight you get what i'm saying and if spence is going to wait around for him just think about the implications if you take a fight like that coming off of that type of layoff so it, it it's starting to look like both guys are going to be in situations where it would be wise for them to go get fights you get what i'm saying both of them need fights neither guy need to be um inactive but more so because of the age factor obviously you just want to stay sharp you know what i mean and, and spence obviously coming off a loss and, and another layoff you don't want to extend that layoff you know what i'm saying you want to get back in the ring sooner than later i would suspect so we just don't know how all this gonna put, play out but in terms of if I, like i said i had to put my money on it if it ha hadn't been for a broken nose or something like that i would think spence would be right in line to get the fight you know what i mean his people he got the backing he got the leverage his, his, he got a great team and they're gonna push him fucking fight boots while he wait <laughs> hey look i'm never against that fight and, and I said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it and, and, until he no longer has belts. Until he drops all of the belts, people are never going to stop talking about the boots fight. You know what I mean? And until he officially moved to 54, people are going to always connect his name with the boots fight. And I would love that fight, but I just I feel like we're not going to get it. Got to display there are plenty of opportunities in that division. They absolutely are, Barbara D. They are. Sean T was good with he said Bud doesn't want boots. Um, listen, I feel like Bud don't 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 want that. He don't want any fights that don't come with the money that he's looking for, whatever that number is. And he said it like show show him the money when he talking about boots. And I feel like if it's, I said this before, if you just put it in perspective as to where he at in his career, thirty six to be thirty seven soon. I don't feel like him as a fighter wants to be in fights where the reward don't don't match the risk you get what i'm saying and i think that's what the boost fight is that's a risky ass fight you know what i mean i say he can't win it but again if if people i i try to understand it on both ends i'm the fight i'm the fight fan so uh, give me the fight right that that the fight fan in me is like give me the fight forget all the politics hey give me the fight but then it's another side where i got to be realistic and try to understand where he coming from at and that will help help you understand why the fight won't happen because if people want to fight so much just put yourself in shoes for a second that fight is so good and people really want it so much then where's the money for the fight right and i'm not not sitting here saying you know i'm trying to be the business guy but i'm just saying look at it from his perspective right if people keep saying that that's the fight that he needs to take and he needs to fight this guy then he like all right well what, what, shouldn't it be some money attached to this and not no chump change you get what i'm saying i just don't think boots and um will give him the kind of payday that he would be looking for you know what i mean especially coming off the type of lucrative payday that he more than likely got with earl spence you know what i'm saying telling you van Dross williams jr peace and blessings to the queen how you feeling today i hope all is well with you but he needs more money because he's a free agent he got nobody throwing money <clears throat> it could be a number of reasons i guess and I, I think he just at the point in his career where 
it makes sense for him to maximize his whatever his earning potential is. And I know a lot of people as fight fans, you ain't trying to hear that. You like, nah, I ain't trying to hear that. You got three belts, get in there with Boots Ennis and become three time undisputed. I get it. I get it. I get it. He said he needs to drop the belts. And a lot of people going to ask for that, Barbara D, because that will at least eliminate the attachment to 47. You get what I'm saying? I feel like as long as he has the belts, there's some type of attachment to 47 there still. You get what I'm saying? Whereas you got an Earl Spence who's lost everything, obviously, in the fight. So he don't have – and he officially got 54 in his bio and, and, and is clearly pursuing fights at 54. So he has zero – attachment to the 147 pound division no more right so you don't hear you won't hear nobody matching his name up with nobody in that division simply because it would be foolish you know he's no longer there even without him having a fight now again it's just a little bit different with bub because he was the winner in a fight and he you know he only lost the one belt he still has the three so there's still like i said some attachment there so people gonna keep like yo what's up with boots and bub but, you know, you let people tell it, they'll tell you Boots is ducking, but he don't want the bud smoke. And I just don't like that conversation because he ain't ducking nobody. Like, I heard that same shit about Earl Spence. He fought him. And then it's like, now you saying now people saying Earl Spence ducking Crawford. It's like, man, God damn, they fought already. <laughs> ducking somebody you already fought is crazy. That's just not the right word for it. They fought already. Down Sills said, Fundora team said, bud asking for 15 million. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's that's tough. That's tough. Yoda was good with it, fam. He said Boots need to deal with Lara before he could be before he come for Bud. Who, who what Lara are you talking about? Aris Landy, Lara? Aris Landy? Don't make noise. Boy be too silent. Yeah, he he he's very quiet, Jay. He did. Sean T said he should get a real promoter though. I mean, how else can he expect a big payday? Uh, again, Sean T, I think that the leverage and, and the back end is what will be missing if that makes sense from from bud crawford's situation if he's like this free agent that people are speaking about you get what i'm saying i think that just from the outside looking in obviously makes things a little bit tougher when it comes to when it pertains to securing fights especially lucrative fights you get what i'm saying the more lucrative the fight you figure the the tougher it'd be especially if you don't have the backing behind you right you know what i mean so it's tough Yes, talk to him, uh, Tony Van Jones. Well, it's 10,000 likes, family and friends. Yes, sir, let's hit that like button. DJ Naka Thurman, I'll forget that WBC and defend it. Tay D was good with it, family. King R said about the, his leverage. Oh, his leverage is what you're saying. And again, I'm not, I'm not lobbying for him to give it up. I'm just highlighting, I believe that's why people connect his name to to boots still at 147 because he still has belts there right and and if you're looking at it from boots perspective you know he's more than like right out his mouth he's looking to snatch up all the belts and he can't do that as long as crawford has them so if crawford is not going to give up the belts and allow boots to at least have other unifications or allow the division to move people are keep they're going to just naturally demand well why don't you just fight boots if you're not going to drop the belts you get what i'm saying <laughs> And I'm not saying that. I just understand it. I'm always coming from a place to understand, and I get where people are coming from. But again, if that is, if the belts is what Bud Buzz leverage is, then it's all good. You know what I mean? I get it. So I'm just trying to understand it instead of crit critiquing and being mad at everything. Right? Got to be a reason he's still holding on to the belts. You know what I'm saying? Got to be a play. We just don't know what it is. Buzz not getting 15 million if I anyone but Earl. I, I would agree 100 percent with that, Barbara. Billy Hoyles was good with it. Yeah, I smashed the like button. But yeah, that's I think it's gonna be tough. That's gonna be tough to uh sell that to get, you know, push that you you're gonna get 15 million, especially for uh Fundora too. Shit, who I don't think even Earl gonna get 15 million for Fundora. So if that is true, which I didn't hear it, but I'll I'll take your word for it. Conversation purposes, if he did ask for that amount of money for Fundora, I, I don't see it. I definitely don't see that happening. I'm holding them belts and fight boots and drop them already. See what I'm saying, Mike? I told you what I was saying. I know that's how people feel, and I and I get it because I'm a fight fan too. So I understand it because you just look at the 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 full picture. 147 was already held up long enough because him and Earl had business to take care of, right? So 
people just want to see that that division get to continue to move and circulate you know let them bells drop and let's see who, who snatch them up and a lot of people do feel like it's boots division to win and as long as the belts are are held up he just has the one and he can't continue to his, the boots era can't officially start until all the belts are vacant the other three belts you know what i'm saying and I, I get it. I want. I just want to see Boots be great too. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if 47 is really where he's where he gonna be at for the foreseeable future, I think it's his division to win. You know what I mean, and it would be interesting to see the belts go vacant and see how he goes about trying to collect them if he's able to. You know what I mean? If politics don't hold him back, he's the best of force to fight at 54. I get. I get that part. High consciousness was good with it, fam. I get that. I could, I could, I could understand that too. Leverage, you know what I'm saying? I could understand it. Thirty red, the boxing head. He said, "Now nah, the boost talk came before he was undisputed. It was a crop of fans that think it was a good fight. Yeah, it was always a good fight, bro. It was always a good fight. That one bud to lose by any means. Oh yeah, yeah. But it was always a good fight. But I just think right now, what's keeping it going? Dirty red is the is the 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 attachment of the belts. I think him still having belts is making people like, hey man, just fight boots. Because, you know, Boots won to chase undisputed, but the, the division is essentially held up without, you know what I mean? That That's a big part of it, you know what I mean? It, boxing, right? These belts, essentially. So nobody else will be able to call themselves a champion outside of Boots, and nobody will be able to unify because all of the belts are by a guy that probably is not going to fight at 47 again. So, again, if that is the case, I understand when people say, won't you just drop the belts or fight them? I get it. I ain't got a call for it. I'm just here to understand where people are coming from and relay the message to you. I, I get it. I understand. Anibal, what it do, family? You think the lower amount of activity from today's fighters is making them not able to get 10, 15 million easier? Um, I mean, listen, inactivity is never a plus, right? I don't think anything is good about inactivity and not being able to fight as often as you would like. But I think just, just having your business in order and having the right kind of team behind you and, you know, the, the, that money is available, obviously, for guys that make, but you got to be willing to position yourself to make it. You know what I'm saying? You got to fight the right fights, do the right kind of business, man. Um, people ain't just going to be tossing around, you know what I mean, 10, 15 million like that, especially if people don't and are not for sure they're going to get a return on their investment. You get what I'm saying? It's just to be bad business for these dudes. And like Bob Aram said, they'll take chances, but they, don't, they ain't gamblers. But Gonna ask for too much money. They said something about 15 million already. So Larry Lopez was good with it. But using his leverage. Yeah, I don't blame him. Yeah, I'm not here to be mad at but I'm just here to understand it. And I think that's as much understanding as I can get for for, for the situation, right? I'm not here sitting here verbally demanding him to drop anything because I feel like that's a possibility. That is his leverage. He worked for it. He got to figure it out. But I still understand the crowd that's like, man. Let the belts go. Andrew Gray was good with it, fan. Leverage is only at 47 for sure. Sounds scared of Boots taking <laughs> talking like that. <laughs> oh, man. That's our fallback plan. Don't go right at 54. Interesting. It's possible. Anything is possible. I can't, I can't, can't doubt that it'd be possible. That was unfair, and I and I know life not fair, but come on, <laughs> right, right. I get it. I get what you're saying. Like it, you just you just want to see, like, and again, when we say this stuff, like even to drop the belts, that's not a knock on Bud Crawford. That's not trying to say, you know, be negative toward the situation. That's the fight fan, and you just want to see the belts continue to circulate to see who else could, you know, chase down undisputed if possible, right? And, and especially if Bud is not gonna fight there. I mean, so I, I just, I get it. I can't stress that enough. I understand the Salute to the Queen, Barbara D. With the super sticker, always supporting the grind. Much love. And we ain't never got to box again. Well, right. well, 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 I, I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Salute to the Queen. Ain't no money with that WBO belt. Ain't that what he wants? Oh. It's like Annabelle says, it's like nobody's making the filler fights in between the big fights. I mean... I mean, listen, <clears throat> inactivity is a is an issue in the sport of boxing. You know what I'm saying? It is an issue I think that they got to continue to try to navigate and work through. You know what I mean, because it's, you know, that's never good for, I guess, any business, right? When you're not allowed to be active, you know what I mean? So for anybody's pockets, right? So 
I mean, hopefully, you know, this year we get to see more activity. You know what I mean, we'll see. Jay Tassi said, Bud needs that 150 mil. <laughs> but when it just busts a random easy fights for less than the fans excited, it's only leverage needed. Mm. I get your cheap wildfire. What's good? What's looking like? Fandora Zoo rematch, Lil K. PGH Big Dog. What's good with it, family? Um, That's why I say a lot of these talks is I don't want to premature, for lack of a better term, to some degree, or it's just a little bit early. Same difference, right? Uh, I do hear that, you know, they said Tim Zoo do got a rematch. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if that's what they're going to pursue, but just looking at it, I don't, I don't, I don't, if it ain't nothing etched in the contract, and I understand that, I think I heard something about a handshake or a verbal agreement, whatever the case, um, you still gonna want the more lucrative opportunity if that opportunity is Errol Spence. You get what I'm saying? So, and who knows how long Tim Zoo will be out to it as well with the, with the gash in his head, right? So, I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of stuff, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in the situation, man. It ain't all came together yet. Coach said they were honored. Yeah, and I get that. You know, you know, they be lying too, Chief. When they they see that opportunity and it's to fight EJ and and that, and that money, you get what I'm saying, Chief. You know the money talks, so that sound good right now. <laughs> and to to them offer something is made. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. The fact that they ain't put it on paper is a little sketchy. I could I could understand the gentleman's agreement and all that type of stuff, right? But. I, I can't say I'm for sure that I feel like that that's, you get what I'm saying? They're going to be, they're going to honor that. I, I don't know. I, I want to see it. Man, everybody in the building, if y'all did, make sure y'all smash the like button, sub to the channel if you haven't, man. I will drop the link just in case anybody want to come up because I want to build on this. I do want to hear from some of the people. I want to know what some of y'all think about this, man. And I still ain't get to this, uh, Shakur and um him betting um Raymond Ray, Robert Garcia 100k for this more tire fight. The wise one in the building can never want to smoke because he beat Charlo like bot and complain and imagine within three weight classes down the eruption once he kills Crawford. Yeah, I mean it's tough, man. Um it's tough. That three weight class jump would be a lot, but I don't know. I, I just look at it like this. I got like mixed feelings with it, right? Because I feel like, the, like I said, three weight classes is a ton of weight. That's what, like 21 pounds. Uh, but at the same token, I do feel like if it's anybody that has the skill set to beat a Canelo is Crawford. Now, that doesn't mean he will for sure, right? But he definitely got the skill set to do it. And he's proven himself to the point where no fight that he's going to be in, am I going to count him out? You know what I mean? Say you don't have a chance to win. But that's a that's a big jump. Just being real. It's a very, very tough jump. It's a lot of weight. Do we want to rematch? Oh, 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 you're talking about Tim Zoo and Fandora? That's a good question, too. Is people gonna want to pay for a rematch? I right, mean, that's cool. Right, that's a good question. They can pay Zoo step aside money. That's that absolutely can happen if that's the case. Karen King Hamador's first priority is a rematch with Tim Zool ahead of a fight with either the Panther Karen King Crawford. Salute to my guy, Thrill Hill. Yeah, I, and again, if they stick with it, then cool, because I wouldn't mind a rematch between Tim Zool and Fundura. I truly don't think Tim Zool loses that fight if the cut doesn't take place. So I'm not against seeing it. And again, I'm just a fair person. I just like to see, I love boxing. I want to see good fights. I'm not against seeing Earl Spence fight Fundura next. I'm not against seeing Fundura and Tim Zool rematch. And I'm not against saying Terrence Crawford and Fundora fight. Just whoever make the business, whoever situate the business first and give us the fight is what I want to see. You know what I mean, I'm not here to complain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> I'm here to enjoy the show, man. This boxing is supposed to be enjoyed, not stressed stressed about. So I will no longer allow the business of boxing to, to frustrate me. I'm just going to enjoy the fights. It's when they make great fights anyway. Another will stop them. It's just tough, man. Like his margin for error is it'd be, you know, very narrow B dog and that fight girls was good. He said perfect time I had a rematch while Fandora Zoo is recovering. Obviously, Earl doesn't want another ass beating. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, especially if it's not some fighting him at some kind of catch weight. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Earl don't want the Bud rematch. I mean, I hear they, 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 you know, they went another direction. So, I mean, I hear they went another direction. I did. Wait, Crawford B. Spence. I ain't down that Crawford can win. That's what I'm saying. I ain't down that he could beat people, but I do can fight. And you you going to have to beat him. And I ain't saying it can't happen, but you're going to have to do it. Rematch can't happen, but Earl not taking no 7030 what Bud is asking for. Yeah, that's not going to happen. The money, like, again, the, the easy answer is to say Bud, you know, EJ went in a separate, another direction. But without having all the details, I can't say for what that would be. And I can't, I can't necessarily say, like, you know, you're ducking somebody that you fought. Like that, that just that it don't that don't make sense to me. I could I could understand somebody not wanting to, you know, fight fight the same guy again and want to fight in between. But I'm not about to say he he ducking somebody. And again, it was a ton of a people shit ton of people saying they didn't want to see a rematch because of how the first fight went. They don't even want that for Earl. Now that is not happening. It's like oh. Oh, nah, he don't deserve that. Well, won't he fight Bud again? It's like people don't know what they wanted because before they were screaming Bud and Tim Zoo. Then and before Tim Zoo and Fundor even fought, they were saying Tim Zoo was ducking Bud already because they even mentioned the, the thought of them fighting Earl Spence and not him. Now it's Fundora would be ducking Bud if he fights Earl Spence. It's like you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> that is crazy. I think we got Fundora beating Spence. I mean, we, we'll have to see. Like, I ain't, I ain't, I don't think nobody's saying that is crazy. Yeah, there won't be a repeat of the negotiations again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Right, uh, Tay D. I think that's something to do with the antics. Yeah. It's Pandora robbing boxing right now. <laughs> ain't making no issues. Just taking receipts. <laughs> to the PBC and the money team. So to Christina Cruz. I know it hurts when y'all find out your favorite fighter on what you thought they were. Um, I think Earl Spence is what we thought he was. Um, for me, not fighting him again doesn't mean he ain't who I thought he was because he fought him once. That proves that alone to me. He lost to him, so that just tells me Terrence Crawford is a better fighter. But I don't feel like um, I don't feel like he's not who he, who I thought he was anyway. I mean, I know none of these dudes is invincible, but a loss happens. And when you lose to the absolute best, ain't no shame in it. Terrence Crawford just was the better guy. Thurman and Spence is better for me. I think it made more sense now than ever, but Earl Spence recently <clears throat> shot that down, that notion of ever fighting him. He's still on that hill and fight him. Spence is getting a fight before Bud makes absolutely no sense. Um, I mean, does it make business sense, though, Larry? Does Spence get in a fight first? make business sense though like it might not make sense in terms of you feel like who deserve what like coming off a win from that angle right but business wise do it make sense get what i'm saying do it make dollars and do it make sense it's very simple and that and and i'm i'm here to i'm here to tell you i understand what you're saying when you say it don't make no sense in that regard like in terms of the pecking order and who just won right you like hey man terrence crawford definitely deserved the opportunity over the guy he just beat right but business wise is he gonna make the same money that that is the guy that he just beat you get what i'm saying and and, and that's that's what you got to consider so um i understand the the, the the stance of people making for bud crawford that's why i'm not against it right you're not wrong for saying that. i get exactly what you're saying you said it don't make no sense because he just won how was the guy i just beat and stopped gonna get an opportunity to fight another guy over me and the only answer that makes sense even if you don't agree is the fact that business-wise it would make more sense because you know they projecting that that fight would make more money and and both guys being Fundora and Tim Zhu feel like Earl Spence is not only a great fighter one of the greats like a legacy fight for them but they can get a bag with them so it's it's an easy decision for them you know what I mean you already know, huh? You know it. You don't know, don't like boxing. Yeah, that's why I say, man, I, I love these fighters, man. That's why I had to give uh, Earl Spence's just do. I ain't here to tell him that he should retire. That damaged goods talk, man. All fighters are damaged to a certain degree. They all take punishment. You know what I mean? They all take wear and tear. They all suffer wear and tear. So this is what it is. There's only anywhere on Jamel and his health. I haven't heard anything about that, but um i ask i ask because i know somebody that knows um their father i know somebody that knew their pops and um <clears throat> just for the record too 
remember when I was saying I knew about something that I didn't want to speak on because it wasn't confirmed. That was that. It was that situation right there, the health situation. So notice, like, I ain't care to, you know, really talk about that because it was, uh, you know, whatever it was. You know what I mean, judging by the reaction, guy, he's still relevant. Oh yeah, Spence, Spence is definitely still relevant. It's still relevant. And again, I think people looking at fight the boxing wrong. One loss don't make you irrelevant. You got to think about how many times somebody lost in the sport of boxing. Losing is part of the game, and it's always been since the beginning of time. Somebody going to win, somebody going to lose, or it could be a draw. You know what I mean? That's just what it is. That's just what it is. Jesse Jackson, I'll never see you in here. Next subject. If you don't like the subject, it's probably not the channel for you. And it's all good. Salute to you, fam. But this probably ain't for you. His name still carries weight. Yeah, that's not going to change that. It's not going to change that. You get what I'm saying? Sanctioning bodies got to start doing their job. It's killing the sport. Yeah, it, it, it hinders the sport. It has its, uh, you know, issues for sure. All the uh, selective, you know, treatment and, and different things like that. They just need to they just need to stick to their rules that's all uphold their rules and stop switching them as they go along depending on what fighter it is you get what i'm saying and more people are respected because they make a lot of times the them rules help make a mess out of boxing gm what's good with the family how you feeling bro you know the rabbit wants to switch topics <laughs> you stupid <laughs> like think about it if their first somebody first comment won't be what's up salute to the chat it'd be something like them recommending something no kind of support probably ain't hit the like button probably ain't subscribe but he he demanded he's asking to switch topics <laughs> people crazy <laughs> no i'm saying so i'm with you i'm with you i'm with you last salute to my guy why teal fighting workshop high school teacher <laughs> Yo, so look we could switch gears a little bit though because we we cooked on that for a nice bit and again melanin queen salute to the queen how you feeling today um at the end of the day i'm for boxing and and i understand i'm starting to understand more and more as i talk this stuff i get it again pay attention to the money the money will help you better maybe understand some of these moves that's made because they're financially motivated a hundred percent like again i want to make this point before I, you know i want to close out with this fight wise in terms of the pecking order like you i don't even want to say ranking just you going out there winning a big fight you feel like you would be entitled to any opportunity out there as opposed to the guy you just beat right but again when it comes to the business side of things and what makes money they're gonna go, always go with that they're gonna always consider the bottom line before they would you know the guy that we feel like is the absolute best and and not for nothing earl spence only lost to the absolute best so i still don't have no evidence that he's not still one of the best if that makes sense to y'all he hasn't lost to the a less than elite level fighter terence crawford is as elite as they come he lost to the absolute best a lot of y'all you know especially for the die hard you know pound for pound bud fans and i, I rock with bud 100 percent too but the ones who's that's your favorite guy he, he's number one right losing to a number one guy is never a bad thing you know what i'm saying on no day of the week Talib Cunningham in the building. What's good, homie? How you feeling? But it's A plus. Spence is A. Thurman is A minus. Who else is A plus? And again, they all, I, I like that. And I, I just don't have an argument for that. And the ball, like they, they just A level talent at the end of the day. And that's all I'm saying. So I, any, any, either guy get to fight. Let's see it. You know what I mean? Salute the bud. I want to see him back in the ring sooner than later, too. You know what I'm saying? I, why not? He ain't did nothing but get me entertaining fights. I never watched the boring Bud Crawford fight, and I don't think he'll ever give us one. Same thing for Earl Spence, same thing for Fundor. And Tim Zoo is definitely making his way. He's not a boring fighter by any stretch either, right? So let's let's see the fights. You know what I mean? Let's see the fights. That's what that's where I come from. Let's just see the fights. Better now the work day is over. Salute to you, Quinn. Glad the work day is over. Hopefully, you can kick your feet up. Kevin Smith been after he lost. He's a warrior. Facts, Larry. He's just real. He's real. It's like it's easy to like these dudes. I, man, like I said, I watched Crawford through 35. I watched Spence very early. Like early, maybe at like, I caught Spence at like 8 and 0, maybe in his career already. Maybe about 8 and 0. So I've been watching dudes for, for years. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, somebody I, legacy legacy in the building was good with it. Somebody mentioned something outside going to switch. And I was going, I meant to bring something up. Oh, Tia Fimo, he brought up. Say, and Shakur news. Oh, yeah, Shakur with the um 
Robert Garcia situation too. Um, so now you do do you favor Spence or Fundor? Um, it's tough, right? Because you know, a part of me feels like it, it's a trick. It's a tricky question, right? Because if Spence is healthy, it's Spence, right? That's weird, right? But I'm expecting to be a much healthier version of himself. So naturally, I still favor him, even coming off a of loss, because I'm expecting him to return to form somewhat. And if he don't, you get what I'm saying? Then we know that it's a different conversation to be had in terms of what he should do moving forward. But like I said, the retirement talk for me is premature because we ain't even seen him back in the ring after a loss, at least allow him to, you know what I mean? And some people even say after, even if he lose again, it just depends. But another ter bad loss, like one-sided, lopsided loss, then you got some real questions to ask, a a ask yourself. You know what I mean? You got some soul searching to do. You get what I'm saying? But, um, I'm gonna run. I'm um. I'm gonna touch on this T.O. joint before I talk about Shakur and Robert Garcia situation. Um, where is this at? Boom. So let's just let's touch on this real quick now. Um, people are confused as as to um. You know what what the situation was with Shakur and Muratai. A lot of people keep asking for that fight. We as fight fans will all want to see that fight, right? But as I said, <clears throat> as I said before, I told y'all. Remember, we talked we talked about it. I told y'all that Shakur was never offered Raymond Muratai. In fact, Tiafimo Lopez. I know he's at one forty, but he also he was actually offered. You know, um, Raymond Muratai. So check it. He wasn't just offered Raymond Mortai. I'm going to run through it. This is on the left. This is, you know, from uh, Kenneth Sims, team boss, man. That's Kenneth Sims Jr. You know, you know, he's at 140. He's been kicking ass for a minute since since he took his loss. You know what I mean? And he'd be looking good. So Tiafimo was offered four different opponents. One of them was Raymond Mortai. The other one was Kenneth Sims Jr. Number three was Elvis Rodriguez. And the fourth was Steve Claggett. Now who is the now whoever he's fighting, which is obviously Steve Claggett, that's who he picked. So listen, I I, I keep it consistent no matter who the fighter is. I'm just here to deliver the, the accurate news. Tiafimo was offered these fights. Now I know people are gonna say he ducking or whatever the case. I just feel like I I get people that's gonna say that. I don't really like that angle. I'll just say this: Tiafimo had four options. Elvis Rodriguez, Kenneth Sims Jr., Raymond Muratai, and Steve Claggett. And, he, and in my opinion, he picked the least notable out of all of those guys. He picked the, the softest touch, I believe, in my opinion, out of all four of those guys. So if people want to call that a duck, they can have at it. For me, I'm going to keep it consistent. I'm not big on the duck talk. He just had options. But, again, this just adds to what I was saying when he was sitting up here doing all this barking about how they want Terrence Crawford. There's no way in the hell, and I'm going to say this again, there's no way in the hell you're going to fight a Steve Claggett. And you want me to you want me to believe, you and your damn daddy want me to believe that you'll actually go up to 147 and, and go anywhere near Terrence Crawford. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I believe you. I believe you. Just like, just like I believe you fighting Steve Claggett next, right? Or just like I believe you ain't turned down Raymond Moore tire, right? So it's crazy how people get the bad though you can tell when people don't like fighters because they'll push false narratives knowing that this shit ain't true they won't fact check it they'll just push it i'm not here to protect no fighter i'm just here for boxing and, and the shit on false narratives i hate them they bad for the sport they literally annoy me in the worst way shakur stevenson was never offered raymond Muratai, and i got a video that i'm gonna play that's gonna highlight that I'm going to play a video in a second that's going to highlight that. I'm not here to protect nobody, but that, that false narrative that, oh, he turned down Raymond. He was never offered him. Teal was. You get what I'm saying? And, again, it's easy to understand with him having one fight left. I don't understand why that's so hard for people to get through their head. Yeah, he's, he, he picked the softest. No, he didn't. He didn't do wasn't offered. Get that out of here. And, and, again, if you watch Raymond's last fight, respectfully, who thinks that guy beats Shakur Stevenson? For real, for real. I know we got eyes, and he a hell of a talent. I ain't saying nothing negative about him. I'm just saying he still needs some work. I think he a, way, a little ways away from that. 
Adam was good with it. Tio said he could whip all these dudes, but he ain't fighting none of them. That's what I'm saying. Tio, yeah, rude exposure in the building was good with him. And, and, and listen, listen, and I and then look, I'm gonna try to get Tia Fimo some breathing room. He fought Josh Taylor, he fought, which was supposed to be a, a, a real test. He he handled Josh Taylor. He fought, you know, Jermaine Ortiz. Jermaine Ortiz made him look not so good in there. I didn't expect him to try to fight no killer next. I don't care what he say out his mouth. I just I, this this proves that guys are not going in there and saying, yo, give me the toughest guy you got, and I want him. This proves that guys do have options, and sometimes it's not the toughest guy out there. This is exactly what this proves. And I think coming off, you know, he figured you fought Josh Taylor, then you fight Jermaine. Uh, I take a lighter touch. I, I'm thinking this is what this is. And this is just part of the game as well. Just like Andre Ward said, it's not smart to fight killer after killer after killer. Some of these guys got to be tune-ups. Some of these guys got to be softer touches. That's just the way it is. So I know people don't want to hear that, but that's exactly what Tia Fimo did. And in, in, in my opinion right here, he had options. He took the lighter, the lighter touch out of the four. I think Raymond Moore tired would have gave him a more competitive fight. Kenneth Sims been a dog lately. He damn sure would have gave him a competitive fight. Elvis Rodriguez can box with power. He would have gave him a good fight. Steve Claggett, I know absolutely nothing about him, and I'm pretty sure most of y'all in the chat don't either. So I'm not discrediting this man. I just don't know. Him. Maybe he can be good, but I'm I'm figuring Tiafimo picked him for a reason. You get what I'm saying? So it is what it is. I like Tiafimo. I rock with him, but I, I just think this is more like a maybe a showcase fight potentially for him. You get what I'm saying? I don't see him um, you know, losing this fight for sure. Hey, see, see, you know what I mean? See, Jesse, see, you got to see, you got to tap in because we we build over here. We build on boxing, hardcore, casual in the building. My guy was good with it, bro. Sound like a family guy character. <laughs> Steve Claggett, you, you a fool. I <laughs> see so in the building. What it do? <laughs> Stupid, man. Go, grab, go. Why was Raymond offered, dude? Is that 135? No, LaMarcus, that's the part <clears throat> that I can't really answer, right? I would just think maybe because they're on the same side of things and it would be an in-house fight to make and if you look at raymond Moritai, he ain't the smallest you got some like size to him. He ain't the smallest 35 pounder so but at the same token i don't know you get what i'm saying why that would be an option but you at least do see that the other guys were 40 pound options and he still was you know he they said he picked claggett so look i ain't here to call him no duck i'm very consistent with that i don't really too much like that word these dudes got options. All I'm here to do is put it in perspective and let people make of it what they will. I'm not here to, to form your opinion for you. I'm just going to put it out there. And he had options to fight what I believe is three tougher opponents. And he chose the lightest touch. And, and that's just what it is. And and and, and again, I'm going to um, get into Robert Garcia. Cause I got a little clip from him where he was talking about um, Shakur as well. Part twice that Lopez beat the shot of Raymond. It's crazy because you would think like, you get what I'm saying? Why not fight these dudes, right? You get what I'm saying? I like Tio, though. But, again, I think this is a matter of, you know, that what Andre Ward was speaking about in that interview about not fighting killer after killer after killer. And I'm not trying to say Josh Taylor was a killer, per se, and, and Jermaine was a killer, but they're better. You get what I'm saying? More quality opposition. I think he's just taking a lighter touch. That's all. You know what I mean? I think he's taking a lighter touch. And, and where he goes from here, it's going to say a lot about him. I'm not going to kill him for this fight. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just not like that. All right, because I kind of, I think I get it, right? Okay. You you had a you had a rough out in your last one. You want you want a confidence builder. I think this is what this is. If we just being honest, this is a, this should be a confidence builder for T.O. And I expect his next fight to be something we want to see, if that makes sense. So I think this is a lighter touch for him, respectfully. I ain't about to call him no duck. Like I said, I'm consistent. I just think he's taking a lighter touch. That's what it is. You know what I mean? And, and again, hopefully his next fight will be one of those guys that we really want to see fight. See him fight. So see, I said Raymond want to fight in both weight classes. Uh, salute to Robert. See? You know what I mean? I didn't catch that part. I didn't catch that. Salute to uh, uh, Raymond. I like Raymond more time. So he a good talent. What happened to Honduras fight? Um, This was like essentially that, Chief. But I don't. it, it was being talked about, but. I think they spoke about it possibly being in Miami. I'm not for sure, but I heard I did hear Miami for this fight. I did hear this fight. 
right? And Kelly, yeah, you you can do it. Adam is just not realistic. Just like Andre Ward said, it's not safe and it's not smart. That's the double negative in boxing. That's this doesn't do any good to your health. So I I, I get it. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying Jermaine Ortiz was some drag him out bro, but you understand the thinking, right? Confidence builder. Think about how he just looked against Ortiz. He didn't look his best. So I think in this fight, probably a more a style that suits him better where he can get off and look better and prob probably get a knockout if not dominate this guy and get people kind of, you know what I mean, talking again because it's always going to be a casual. They just want to see you fight. So as long as he go out there and win, it's going to be some people that don't care who it is he fight. You know what I mean? Us, we going to see it for what it is. That's a lighter touch. Like I said, let him breathe. But let's see who we fight after that. It is what it is. I'm just a different fight fan. I'm not about to cry about everything. I get it. You're you not about to go out there and fight the most risky guy. You get what I'm saying? You're clearly taking the, you know what I mean? A showcase type of deal. Mike, Michael White, what's good with it, Mike? How you feeling, bro? T-O-O, P-R, fight, fighter of fight. <laughs> who you talking about? Who you talking about, Andy Ball? <laughs> what's with T? Is that with T? Is Puerto Rican? If he fights Raymond, they're going to diss him and give him no credit for picking him up from a smaller weight class, bro. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Matias duck him? No, no, no. Matias ain't duck him. The thing is, I think uh, what I, did what to Matias for sure didn't duck Tia Fimo. That didn't happen. But I think did he say he reached out to him? He was saying he reached out to a lot of people, but nah, I don't think I don't think uh Matias ducked him though. Man, you, you know, y'all gotta put some respect on uh, y'all. Make sure y'all smash that like button, sub to the channel if y'all haven't, man. Let's keep rocking out. Let's keep hitting the like button. We gonna keep, we gonna keep cooking. We ain't going nowhere just yet, man. Y'all gotta put some respect on uh on uh, on, on, on Matias' name, but yeah. The really best one forty is here. No Teofimo, Pussy, no Ryan. Who is Ryan? No Haney, chicken, no rolling. He's a yokel and the word no one. So what happened? I'm here. Who going fight with me? Who? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? And my, my boy Matias ain't ducking nothing. <laughs> but I think back to the point though that that i was making that we was talking about. i don't think he ducked him i think the time that they reached out to him was still remember matias was nursing a hand injury you get what i'm saying so just for me anybody trying to reach out to matias while his hand is hurt i kind of take that with a grain of salt as he it's kind of like you know he injury can't make a fight especially at the date that you have lined up you're gonna have to rehab the hand and stuff it's just common sense so if you really and again Everything don't have to happen happen right away. If he truly don't want to fight Matias or Matias truly don't want to fight him, we're going to know. But Tio is a champion. Matias is a champion. He got a real fight with Liam Parle, you know what I'm saying, on his hands. So we got to wait and see. But I don't I can't, I don't look at Matias as a duck. RIP to Dada Shev. I never make light of that situation. But a guy that's physically, you know, taking somebody out is not looking to duck somebody. That's just not his M.O. Like, I don't think he gives a damn about who he fights, respectfully. You're going to have to show me. Somebody's going to have to make a real offer, but he don't got nothing lined up, and he just be turning them down and fight lesser opposition. Then we can call it for what it is. But until then, just because a fight didn't materialize, because, look, not to even bring him into the conversation, but you've seen the game that Bill and them played with him, and they framed him as a duck real quick and had to retract it. So that's not the guy looking to avoid smoke. Like, he is the smoke. Matias. I think might be the most dangerous at 140. Tio might be the most accomplished. I think Devin Haney could be one of the most skilled. You get what I'm saying? They got some real talent at 140. You know what I mean? Rodzilla in the building. What's good with it? He said it's him. Matias team still ain't called back. You stupid, bro. But they not, though, because they know he involved with uh with Haney. But look, uh Joe, Haney said he want him next. Haney said he want Matias next. So, look, I hold him to it. I ain't gonna go crazy if I don't see it, but I'm a, it's gonna be a conversation to have, right? I ain't gotta go crazy on the fighter, but that's what he said. He said to Matias next, Pitbull Cruz threw his name in the hat. He said, Subriel, Haney, he, he, he won't fight. He won't fight the champions. 
salute to my brother Mike Kirkland, always supporting the grind, man. Enjoying listening to you calling balls and strikes about boxing. You always see past the bullshit. That's my guy. Much love to my bro, man. Y'all make sure y'all keep smashing that like button and sub to the channel if you haven't. We gonna keep. And going. we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, well, well. I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time yeah. for you to get your just do. Shoot to my brother Mike Kirk. So we're gonna see, man. We we'll, we'll, we'll see, man. And none of them respond publicly when that clip came out. Nope, they know what's up. They know what's up. Fight game, but really, <laughs> salute to my guy Marquis too, man. Pardon me if I missed you in the chat, man. He was nursing a hand, and the next day he was playing pool. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. But you, you, I don't think he's a. You know what I'm saying? I for me, it's always something that you probably could point to where you think you got something. But for me, I try not to reach. What I look at with Subriel Matias is nothing Nothing on his track record says duck. Nothing at all on his entire track record says duck, right? If we just being honest with what the work he put in, do that look like a guy that's avoiding any type of smoke? He literally out here forcing guys to quit on stools and all type of shit. You get what I'm saying? This this is the guy that's doing that. So, And he already got a law, so don't tell me he protecting the Oh, He don't care about that. You get what I'm saying? And he avenged that loss. That's not a dude that's running from competition at all. I think it's just a matter of the business working itself out and guys truly want to fight him as well. And I think they'll make it happen. I do. I do. Salute to my guy, Annabal. And salute to everybody in the building, man. Y'all make sure y'all smash the like button. No one beats Matiz 140 and under with Tank and Shakur and Tank is 135. Salute to my guy, Rick Timms in the building. Yeah, I'm with you, Matiz. You got to have, you got to be a well rounded fighter to beat Matiz, in my opinion. Or you got to be just as much a dog as him. That's that's my honest, humble opinion. You got to be a well-rounded fighter, a, a well-rounded fighter, or have just as much dog or more than he got. And, and you get what I'm saying? That's all. And that that's the guys I think that'll beat him. You know what I mean? Other than that, you know what I mean? But I think he got stylistically give a lot of he said, I'm go crazy. <laughs> yeah, you a fool. <laughs> Pop with the drop in the building. Shadow band said Pitbull versus Matisse. Hey, it's a fun fight, but somebody else threw their name in the hat with Pitbull, too. You know what I mean? Devin versus Matisse. Teal versus Pitbull. Woo! What about Pitbull? Oh, well, I ain't, I ain't going to. Pitbull versus... Let me pull this up. So, salute to Teal. He, he chose Steve Claggett just to bring everybody up to speed. He didn't want Raymond Moore tie, even though he was a 35-pounder. Maybe that could have been why he said no to him, right? Maybe that's why he ain't gonna get no credit. We could say that, right? Cut him a break. Kenneth Sims, though, is at 140 and surging and constantly winning and been looking better and better in fights. I don't know why you would say no to him, other than the fact that he 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 nice. That was Rodriguez is another one, still nowhere near as proven as Tiafimo, but definitely a dangerous fight. Why you would say no to him, I'm not sure why, because I think you'll get credit if you beat Elvis. I think Elvis. Kenneth and Raymond Raymond Moratai, even at 135, is better than Steve Claggett in terms of name recognition and people knowing these guys. But salute to him. Moving on from that, though. But this who threw their name in the hat with Pitbull, man. What y'all what y'all think about my HLD in the building? Matias Cody duck the teal smoke. I can't say that, bro. I, I can't say it. I can't because. I just, again, I go off the track record. Unless there was some type of contract or offer being made, like, I just think these dudes be in discussions, conversations. I don't think it'd be getting too far. And, again, Matias got a fight with Paro, and I feel like after that fight, we should get a lot more clarity. Just think what I'm saying. Tio literally turned down fights with Raymond Moritai, Kenneth Sims, Elvis Rodriguez, and chose Steve Claggett. But people want me to believe that Matias don't want to fight him. Matias fighting a better opponent than Liam Powell. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's why I don't I don't buy into that. Like, he literally turned down a 35-pounder, and they got Shakur messed up, got his name all looped into that. And it ain't him that turned down Moritai. He just never wasn't offered it. But you get what I'm saying? Tio literally legit turned down three opponents that we are more familiar with. And I don't think nobody knows Steve Claggett in here, right? And I ain't I ain't shitting on him because I don't do that, right? I don't know him. So I it's tough for me to believe that the guy that's talking about fighting Terrence Crawford, but then turned down quality opposition, more named guys to fight a guy that none of us know. And we and Matias is who is fighting the better opposition. Like I said, he done took somebody out in there, rest in peace to him at that. 
That dude is not a guy looking to avoid people to me. You get what I'm saying? I just don't see, I don't see him being no duck. You know what I'm saying? So, and again, just because a fight didn't materialize now don't mean it can't happen, right? Look at Ryan, right? He initially pulled out of negotiations and went the roly route, then double back to Devin, right? It was looking like it was dead in the water for a minute, right? It doesn't mean it can't happen. If he officially ducked him, you know, I'm going to call it what it is. Even though I don't like the duck term, I'll say he turned it down. And I'll let the people make of it if they want to call it a duck. You know what I'm saying? Matisse had no hand injury win, though. Win. And again, bro, it's tough because, again, what do you have to say? I, mean, you could, I could drop the link, too, because you could come up and build. Pop with the drop. He said T is one of the biggest ducks at 140. But I like Ergashev is nice, man. Ergashev is nice. Joey Fain said 36 minutes of boxing, 36 minutes of pool or two different things. That's that's a fact. That's true. They're verbally agreed for June, but he ran to Uncle Eddie for Paro. <laughs> oh, I'm, okay. I see what you're saying. But uh, I don't know if I don't know if that's the case, because what do you think about Tia Fimo turning down Raymond Moore, Tyre, Kenneth Sims, Elvis Rodriguez, but fighting Steve Claggett? And we all know those guys are more notable, probably more talented than that guy. You get what I'm saying? So it's tough for me to believe that Matias just turned him down. I don't think that's the case. I don't have all the details on that one, bro. So, you know, I ain't going to I ain't gonna put that on him. And and, and and again, bro, check it. Just like I'm saying, Tiafimo, a lot of people will call him a duck right now for not fighting those three names and fighting Steve Claggett. I ain't even called him that. I just said he turned him down because I believe that's what the information is. You get what I'm saying? He turned these guys down fighting a, a, a easier opponent. He said, ain't he never fighting with tears? <laughs> Pitbull versus Pro Gray. Oh, man. Yeah, crazy. Y'all smashed that like button, man. JDM in the building. Steve Claggett sounds like a stand up comedian name. Somebody say he sounds like a family guy character. Till daddy pick his fights. To be honest, yo, a lot of these dudes are not picking, picking their fights. Like, you know, like the way you would think, like they're going into the room and saying, yo, I won. It's not going like that. I think just like this, respect to T.O., this is why I didn't call him a duck. Because I believe he was presented with options. As fighters, you know, like they presented him with four options. He just chose the the least notable guy. If you want to call that a duck, go have at it. For me, I don't care to call dudes ducks. I feel like he got options, and he chose the le the lesser option. You chose the, the softer touch, right, out of the out of the guys. But it's part of boxing. I just don't think you going in there, you know fighting the killer after killer after killer after killer like just like andre war said it's not smart and it's not healthy so tia Fimo right now i think fit that bill he fought josh teller he fought jermaine ortiz jermaine ortiz gave him a tough fight josh teller was supposed to be a tough fight but it wasn't so i think he just taking a a kind of a confidence builder and i think after that we'll see if he really wants to fight a guy like matias if he really wants to fight a devin haney or now pitbull name is in the hat you can't ignore him he got a belt Everybody should want to fight Pitbull. Roly, I mean, Regis said he want to fight Pitbull for the belt. You know what I mean? Salute to the boxing voice. They suggested Roly fight uh, Regis. Regis said, man, the hell with Roly. He said he wanted Pitbull. He want Pitbull for that belt. Nah, he had a legit hand injury, bro. He did, man. Y'all know that. Matias, and he came into the fight with the hand injury, bro. And got to stop his Matias is a dog. Y'all got to put some respect. Hold on, man. I'm about to cue the clip again. Y'all acting crazy, man. Y'all make sure y'all smash that like button, sub to the channel. I got to cue the clip. Y'all got to put some respect on the boogie, man. <laughs> Though really, best 140 is here. I'm going to stop playing with my boy. No, I'm going to stop no playing with pussy. him. No, Ryan. You know what I'm saying? Straight like that. You heard, you heard him. You heard what he said right off the rip. Tia, who? Hold on. Though really playing with my boy. Best one for it. playing with him. He's here. No Teofimo. Pussy. No Ryan. Who is Ryan? No Haney. Chicken. No Rolling. Chicken. He's a yoker. Rolling. And the word no one. A yoker. No so what happened? I'm here. Who going fight with me? Who? Who? Who won fight with me? Who? You know what I'm saying? Who won? Who won? <laughs> who won it with the boogeyman? He out here calling people yokers and everything, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all want that? Y'all want that? Y'all don't really want none with bro, man. Y'all don't want none with him. More ties, not even ranked at 140, let alone ranked top 15. You know, we tired can learn the rules. Oh, uh, what the? 
oh, he must be talking to somebody else. That none of that don't got nothing to do with the fact that he was offered more attire and said no to him, though. I don't care about no rankings, the rules, none of that. And it, it, it's tough, like, to to lean your hat on the rules and and you say the rules and, and the rankings that you know rankings are are what's the word what's the word i could use man sometimes rank some rankings are bought paid for and the rules as far as the rules i respect the rules but they break they make and break the rules all the time like you did you know that one of the rules is supposed to be you no know, you're not supposed to be able to get a title shot after a knockout the knockout loss. Did you see Fundor get a, a not only a title shot, a unification after coming off a knockout loss? Do you now hear them talking about Earl Spence coming off a knockout loss, potentially fighting Fundor for a belt as well? See what I'm saying? So the rules, some they break them and they make them and break them as they go along, bro. So it's tough. So he said the team is ducking. <laughs> Listen, bro. Uh, I, I know y'all. I know y'all like that duck. That duck tag, but. It's tough, man. Like that's that's it's just not that cut and dry. Christopher Wife said, "Oh, what's good with it, Chris? How you feeling, bro? Remo, the the vision is in the building. My JVT family, what's good with it, Remo? How you feeling, bro? Gary Antoine versus Matias would be great. Absolutely, he said he said he'll fight Matias. He said he'll rock him, sock him, robot. Gary Antoine said Matias is a rock him, sock him robot, and he'll fight him to show y'all that he is not who he say he is." I love that kind of talk, but I would love to fight even more. And I believe Gary Antoine Russell. I believe he'll fight him. I do. I, until, until I got, you know, some proof that people are out here ducking fights, I'm not going to put the jacket on them. I don't like duck jackets. Too tough. I, don't, I ain't into it. Rules are made to be broken. You know it, Jay. And boxing know it, too, because they break them all the time. <laughs> Tio picked. Tio picked the Mogi chair. Yeah, GM. And I look. I'm bringing y'all the right information. I, I remember I told y'all before he was offered more attire. I just didn't know about Kenneth Sims and Elvis Rodriguez as well. You know what I mean? But you see that that information was correct. You know what I mean? We was on point. People can only hope to get lucky versus Haney. <laughs> I mean, nah, you got to have a game plan versus Haney. You got you to gotta be able to fight. You got to be prepared versus Haney because you got to be able to match the things that he do well and be able to take some of the things he do well away from him. You get what I'm saying? It's that simple. It ain't simple, but it's just like that. You get what I'm saying? You, you go, you're gonna have to be able to fight, bro, because he can. Mike Kirkland back in the super chat, my bro, man. Much love and appreciate. It. I don't think Matiz is unbeatable. Nope, he got a loss already, too. But you're gonna have to beat or knock him out. He got a core like Via, yeah, yeah. And he the fight he lost, the difference in the fight was the knock knockdown. He suffered a knockdown, but he didn't get knocked down. Down. It's like he got knocked and the, the ropes held him up, and he got like a standing count. But that same guy, he avenged that loss and, and stopped him. And that was Petros Anayan that he had fought some years back and avenged it and stopped, buddy. Um, Matias is a dog. Like, I just, I, 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 the way I look at it, unless I have, like, you know, undeniable proof or information that these dudes, he had an offer to fight some mine. He's just like, nah, I don't want to fight. And then fighting soft competition. Like, I feel like Liam Parrow is a good opponent. I feel like uh, Matias is he, he might not be fighting the absolute biggest names there but he's fighting a challenge each and every time and pay attention he taking o's go look at matias resume and go go look man matias putting some work i don't think he no duck he been lost his oh he ain't scared to lose again i don't think i just don't think he running and ducking from no smoke he running to the smoke ergashev was pretty damn good Liam Paro, another one undefeated pretty damn good I don't know. I, I, I like him. I like Matias, man. I don't see no duck in him. And we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, well, well. I, I already been getting these back, but but but, but now it's time for is. you to get your just do. Salute to my brother, Mike Kirk Guy Antoine. We'll watch Matias. I love to see that. He called him a rock'em sock'em robot, though. I love to see it. Salute to my unk, man. Matias will never get another body, but Pitbull might. <laughs> Pitbull will be punching, don't he? Pit, imagine Pitbull and Matias fighting, bro. Shadow guy. Imagine Pitbull and Matias. Pit boy is a more legit WBO champion, but he's still the weakest one for the champ. Loses the Teal, Matias, and Haney. Hey, I want to see any of them HLD. I want to see any of them, bro. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Tell me when any of them fights wouldn't be entertaining, though. You see Pitbull versus any of the other champions, Matias, T.O., Haney. It'd be entertaining. Now, I mean, because you know he presents a certain level of danger, and he going to fight back. He tough. He gritty. You know what I mean? He don't want to take a backward step. Now, everybody might not have a style to really ward him off. Like, Matias, him and him, him and Matias would be a bang out. 
Tio, he have Tio using the ring. He have Tio using the ring like he was doing Roly. And we know Haney gonna come to box. So the only guy that I think will go to him out of all of those guys is Matisse. I think the other ones he he gonna he gonna make them give up their ground in the ring. They're gonna have to box and move. Tis runs through power, we'll give him his props. You know, if he run through him, that'd be that's gonna be crazy, Larry. I'm telling you, he beating some solid opposition, bro. Takes high level skill to be Haney or a lucky punch. Nah, luck. I mean, yeah, luck is always a part of boxing. It can be a part, but yeah, it's skill for sure. You're gonna have to be highly skilled because Devin himself is highly skilled. Or you're gonna have to you even if you're not better than him skillfully, you're gonna have to have the style. Stylistically, your style is gonna have to be like trouble for him. You get what I'm saying? If not, you're gonna get out of box, and it's just what it is. Devin will struggle with Matias and your honest opinion. Tim Stoudemire in the building was good, bro. I feel you. I just think his style could present some issues, right? That Devin Haney maybe ha hasn't ran into yet at this point. But then again, maybe Devin has the discipline and the feet to ward him off and keep him up off of him. You get what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, salute to my Unc Dre finest in the cash app, supporting the grind, always supporting the grind. Much love to my guy, Unc Dre. And we ain't never got a box again. Whoa, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time for is. you to get your just do. That will make Matias back up. Shit. Now I think what he can do though, I think he could land some stinging shots though. Uh, Joe, like and Matias, you know he he gave. That's how he gauged what you got by allowing you to to hit him. And how I know this is because I spoke to somebody that know him personally. Salute to my bro Kano. He know him, so that's it's a method to his madness. That's how he kind of gauge what you got. I mean, I know it's not the smartest thing to block punches with your face, but it's worked for him thus far. You know, it's, it's worked against him once, and he just became more and more exciting after that loss. So the dude is as uh, tough as nails. Like, I, he obviously can be beat. He got a loss, but you're going to have to earn that. You're going to have to earn that. And he is more improved, I believe, than what he obviously was back then when he lost. And he's been kicking ass ever since, taking O's, beating guys up, making dudes quit. He's doing a lot, and it's impressive. Zena, what's good with it, bro? How you feeling? Everyone was kind of tame for fighting Roly. <laughs> it's crazy. Devin and Corey beat Pitbull the same way. Yeah, you got boxing, bro. You got to be the um that had that all around skill. And even then, he could he gonna push you. Pitbull gonna push you. He's shown that. Tank is a complete fighter, and and you know he, I get it the one hand, but he still you know showed a good account of himself against Tank. I mean, Tank was in his bag, and we learned a lot about tanking that particular fight a whole lot we we understood that for the people that didn't know already you know what i mean he, he definitely had a bag a chin defense he definitely had will he he had heart he gritty he could he bit down with an injury fought through it stayed composed got hit with some good shots slipped some big shots made him miss a lot was turning pit bull he, he was having fun in there at certain points too so people just act like he was a uh, scare he was Tank was in his bag in that fight, and it was fun to watch. Barossa was Matisse. Ishmael Barossa, I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing it, though. I wouldn't mind seeing it. I don't know if he whoops. Uh, uh, I don't know, Barossa. Pitbull is tough, man. He's just not going to be an easy guy to beat. You got to think stylistically. You have to have – I think you got to have some some boxing ability. that You bring the fight right to Pitbull, that's more in his wheelhouse. I think that you you make the fight a lot more even for him if you do that. You get what I'm saying? I right, busy in the building. What's good? Back blessings, fam. How you feeling? That Naya, that Jukumbaya were great fights. Not the most popular names, like you said, but skill with power. They don't be getting this in. We got to just do a little bit of homework. Matias got some names on there, man. Got some people that took some O's, you know, made some dudes quit in the age tube in the building was good with Haney and Cool with 12 zip Cruz solid win against the biggest hype job in boxing but I ain't forget Tank beat him with one hand nah I, I really don't think he a hype job I just think crew Pitbull Cruz is what he is he a fan favorite bro I don't think it's a hype job right I just think he a fan favorite right now he, he you get what I'm saying you you knock Roly out like that you I think people love him they starting to st storm him you know his Instagram following keep keep blowing up like they they loving him right now Tank to pit bull on short notice, absolutely, and still beat him. Right? Can Dev and Shakur fight Cruz because they won't be able to just avoid him? It's like Floyd versus Mike Donna. Floyd had to fight P Hunter in the building. Um, they both can fight him, but the thing is, P Hunter, when I hear that pit bull Cruz father say, you know, they can make more money than fighting guys like Shakur, and it'd be like a dog chasing a cat. 
that tells me he's not exactly the most confident that he can be him. So I think guys like, even though he said, he mentioned, I think he mentioned Haney, uh, Pitbull, Cruz, Haney, Tiafimo, uh, uh, Matias. He mentioned the right names, but I don't know. Like, based off that that comment, I don't know if, you get what I'm saying? If it's, Haney is a style that you're willing to deal with, right? And you talking about money, so it's just certain fights that I don't think Shakur or Haney is, he going to look to go in that direction. They already had an opportunity to fight Shakur, and they, they was cool on it, so. Yeah, he'll force you to have to fight at some point. But I think Shakur is just smart enough and um, you know, creative enough defensively to be able to figure figure out how to deal with him. You know what I'm saying? Saying so had a figure hand, figure hand injury. Nah, I know he did. You seen his hand? You show he seen you seen his hand. You seen his hand was messed up. Pitbull. Sometimes the the the, the uh, disconnect is people saying that his hand was broke. I don't believe it was broke, but that he definitely had a hand injury. He injured his hand for sure. You know what I mean, and, and he won without it. Jordan Smith in the building. Shakur would tag people all night, like Carbio walk forward with a little IQ if you want to. I don't know. I remember that fight, Jordan. You know, I remember. Uh, I think it was, it was Felix Carabayo. I think that was his name. It was in Spence position. The next I fought would be in trouble. Yeah, man. Next guy you fought. Yeah, Spence gonna try to do it. Get back. Slow feet. Don't eat Kendra in the building. My guy was good with it, man. Boxing gimmicky, Russell Tank, and Ugas all have one handed fights back to back. I'm telling you, man, people be kicking his ass. Pitbull just beat the worst champion in our era. <laughs> he's getting beat up in his last fight versus Jim Bo Bonnie. Not the best, but he's exciting to watch. Yeah, and you know, skillfully, you know, that's not Pitbull, but exciting. Check. Money's worth. Check. You know, he's going to come to fight every time. Check. Tough as nails. Check. He, he check a lot of boxes, right? You know you but you don't look at him as like one of the most skillful guys but you know you know what his kryptonite could be in a certain extent you know what styles are going to trouble him guys that can box and move control distance and range beat be the pit bull crews dudes that can't consistently control distance and range get out of the way you know know how to be creative defensively to the weather some of them the them them onslaughts from them they they either gonna have extremely tough nights or they mess around and lose Pitbull is, is not an easy guy to deal with by any stretch. You know what I'm saying? He'll give any and everybody a tough scrap. Any and everybody. Nah, it hurt. The tank hand wasn't hurt. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 I, I, I say both. I, I, I mean, look, one, one, one clearly, both of them you've seen. For me, I don't know who, who didn't see their hands. You know what I mean? Both of them had some hand injuries. But, again, the, the, I think the key is that they won with the hand injury. Like I can see if they lost, right? If they they won with them, so uh, you know, Kid Austin versus Muay Thai, Andy Cruz versus Loma, <laughs> Shakur and Maxi Hughes. These fights need to happen. They push a core in the ring with Maxi Hughes. The level of disappointment that that's going to exist is, is going to be unbelievable, bro. Yeah, I mean, I'd never want to see that. You know what I'm saying? Kid Austin and Muay Thai. Hell no, Shakur put Muay Thai in there with Shakur. Shit, he called him out. Right, Robert Garcia made it seem like he turned him down. Right, he's going to need to get back in the ring and carry his next opponent. He said he's going. He said he's going to make Artem pay, man. He said he's going to kick Artem ass. That thing, your stamina better be a one versus Pitbull. Yeah, because if you're tired and you be forced to fight, you, you can't make a miss on the inside. You're toast. Absolutely, Rick. 100. percent I agree with you. Think Shakur can do to earn being worth 50 50 with Haney. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, man. Um, that's tough, man. Like, uh, it's tough to answer that for me. Look, uh, just win, bro. And the ball, just win, just keep winning. Like, for one, they in different divisions, right? Um, you just go up there and show that you could win, show that you could win, show things, they show that you could win at that level. I mean, you know, what I mean, on the you know, at that's on the stage, get, get a belt, but it, that's just a tough question, man. Um, Oh, man, that's tough, man. I hate, I hate that. But look, just look at it this way, man. Uh, people, that fight ain't, ain't a, um, that ain't what people think it is, man. In terms of all that money talk shit, like he don't have to really do nothing. He's done it already, really. You know what I mean? But if they really want to make that fight, will you, you'll, you'll know, you'll know. Like you get what I'm saying? Um, salute to Bill Haney. Salute to Dave. I asked Bill straight up. 
when do he think that fight is going to happen? He said he don't know. He sounded so unsure. I never heard him say I don't know about anything. He said he didn't know. So that made me feel like they ain't even planning on fighting him ever. I mean, just don't seem like some some people just seem like they're not going to make certain fights unless it's some real type of public demand for it or something like that. That fight right there, I think in the meantime, he got business. And I think they'll cross that bridge when they get there. And I think in order for that fight to be a thing at all, again, Shakur had to be in the same weight class with him and winning like he normally do. And then people will start talking about it again. But until then... He he at 35. He still he can make the biggest fight in boxing if he get a tank fight. So you get what I'm saying? He's still in a good position. <laughs> you know what I mean? What fight was Bill talking about? Um Shakur and uh Devin. I had asked him about that. You know what I mean? I had asked him about that 25% stuff too, Joe. He, he I think he was in there. You know what I'm saying? He said that was as real as hit me and him talking, something like that. He said. And then when I asked him when he think a fight between them could happen, he said he didn't know. So, you know, I wasn't going to force it. You don't know. You don't know. I mean, it's, I, I expect a little more from a guy because he always full of answers and got something to say. So I just didn't. I mean, look, it's easy for me to understand. People, people, it's all, it's an honest conversation. And it's, it's, it's if you tell me, all right, Shakur, Doug, I'm not going to agree with it, but I ain't about to curse you out about it. If that's your opinion, that's your opinion on it. But for me, the way I interpret that, that video was very telling. There's no way in hell people are going to convince me after that video dropped what you saying, what you were saying in terms of the competition and the level and the gap. There's no way you're going to convince me with any move that you've made thus far that's telling me you want that fight right now. No, I ain't saying you scared. No, y'all not ducking. None of that weird shit. It's just not time for that fight. I don't think that's in their immediate plans right now. They got business to take care of for one in a separate weight class, but two. I don't think that's going to happen until they're at least in the same weight class again and there's some type of demand for it as long as both guys are winning. But for me, that clip that came out was very telling. If the shoe was on the other foot and, and it was Shakur's grandfather saying that, what Bill was saying, I would I would feel the same way. I would say, hey, man, Shakur and them don't have no intent on fighting him. I would say that. But because I heard what he said, he was very detailed and honest right there. I respect it. Like a lot of people, like how it came out is one thing, but what he said was very honest. And I respect what he was saying, even if he didn't know people was hearing what he said. Like that's the truth right there. Like it's hard. Like fans are easy to manipulate. Like after that comes out, if for me, there's no... There's no getting in the public and then shitting on him and saying what he is not no more. You, you can't convince me about nothing you say. None of that slick talk. I heard what you really think about him behind closed doors and how good and how talented you think he is and how he's shown you that through the years and sparring and all the sparring that you and his son did, him and your son did. So it's hard. You can't shit on that, man. You, you can't. That tape came out. Bro, just it's easier to tip your hat and say, yo, he's short. He, he, he nice, but. He ain't better than my son. Like anything you could, but all of the, like the slander tactics, that shit, that tells me you don't want to fight him. Like, cause you, you taking that approach. You get what I'm saying? So salute to them boys. I don't think none of them scared, but I don't think the business is, is squared away where that fight is going to happen no time soon. You know what I'm saying? He did the same thing with Hitchens. He said, why well, Hitchens mentioning him? Cause he wasn't at 140 yet. Score all being the same weight, but tank don't how convenient. That is true. Sent little buddy the offer, yeah, man. But y'all know I ain't about to get to that offer talk because I don't care about that. Y'all know I'm too real, bro. I'm too real. Like real ones know, bro. Like I know Joe. If you were sitting in my shoes and something like that was offered to Dev, and it was like take it or leave it, and that never was an offer that that fighter made, you'll be saying the same thing I'm saying. I'm cool knowing that. I, I know what your position is, but I feel very comfortable knowing if the shoe was on the other foot, you'll be saying exactly what I'm saying. Like is just put it this way. All BS talk aside, when it's time for that fight to be made, it won't be so public. If that makes sense, right? It won't be so public. That's all. No, it won't be worth talking about their money. We'll know about all that shit later, right? When it's time for that fight to be made, they'll square it away. Cause they both, they both, they both believe in themselves, right? And they talent. So I think when that time, when that time comes, they'll cross that bridge. But right now, you ain't nobody in boxing. I don't give a damn how good you try to paint the narrative. Nobody in boxing can convince me that they've ever done one thing that would dictate to me that they actually want to fight him. You get what I'm saying? That's all. It's like me and Shakur, we talk like 
every other day. So, um, you know, I'm not. I, you know, I'm not ducking or dodging nobody, but that's just not just that's not somebody I'm just in a rush to get in the ring with. What do you say? What do you say? Somebody who's not in a rush to get in the ring with? Okay. Okay. The man literally said, "That's not somebody I'm not in a rush to get in the ring with." But he set the table where I'm not ducking or dodging. But I'm not in a rush to get in the ring with him. You ain't never heard Corey say that nowhere publicly. You ain't never heard him say that shit. <laughs> Sometimes you could put your foot in your mouth. Nah, but I love these dudes. I love Joe, my guy. Yo, we be having fun, man. That's my guy. We had fun with boxing, man. I salute all these dudes. They all real ones to me. Oh, you couldn't hear? My it's bad. Like, there you sure go. We talk like every other day. So, um, you know, I'm not. I, you know, I'm not ducking or dodging nobody, but that's just not just that's not somebody I'm just in a rush to get in a ring with. Mm. You said that's just somebody that he's not in a rush to get in a ring with. P. Hunter, he was talking about Shakur. He said Shakur. I don't know if y'all, it's kind of low the clip, but he said he. I talk to Shakur every day. You know, I'm not ducking or dodging nobody, but he's just not somebody I'm in a ring. You know, I'm in a rush to get in a ring with. <laughs> <laughs> Zane, if you need the clip, <laughs> you need the clip. You know your boy got you, Zane. You know what I mean? <laughs> Joe a fool, yo. He loved the Devin Haney talk. I rock with Devin Haney too, Joe. Just always know that. As long as you know that, we good. I'm going to always support him. I don't care who I think he can beat or can't or will beat him. I'm going to always support him because he he, he, show, he he gave me every reason to support him. I don't got no reason why shouldn't support that man no reason you never went to the netflix to secure anything just told him 25 percent and say we're looking to getting the money later <laughs> ha! don't get zane about to cook the comment section don't start you know, went the real smooth hell they paid step aside the board mandatory sandra martin <laughs> i just think him and his dad are smart businessmen I think he's a hell of a fighter at the same time. That's why they've been able to position themselves so well. Um, I think he's just trying to capitalize on his name, grow his profile, put himself in a position to just really be the man that he want to be. That's all. I have nothing negative to say about what he's doing until people start forcing the narratives, right? He's just doing what he's supposed to do, yo. Getting in there and, and kicking ass. Uh-huh. There's some similar like career to go. Are you send it to me, Annabelle? I'm on Instagram. Show me where he said it. I still ain't find the clip where he said that. <laughs> ain't never say that. <laughs> Show me. I watch a lot of stuff. I don't think he ever said that. Latoya Top Dog, what's good with it, man? The Rise is the family. You already know. Salute to my Rise family, man. And salute to everybody in the building. Y'all make sure y'all smash the like button, sub to the channel. Let's keep hitting the like button because I know everybody hit the like button. Man, that's your nuts. boxing voice. Ruidy's looking like groupies defending fairy tales while he admitted himself. I'm telling you, bro. Zane, if it's crazy, you can't find you can't make that stuff up. You know, boxing gym about something that will come up. Yeah, you know I'm saying send it to me. Show me. Oh, you can send it to me, bro. I'll play it because I'm a fair guy. If you could you could find it. If you could find it. Not if you got to go crazy for it. I don't expect you to do that. But if you could find it, send it to me. I'll play it. I ain't never heard Core say that. <laughs> and that's just me having fun with Joe, man. Me and Joe be uh me and Joe be clowning, man. You know, that's my boy. You know, that's my guy. Of <clears throat> course, everybody, 140 but Tank. Damn. I know now. Tank a dog, man. That's my guy, too, man. Tank is the fight that 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 would concern me the most, too, Rick Timms. That is, that's the fight that concerned me the most. You know what I'm saying? Because Tank really liked that to me. To, to somebody show me that he not. It is what it is. Bill was on the video talking about. Are you tripping or been the big homie? <laughs> big homie core. <laughs> Joe, Joe be having fun, bro. He a damn fool, man. He a good sport, man. That's my guy right there. That's my guy. But, yeah, let's get into this. We ain't done yet. The cook ain't done. We ain't done. So y'all keep smashing the like button. The show ain't over yet. We ain't finished yet. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all keep rocking with your boy. We going to keep rocking out. Um. Let me play this clip from Robert Garcia, man, because I'm going to address this issue, too, man. And salute to Robert Garcia. Maybe he didn't know the ins and outs, but I think he misspoke a little bit right here. 
this kid is ready for a world title fight, but for for one reason or the other, it looks like we just, you know... It's not the time right now. You know, like, they're, they're not giving us that time, you know. I know, I know it's not top rank. Obviously, the, the champions also have to have to choose who they're fighting, especially if it's just a voluntary title defense. You know, they, they get to choose, you know. But what I just read... Uh, uh, Shakur is 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 is, is fighting uh, June sixth. June no no July. Oh, July July, July yeah. in New Jersey. Uh, we we asked for it. You know we talked to Top Rank about it, but uh, it looks like he chose to fight somebody else. You know I don't know what I, I really can't I don't know how the how how it got how it got uh, you know how the negotiation went. I don't know if they've been offered. I don't even know if Top Rank even offered him to fight uh, Raymond. But we've been telling Tom Brandt that we want we want to fight for the world title. So Notice he changed the court bill off for Raymond. I know um, right? wow. Raymond's also been very vocal about wanting to fight Keyshawn Davis. He, he said that's an easy fight for him. Is, is that is. a fight too it you is. guys are looking for? You know, right now we're looking at a title shot. You okay. know, we're looking at, at a world title shot. Maybe maybe if, if we're able to get a title shot and we win the title, then maybe our, our defense could you know we could defend against against Keyshawn Davis. Keyshawn Davis is a great fighter, great talent, but. Uh, I, I honestly I truly believe that, you know, he'll be there, but he's not ready yet. Okay. He needs more seasoning, more I experience. Think so. I think so. He needs a little more experience. And, he, you know, he'll be a superstar. I'm willing to bet anything. If Keyshawn Davis and Raymond Moore tired fight right now, it won't be the fight that Robert Garcia think is going to be. I'm willing to bet money. And I'm not even really a betting guy like that. I'm willing to bet money if Keyshawn stepped in the ring with Raymond Moore tired right now. That fight would not go how Robert Garcia think it would. I got, I promise you, I know it won't. Got me stuck, man. I know what I see. He make, he make, he make some. He make a lot of mistakes in there. He make a lot of mistakes. He was getting tagged by that uh, uh, dude he just fought. He was getting tagged. <laughs> Damn, Robert. Oh, so yeah. So look, <laughs> Aisha said, "Snack strong." <laughs> Snack strong. Oh uh, man, and the rest of fighter. Also, man, Bill said they never try to call Al for non show for sure. I'm telling the style line, Keyshawn works. I'm telling Keyshawn real more on the Thursday and Devin Reasons did on the Saturday. Maybe they need to holler at Thursday. <laughs> Zane, if they don't want that conversation, boy, I'll be letting them live. Andy Cruz called him his son. Yeah, Andy Cruz be talking crazy, but Keyshawn, Keyshawn got um. Then you got Eddie Hearn to admit to making which fight was it the Andy Cruz fight or was it Kid Austin? One of them he said he was gonna make, but they just they don't want to fight him right now. I'm telling you, they don't want to fight him right now. I, 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 listen, I know what I see. That dude Andy Cruz is tremendously skilled, but I still feel like Keyshawn got the pro level experience. I feel like he got more of a pro style, and it won't be the same fight that it was in the amateurs. You could bet your money, you could bet your bottom dollar on that one, bro. I mean, Keyshawn, both prospects. Uh Raymond is closer to working himself out of there, but Keyshawn got what 10 fights. It's okay for him to be a prospect. I mean, I bet you and he one of the best ones out there too. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep vouching for him, man. You gotta show me he can't fight because every time he get in the ring, he continue to show me he's exactly who I think he is. Nice, he's sharp, young, talented, he's just getting better. He's young, still got a lot to learn, but he's sharp, and you can't tell me he's not. Yeah, 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 Jackson, they're my guys. They are funny, bro, because they know how to they they know how to have fun with it. You know what I mean? They know it'll be all love, just having a little fun with the boxing comments. I can't. We're tired to get his opportunity. Just me too, Timothy. I can't wait, bro. Tim, man, they acting crazy. They acting crazy, man. And more time have a bad weight cut. He didn't look the same side of it. I'm not sure. I didn't hear none. I would like to. I would like to interview him. I wouldn't mind interviewing Raymond Mortai. I like Raymond Mortai. I would like. Yeah, he didn't look like his normal self. I mean, he definitely didn't have the performance that he typically has, for sure, for whatever reason. I'm not sure what that was, but he still got the job done nonetheless. You know what I mean? That just goes to show you, like, it'd be a uh, selective outrage. Ain't nobody talking about that. They still talking about somebody turn something down. So we're going to clear that up right now. <laughs> Did I hear Keyshawn? Yeah, you heard him. Tank made it clear that he won't be Pitbull rematch, plus Pitbull don't deserve a Tank rematch. I, yeah, he turned down other – he can't be turning down other top guys and then hollering that you want the guy. Like, you, you can't do that. You let Humberto drop him. Yeah, uh, you talking about uh, 
more tired a couple fights back he got dropped in like the first round got up the win by knockout i believe oh yeah man let's hear this because shakur wanted to bet robert garcia 100k here we have one of the best powerful fighters on the planet shakur and look who's here he wants to bet a hundred thousand dollars if he fights Raymond, he's gonna bet you a hundred thousand that he wins. I don't have the money, fucker. You make millions. I don't make that money. The fuck, a hundred dollars I'll bet, but not a hundred thousand. What's wrong with this? It's like, like four million dollars to fight. I don't, I don't have the money. <laughs> but, but he is a great fighter. How Robert know how much he getting? Stop, stop pocket watching, Robert. Yeah, mm -hmm. nah, one of the best fighters in the world, most, one of the most talented fighters in the world. That was an exchange today between Shakur Stevenson, one of the best pound for pound fighters in the planet, and Salute Robert Garcia Ellie segment. about a potential fight with Shakur and Ray Murataya. They had a heated exchange on social media, and today they faced off. Here's Pete Dunn, Shakur, and then Robert and Shakur. Check it out. <laughs> Oh shit! hundred k, but which fight, Shakur? Um, me versus Raymond Murataya. What is it gonna think? happen though? Is it gonna think? happen though? Is it gonna happen? December or what? Yeah. Yeah. I like oh, it. Well, I don't know. It didn't happen for July. Yeah, but what happened? Well, I didn't know. I didn't. Tyrone never put that to the table, bro. Yeah, but it's gonna happen though. It's gonna happen though. Is it gonna happen? December or what? Listen closely. I like it. Well, I don't know. It didn't happen for July. Yeah, but it's gonna happen though. It's gonna happen though. Is it gonna happen? December or what? Listen closely. I like it. Well, I don't know. It didn't happen for July. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't. That Tyrone never put that to the table, bro. No, they told us the same shit. It's fine. So what do you think? Boom. Boom. Did you just hear him? Said Top Rank never brought that to the table, bro. He said it's cool because they told us the same shit. So that proof that it was never offered. So when Robert Garcia just sat in that other, that other clip that I just played, it said Shakur picked another fight and turned us down because we went to Top Rank to talk about it. Yeah, that's true. You went to top rank, but it was never an offer for y'all for them two to fight. And you know that. And they just said it right here. But you got people with big ass channels, big followings that push false narratives. And I just hate that. It don't matter what fighter it is. Any fighter with false narratives being pushed and I know what's up, I'm always going to speak on it. I hate it. You sat there and heard your court say they never put that on the table. Pita, the same guy, he said, yeah, that's, that's cool because they told us the same thing. They actually agreed that that wasn't an option. So now you have to then go back and say, oh, I got my information wrong. He did not turn it down. It wasn't offered. But people don't do that because they like false narratives, that weak ass shit. And like I said, if you think Raymond Mortai will beat Shakur, I'm willing to bet you. Whoever you are out there, if you think Raymond beat Shakur, I'm willing to bet some money. I promise you I am. I'm willing to bet some money. And I like Mortai. I don't have nothing negative to say about him. Good talent, but just let's bet the money. <laughs> I don't see it, bro. I don't see it. Miss me with that. Good fighter, but I would still want to see it. I'm not about to down him. He can fight. He's skilled. He's talented. He got a good trainer. He got power in both hands. He like that. He nice. They got, what, about the same number of fights. Shakur got 21 fights. I think more Ty got like 19. You know what I'm saying? 19 fights. So that took, that's that. And I don't even got to play the rest of it. That just shoots down the narrative. So you hear... If you see somebody pushing that he turned down a fight, first of all, you will have to have the fight offered to you to turn it down. Can't turn down some shit that was never offered to you. And all y'all talking about some, oh, well, why didn't he demand it? Why the hell are you going to demand shit? He, when has he gotten a fight by demanding? It? It's not going to happen now, especially with one fight on his contract left. You think they're going to allow him to demand who he wants? Or they better yet, they that's why he wasn't an option to begin with. It's easy to understand it. Yeah, I definitely bet you, Tim. I bet you that dude, that, that's not the guy to beat him. I don't see it. <laughs> D-Ray live on the drive. What's good with it, D-Ray? He said, let's bet. I, bet, I, I really bet y'all on that. That Shakur beat Raymond more time. 100%. You already know, Zenith. They be hating. I just seen that false narrative floating around, Zenith. And I just wanted to shoot it down because we ain't going for that over here. We, we, that's what I'm saying, Jay. We not, I, uh, Joe just be, uh, uh, you know, teasing this shit. See, so what's good with it, family? I just wanted to put that out there and I wanted people to hear it for themselves. You heard them, both of them just mutually agree that top rank said that that wasn't an offer, that wasn't on the table for neither one of them. So 
Man, ain't nobody got a lie. <laughs> they don't even believe. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think Shakur will be signed. A part of me, a, a big part of me thinks so too, Aisha, because of who he's with, you know, who he, his team and who they already work with and most of the fighters are on that side. So I can see him working something out and, and, and staying there. You know what I'm saying? But the only thing I would want to know is uh what would be the hold up and why he ain't just do it now because if you figure if you was just gonna resign anyway if you would have did it sooner i think he would have had better opponents to select from if that makes sense you get what i'm saying so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more aggressive he had more respect yeah yeah and I, I like i like i like how he is though because it goes to show you that you ain't gotta be who you not like if that's not who he is because i don't know with a smile like that could you really convince people that you know you you were running around here mad all the time like this dude be cheesy he be loving this stuff too much so I I like his temperament I think it's even care I think he kick up when he need to I think he chill when he need to sometimes even surprisingly he chill when when you think he probably be kicking up he be chilling so I, I like his temperament Junior in the base said give me Larry versus Crawford 160 no way should Crawford wait till November for his next fight I agree 100 percent with that Junior Crawford should not wait till no damn uh November for another fight at all. He should stay active. He should keep the the the, the flame burning bright. You know what I mean? Keep the keep his star bright. You know what I mean? Shining bright and just keep stay active. Better fighter, hundred percent. But Raymond style, I feel you, Tim. Look, I like it. That's why it's a good fight, Tim. It's a good fight. But I bet y'all that he'd beat him. I don't want to risk none of his top fighters in Shakur. Right? If he's not sure that he's going back, you get what I'm saying? The Kello just is not a good investment. Why would you risk one investment for one that could potentially be going out the door? Keyword potentially, but. That's where we're at right now. And that's just it's easy to understand why that wasn't on the table for him, for either guy. And, and at the end of the day, they still had T.O. got off of Raymond. And he was cool on it. So who wins between Tank and Shakur? Samaria White was good with it. Um, The best way I can say this, right, being that I'm from Jersey, I know the easy answer. People be expecting me to just say Shakur going to just beat Tank, right? But my thing is this, with those two fighters, I feel like they're the best two fighters at 35. There's number one and number two. I don't care how you, which way you rank them or interchange them. I feel like with their skill sets and what they both bring to the table, they have the best chance at beating each other. I know that's like that. That's an almost on the fence answer, but that's a real answer, though. You know what I'm saying? I could easily, maybe if they actually make the fight, then I'll be forced to examine some things and, and pick. But right now, until they do it, I'm comfortable with my answer being those two dudes have the best chance at upsetting the other guy. You know, Shakur as a, a, a defensive wizard that people had, haven't been able to even come close to really cracking, right, when it comes down to it, right? If you look at Tank being a complete fighter, he has the best chance at figuring that out, having the opportunity to figure that out. But on the same token, with Tank being a complete fighter, if it's anybody that has the skill set, the IQ, you know what I mean? You know, the, the feet, you know, the, the number of different things, like, it's him. So that is the Super Bowl of 135, I believe. I think it would be the best fight to, to make. I don't care which guy you think will win. I think that's one of the best fights that you could ever make at this weight class, as long as they're there. Um, realistically, for me, all, them, all those dudes do is get in the ring and win, and they fight at a high level, and they win impressively, right? um Shakur is a round by round type of fighter boxing purist right he looking to you know get you round after round after round and that's just, that's what works for him that's how I, I perceive it if the opportunity comes to get you out of there he can get you but Tank I think he he fights for punishment and to get you out of there I don't think he tries to chase a knockout but I think the way he naturally approaches fights produces knockouts at a high rate obviously with the body of work is proof is in the pudding so that's the thing with Tank. Tank fights not necessarily round by round to win rounds per se, but to to win the fight, to hurt you. Tank fights to damage you, to beat you up. Like you get what I'm saying? Uh, he like he want to throw the shots that hurt. You know what I mean? Uh, you know the ones that matter. So even though he ain't, he don't got a high output, he's very efficient, and his punches matter. When they hit you, they 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 count. So that that's you know what i mean he just a, he, he a dangerous guy to deal with he's not an easy guy to prepare for he damn sure would be even tougher to beat so that's just what it is but cracking shakur's defense enough where the point where you can beat him is not going to be easy for people either everybody can be beat they all are flawed nobody is flawless or perfect but those two are the best two 135 pounders in my opinion and they have the absolute best chance 
at beating each other. I think nobody else in the division beats either one of those guys. I don't think nobody at 135 beats Shakur Tank at all. And the only guy that's going to beat each other is one or, one or the other, whichever way you want to slice it. If you tell me Tank eventually catches him and knocks him out, I ain't going to lose my mind over it because it, it's not crazy to feel like that. You tell me Shakur going to find a way and figure it out. He's smart enough. His defense is sharp enough. His offense is good enough. He's going to find a way to win. I, I'm i going to understand it. So it's just one of them fights. It's a pick em fight. I, I, for me, people say Tank don't have no 50-50 fights. I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure about that. I think this is his 50-50 fight. I think him and Frank Martin is somewhere in that ballpark. Not, you know, exactly as much. Fit. This is his 50-50 as it get to me. Tank and Shakur, you can say what you want. But he, uh, um, they, they the best two for me. Tank being everybody at 35. Also, Shakur being everybody at 35. That's why they have to fight for sure. Is that, that's why I say it, it, Same thing I just said. Nobody else beats them but them pretty much. And that's why we want to see it. Fight each other, yeah. They gotta fight each other. Score beats on that man when we messed up mentally. I don't think so. I think that's thing. I think that's one of Tank's uh strengths, bro. I think he's one of the most mentally toughest fighters in boxing, and it, it don't get spoken of a lot. It's hard to make that dude doubt himself. Tank is very assured of himself in that ring, very comfortable in there, and he's hard to, you know. Then I think that's a way that you will have to beat him. One of those elements I have to be present. You have to make him doubt himself. You know what I'm saying? And if he don't doubt himself, he's going to continue to work and he's going to figure it out. Mr. Intentional said, runner, Tank stops him. Right, listen, I feel you, man. I can't even argue. But only thing I could say is if you really do, because your name Mr. Intentional, so I know you must be, a, you, you, you got to be a guy that pay attention, right? Uh, no, no, Mr. International. So you really watching this stuff. Hopefully you, you really watching boxing. Go watch his fights again and you tell me the fights that Shakur ran in per se because he a runner right runner means like when when you typically turn on this record stevenson fight he gonna run around the ring the whole time even though i hate that term run but just show or name me the fights in which he ran show me it and then if you say all all the three division champion do is talk that's the most like empty statement you can make a mad this is where we at in boxing where a boxing fan to come through a chat and say a three division undefeated world champion, former unified <laughs> silver medalist, has done nothing. He don't do nothing but talk. And then, but can't name me another three division champion right now in 21 fights that's undefeated. Name me that guy. Name me a guy. And then tell me again why he's not doing nothing. So name me somebody that's doing exactly what he's doing. What you saying, what you just said. No resume. He ain't doing nothing. So name me another guy in 21 fights that's doing what he's doing. And you'll see how how ignorant that statement is man y'all gotta be better boxing fans you gotta do better than that bro he showed you through three different weight classes that he that guy and you still talk about he did nothing sound like that, that shit that people say about terrence crawford <laughs> and a man been through three weight classes two time undisputed they still be like ah he, but bud crawford he didn't do nothing <laughs> he didn't do anything though but he didn't do nothing his whole career he didn't fight anybody y'all i don't i don't care who you think you are, how much boxing you think you watch, if you are pushing that Terrence Crawford in three different weight classes, two times undisputed, being 40-0, and 0, winning the biggest fight of his career, has done nothing, I don't think you should watch boxing. I really don't. I don't give a damn who you are. That's an ignorant statement. To say somebody's done nothing, that's accomplished more than 97% of the people that, that are his peers is the most ignorant shit. To say he did nothing, that means everybody else is doing absolutely nothing in the sport. Think about that. How how ignorant of a statement that is. <laughs> yeah, y'all be tripping, bro. Y'all be tripping. Real Picasso in the building. What's good with it, fam? Shakur needs to fight more. I think Shakur is um active enough. I don't think Shakur has had big layoffs and stuff like that in his career. Matter of fact, I know it because I watched him. You know what I mean? I've pretty much seen all the fights. I ain't had no real big gaps in his career like that where it's like he's very inactive that ain't been the case Dre noble in the building my guy was good with it how you feeling you just gotta you just gotta give credit where it's due that's what we do over here man we the Shakur stevenson slandered on fly over this over this way not on this channel <laughs> y'all can miss me with that and and, and y'all can hate all you want but i guarantee you i make for damn sure you won't bet your money you won't bet your money on them in the next fight july 6th bet your money 
that, that Artem going to beat him. The hell with hating on him. To tell me, Artem, you, you got Artem beating him July 6th in North. The hell with the going the backs and forth. We could just back get it out the way. I mean, I guarantee you he kick his ass. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what it is. Mr. Mr. International, again, man, you ain't representing your name well. You call Artem a bum. You calling somebody with Olympic pedigree a bum is the wildest thing. Hey, you got to do better, bro. What, what's up with your boxing knowledge, bro? You, you got to do better than that. He wasn't a bum when Frank Martin fought him, but now he a bum. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> Y'all got to stop, man. You got to give people their credit, bro. <laughs> got to give people their credit. Fundora was coming off a loss, and he just won. So what that mean, Mr. International? People don't come off losses and win. People don't come off losses and win. What you trying to say? You know what I mean? Didn't T.O. lose to Cambosis? What did he do in his next fight? Did he or did he not win? What are you saying? When you lose, don't fight again ever? He's coming off a loss. He can't fight nobody else. You know what I mean? You got to make it make sense, bro. And he gave Frank Martin a good scrap, too. Gave Frank Martin a damn good scrap to the end. T.M. was good with it, bro. I think he I think he can make an example out of him for sure. For sure. Let's see how tough. I don't know how tough Artem is, but I think he could put it to the test. Looks good with it, man. I hope he stop him. Frank could nah, Frank ain't no man. Frank, Frank, how could how could you call a guy that's fighting Tank Davis a a, a, a bitch? D for the win in the building was good with it. Yeah, you you I'm I'm only giving you you just making it, you know, you just make you just driving the conversation right now because you just being weird. You don't really like boxing then, I can see. Cause you're saying Shakur ain't do nothing. Frank is a bitch. Who your favorite fighter, dude? I just want to know. <laughs> for sure. You already know, Macho. They can't do they can't beat him. So the the only thing they can do. Oh, yeah, Shakur, but that's Shakur called him that because of the situation he had. He could feel the way he won about Frank Martin. I don't think Frank Martin is a bitch. I never will. I don't think he was a duck. I don't think he was a bitch. I just think, you know, people are entitled to cross their T's and dot their I's in business and make sure that they're getting paid what they feel like they're worth in any situation. Same energy I got for Shakur not knowing his worth and understanding he didn't have to take 25%. It's the same thing with Frank. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you wanted him. You one of them. He never called. He never called Loma. Well, you know what? Loma Loma ain't turned the fight down after having a contract at the green and stuff either. He he answered that question for people that claim that he had an energy for Frank Martin that he didn't have for Loma. It's easy to understand. Lomachenko never once in his career or since that fight was a thing said that I was fighting him. He never made us believe that he was getting in there with Shakur. Frank Martin almost, you know, that business was almost done. And then he, 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 you know, he said he needed a little, uh, and, and that kind of, so his energy for him was a little different because of that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not here to justify it. Um, he, he put pressure on Loma too. So don't, what was he, what more is he supposed to do? Loma, <laughs> Loma still be struggling to speak English. What he supposed to type a paragraph to him? <laughs> he wanted to fight him. Y'all focus on the wrong stuff. The fact that he wanted to fight, think about it. You're more focused on the names that he's calling the fighters than the fact that both of those guys had opportunities to fight him and neither of the fights happened and neither neither of them was Shakur's fault. See, that's what kind of fight fan you are. You you worried about, oh, well, he he called Frank Martin a bitch. They grown men. I don't give a damn what he called them. I ain't, I don't feel that way. Shakur can feel how he will because he a fighter. He can feel how he want. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure he would have stood on that if he'd have gotten the ring with him. So I can understand his energy being different for him because he felt like they had an agreement and they was going to fight. Loma was very consistent. He he wasn't fighting him. He said it. He made it clear. So just a little different. But again, the bigger picture is not what who got called what name. It's the fact that both guys did have opportunities to fight him and it didn't happen. And it wasn't Shakur's fault. I don't make Frank Martin a duck. But that's something you should focus on more so than what name somebody got called. The fact that the guy that people are saying nobody is turning him down, nobody's ducking, should cap, he's a runner, this and that, that same guy, Loma wanted absolutely nothing to do with him. Nothing. That guy, I think Frank Martin would have fought him had he got the money. I do. I don't think Frank Martin was ducking out of the situation. I think he just needed, you know, that little uh, and he got it with Tank, and now we got he got an even bigger fight. So in hindsight, it worked out for him. Not not fighting Shakur and getting a tank fight, it makes a lot more sense for him. It works out better for him in the long run because that's the biggest opportunity he could have got. 
Big Dog Willie back in the super chat. What's good with it? Haney Cole is the most retarded group of people. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say that out loud. <laughs> he got, caught me off guard that time. Sued the Big Dog. And man. we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, well, well. I already been getting these back, but but but, but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Salute to my guy, Big Dog. Man. Go find Armour, show Frank how to really beat him. Yeah. Then when he beat him like that, I'm like, well, he's Frank Martin's leftovers. Leftovers is a casual term. I don't care who you are. That's how just do see it. When you use the word running in a fight, that's a casual term. When you use the term leftovers, that's a casual term. What the hell is a fighter supposed to do after they lose? Never fight again? This, this what are we talk this they, this is not food bro like they're fighters you lose a fight you get back in there you rebuild you get back in there and you do it over again i don't believe in no leftover terms and i don't believe in the term running in boxing i don't that shit is garbage it's bad de los santos is rematching rio you gotta catch up bro Shakur, the definition is sweet signs absolutely he rematching rio a guy he really should rematch some of y'all short-sighted you only be if a guy beat you one handed and you was only able to land 40 punches, you made no fucking case in the fight that you deserve a rematch. None, none whatsoever. You made no case for yourself that you deserve a rematch. None, none whatsoever. But y'all all saying what he need to do. Ryo wasn't somewhere. I mean, he wasn't somewhere pushing like, yeah, I need that rematch. He got to run it back. He knew he lost. He knew he lost and he wasn't getting no damn rematch because it ain't that fight didn't warrant a rematch. Only some crazed fans would want to just see like he fighters don't fight just to prove to small percentages of people that whatever doubt you got about them. This is business. You ain't going. That would be a waste of a fight. That's the best he could do with a guy with one hand. I don't want to see that again. I don't need to see that again. You get what I'm saying? Unless he maybe he beat somebody and do something different and they revisit it. Cool. But. He didn't do shit that make me say, yeah, he can do better than that in a rematch. He can actually do something different. He was healthy. He had no issues coming into that fight. They say how 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 much in shape he was, what kind of good camp he had. The, the same rhetoric you hear anytime a fighter about to fight. So don't give me that. And that's the best he could do. So just think about that. Just think about that. I do agree with Shakur. Evan rematch too uh, too bad. Pamper Bob and Jay Prince want to take that risk again. That's that I that don't it don't have nothing to do with them not wanting to take the risk. Rick is it don't make sense. The only people are clamoring for that. Like what what like it, the the decision wasn't in question is what I'm saying. The, it wasn't enough for debate as to who won. You you ain't winning no fight landing forty punches for damn sure. You get what I'm saying? And you healthy and you that's a guy with one hand. I, I honestly in my heart of hearts think that's the best Edwin could do. I don't think he'll fight a better fight than that. I think that's the best he can do. Shakur, on the other hand, now you know he can do better than that. It's, it's clear because you've seen him do it. You get what I'm saying? Daniel Alexander in the building. What's good with it, fam? Big dog Willie Zach. And he said, the king of the <laughs> yeah, And we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back, but, 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 but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. You can tell. Cash Crypto in the building. Yeah, you could you you could really tell. They tell how long they've been watching boxing with the stuff they be saying. I, I just be having fun though. I just be having fun, and the way they just be talking random, and we just we only letting you live because I'm a laid back person. But if you get too crazy, you'll get you'll get the 86k blicky. So don't don't get too uh don't get too loose with your with your uh YouTube fingers because we ain't on Twitter. But don't get too loose in the chat. I'm laid back, but I clip you. I clip you. You time fighters over. Nothing was done in that fight to really constitute a rematch. What are we doing? D Town Funk, salute to you, bro. That's 100% what I said, bro. That's 100%. It just wasn't. Kello, my guy. He said, boom, 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 boom. double salute. Legacy defined. What's good with it, family? Yeah, I punched that like button. But like I said, let's not get off task. Um, back to the conversation at hand. You did hear Robert Garcia and Shakur go back and forth a little bit. And then you heard the guy Pita say that that fight was never offered. So I just wanted to shoot that down for anybody that was thinking that. And it's cool that this is what goes to show you that communication goes a long way. I like the fact that Shakur got on the phone and talked to him. And within seconds, you was able to see that neither of those guys was offered to fight. So what Robert Garcia said is not is not false, but he had to miss. He had the information a little wrong. You get what I'm saying? The fight you went to top rank to talk about the fight, yeah, that's true, probably on your behalf. But 
again, like your man just said, it wasn't an offer the same way it wasn't to him. So there you go. You know what I'm saying? And maybe they revisit that down the line. That's the most important thing. Shakur said something about betting 100K to fight your man. I like that kind of talk because I would love to see them fight. I, li I like Raymond Muratai. He's a hell of a talent. Robert Garcia is a great trainer. He oh, he keep a good fighter. He, he trained Bam. He trained, you know what I mean? He had Maidana looking like a totally different guy. You get what I'm saying? He had Maidana that gave Florida a very interesting half of the first fight. You get what I'm saying? So Robert Garcia is a, is well equipped to um, train uh, coach uh, Raymond Moritai up, but I just don't think he beat Shakur. That's my opinion, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully they can revisit that in the, in the future. But in the meantime, in between time, he focused on what the task at hand. He got this dude, Artem, and – this is the prime example for him to do what I said, do. You can't worry about what people think, what people talking about. That shit never going to matter. Public perception don't matter. You worry about the shit that you can not control. And that means July 6th, when you walk back through the presidential center, you step on Artem and make an example out of him. You, you, you make him look like a showcase fight. You know what I mean? Beat him to the point where people be crying that he a bum. You know what I'm saying? Beat his ass same way you beat Yoshino ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> beat his ass and just keep it moving. And from there, you, you know what I mean? Just move on. You know what I'm saying? You know, the hype, there's more people here every time. Ball, you know it. <laughs> I don't know what that is. You be noticing. <laughs> I be trying to chill. People, people don't. Because that's because. YouTube boxing is toxic, bro. I'm like the least toxic person around, bro. I be chilling back here, y'all. I be cooling. I be forgetting to turn the camera on. My bad, y'all. I'm going to hit turn the camera on. Let's do Adrian Broner and Keith Thurman. We'll be back and count them out. I like Broner. Broner back May 31st. Legacy Defiant fighting Blair Cobb. Broner fighting Blair Cobb. They said May 31st. And Keith Thurman rehabbing his, his arm, he, he, he looked like he'll be trying to come back. So I like both of those dudes. I just don't toss fighters away because it, it get rough in their career. It's just what it is. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You support them when lose a draw. Mm. He said, who are three pieces? <laughs> oh, by yeah, y'all make sure y'all smashing that like button. Sub to the channel. Keep rocking out. We got, uh, we're going to rock out a little bit more, you know? We going we got some mo. Yeah, all these people be like she cap, she cap. You y'all talk about the wrong shit. Y'all gotta get somebody to beat him, bro. That's all. Somebody should beat his ass if he if he that easy to beat. Somebody should beat him. Salute to my guy, um, Dre. You already know. Appreciate you as always, man. Y'all make sure y'all smash the like button. I meant it. Where my guy at McQueen at, man? I ain't seen my guy, the professor, man. I ain't seen my guy. He was talking 10K. He said he would bet 5K the whole year, saying 100 bands. Like, who that? Who that? Who that? Shakur just told Robert Garcia, got him 100K for the Raymond Moore tire fight. Virgil Ortiz, green, green, need. Who? I forgot who Virgil Ortiz fighting on the comeback, man. I forgot. I got to look at Look it up again, man. I forgot. He fighting somebody, but it's another winnable fight. I, I forget the name. It's somebody we know. Oh, Thomas Delorme. I knew it was going to come back to me. Virgil Ortiz is supposed to be fighting Thomas Delorme coming up. I feel like that's a winnable fight for him. And part of the reason why I feel like he getting them softer touches because I think they're trying to possibly position him for a title. And part of me still feels like they, they want to test exactly, you know, where Virgil Ortiz at in terms of his health. They want to still see if he... You know what I mean? If everything is on the up and up with him. So I like Virgil. That's a guy that he easy to root for. All he do is want to fight, bro. He getting there. He's never born. He's entertaining. Fought a couple guys, but his I think his biggest fight has been with his health. And outside the ring, obviously, with his health. So I want to see him moving forward, man. A healthy Virgil Ortiz is a, a very entertaining fighter for the sport. And I think he'd make some great fights at 54. Could you imagine? If Earl Spence returned to forms, let's say, and he was to fight Earl Spence, you get what I'm saying? Imagine Virgil and Jesus Ramos. Like, think of the matchups that you can make. Uh, uh, shit, Erickson Lubin, Virgil Ortiz. Like, it's some real matchups. Xander Zayas and Erickson. It's a lot of 54 matchups that you can make. You said that I dropped the link for you. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. That ain't talking about Coach Calvin. What's that? Yeah. Hey, be finna get his just due. You already know. 
You already know, don't mess with Texas. Calvin the bum sucks. Mac Earl, not Rock Earl. Sad days, huh? Calvin is a damn. Calvin is great for the sport. Coach Calvin Ford is great for the sport of boxing, bro. And I mean that in every word I'm, I say. Hey, it's great for the sport, bro. Great for the sport. Some one of the most selfless coaches that you could you could see right off the bat. You know what I mean? So I don't know. If he was to train Earl, that'd be interesting, though. You know what I mean? Earl gonna need a new home if if he's to not be with Derrick James. So somebody gonna have to train him. Virgil Ortiz need to fight Israel Madrimov. WBA belt. That'd be a good fight. Madrimov could fight. I think that's a winnable fight for, for uh, Virgil, too. And like, the only question is um, just his health and where he at and if he really got that situation under control. If so, well, I know he going to go full steam ahead. The funniest name he chose are funny. You know how they do? She capped it. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. They be going nuts, Jay. <laughs> they be going nuts with the names, but they know I ain't going for none of that slander. <laughs> they ain't going to do my boy like that. We ain't going out like that. Virgil beating Israel. Majumro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Healthy, though. Healthy. He got to be healthy. He got to be healthy. Keyword healthy. Think put it this way. I don't want to count Buddy out like he ain't like he ain't nothing. Majamal could fight. Um, I just I, I believe in Virgil, yo. I believe he really want to be great. I do think Virgil would really want to be the best that he could be, bro. So that's why I hope his health is where it need to be. And um he get it together, man, and get and make the fights because he could make a lot of good fights at 54. So why Earl and Derek beefing. I hear it's something to do with you know some 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 financial situation big victim still looking for a trainer <laughs> yeah he might be you know what i mean it, who we pair up with is gonna matter it's gonna be a big deal it was a pay-per-view attraction at 140 and 147 it's tough because i don't know like it's not that many pay-per-view attractions rude exposure like dudes dudes are are you know they can make money and they have fan bases right but all of those don't necessarily dudes like basically pay-per-view dude stars it's not a lot of those in boxing to me it's not no it's not a lot of them dudes at 140 147 respectfully <laughs> it really ain't er Earl was a guy at 47 that was carrying away in terms of selling 40 Shit, I don't know who's a big ticket seller. That stuff I never really paid much attention to, but I know that, you know, it ain't that many for sure. In boxing as a whole, core management teams, they decide as a team, they wait on Haney to 2024. I hope so. I hope they do fight in 2024, Larry. Before you're able to trade him, I'll go to him. Mm. That's interesting. I never thought about that, Mike. I think Rose should have kept Bull in this corner. I think Roley, Roley went back to a trainer that he had before. He just when he didn't go to a new trainer, he went back to an old one. It's all good, Larry. You good, Brody. What was the pay-per-view at 135? Other than Tank, shit. Ain't, ain't no real big pay-per-view draws at 35 other than Tank, bro. And to be real. And that's why most people be hoping to get that fight so they could be on. They know that's automatically a bag in a pay-per-view from a Tank. Know what I'm saying it's like the gift that keep on giving, but it ain't it ain't a lot of those pay per view type attractions to me in, in boxing like that. Just big old box office stars. That uh, you got some people with some good fan bases though that can generate some good money stuff like that. But it's tough to gauge, man. A lot of those dudes, that shit not easy. That shit is not easy. Built from sporting the division because they would take a hiatus or leave the division, turn to trash. That's true. Stuff start getting a little flaky when certain people not fighting. They do. They do get a little flaky. And I don't think Bullet is a very good trainer. He would have to coach someone to do. Yeah, yeah, B, uh, B Dog. Um, I listen, I salute the bullet, but it feels like to me, if you intentionally train in the wrong way, if you're doing things the wrong way and you don't want to you don't want to change it, it's tough. Like, where do you go? You kind of limit your 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 ceiling you put a cap on your ceiling you get what i'm saying when you and you know you hell bent on doing things the wrong way and you refuse to change like that that's not a good sign it's just not don't it's not smart pitbull about to be a headline i'm telling you aisha pitbull has entered into the chat man he entered the conversation for sure
He has entered the conversation. They both re, re energized the Latino fan base. I'm telling you, they they loving Pitbull. He looking like the god of them right now. They like Pitbull out here kicking ass, bro. You know what I'm saying? Kicking ass. We're gonna see what Pitbull is able to capitalize on. The next fight, his next fight is gonna be it have to be important, though. His next fight is gonna it's gonna have to matter. I mean, he's gonna have to find a way to keep that momentum going. But he got people like, let me take this off the screen. Salute to my guy, man. But we he got people like Regis throwing his name in the hat. Regis said he wanted to fight him. I know people probably ain't gonna be jumping out their seats. But I think it'll be an entertaining scrap to be all, all honest with you. I think him and Regis would be a fun fight. Clarissa Shields said, Don't styles make fights, don't fight pit bull. Ryan said here. I would sleep cruise. You guys are delusional. After I KL Haney, I would gladly handle him. So see how quick a win puts your name in the hat for other fights. So people calling for you got Ryan talking. To, that's a money fight for Pitbull. If if Ryan is serious, you get what I'm saying? Um Pitbull would be looking for an opportunity like that because him and his pops like that that bag, right? So uh you got you got Haney there, you got Matias there. That'd be a shootout. I'm telling you, man. Man, everything on Roly or home is not. Somebody bet everything on Roly, man. You, man, that's tough. PBC got to look out for Barroso. Yeah, they do, Mike. Man, he need a he need an opportunity. Pitbull and Barroso would be crazy, wouldn't it? Pitbull talking about Ryan. Is he? What he said? He jumped from like three hundred k. Pitbull grow. Oh yeah, that's that's what's up. Salute the Pitbull, man. Salute the Pitbull. 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 Gay hey, man. He capitalizing off this off that. Uh, off these wins, man, and people really um having an interest in what he got going on. It's dope to see. It's dope to see. Rosa probably won't get another shot. That's it. and it's a it's a damn uh travesty, uh Kello <laughs> doing my boy like that, man. They can't do him like that, man. Not my boy. Salute the NA2, man. Channel member, my guy, man. In the super chat say when they back. I talk with some dollars, it lets you know how confident they are. Yeah, bud and core different. Oh, yeah, can someone tell Spence Pay Bud that one man? <laughs> Do that little shot of there, my boy AJ catching the screens, huh? <laughs> and we ain't never got oh, a box man. again. Well, right. well, 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 I, I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time is. for you to get your just do better hundred thousand. Better hundred thousand, we better million. It's better million then. <laughs> I had that clip in here for a while. I think I had deleted it, man. Uh, I had I used to have that that clip with them two in the back. I'm gonna get it back, put it back in there, and leave it. That one was a classic, man. Barroso with PVC. I thought I, I I I think so. Think so. I think so. Roly finna be on TMZ, doped up. Yeah, Roly was on Mars, bro. Roly, I felt a little bad for Roly, man. I felt a little bad for him. I ain't gonna lie, cause he ain't know what to say. That man said Happy Easter. I was like, yeah, bro. Big Rolo officially checked out the building. But you did take more punches than you thought you would. So what went wrong during this fight? Jordan wrong, Jordan plant wrong, but she not. She only doing her job. She said, yeah, you know, you took more punches than we thought you would. <laughs> Hell yeah, he took more punches than he thought he would. <laughs> but you did take more punches than you thought you would. So what went wrong during this fight? It's okay. Uh, I, I want to tell everybody, just thank you for coming out. And, uh, and honestly... Happy Easter, everybody, you guys. Jesus, it's like Jesus was re re resurrected. I'll be back. I want to tell everybody happy Easter and nah, thank you for supporting man. me and following me. Thank you. <laughs> when he said, honestly, happy Easter, everybody, I said, yo, damn. Pitbull got this man. He still concussed. I feel a little bad for Roly. He released a statement, though, man. He took his law. He was too quiet. Yo, Roly... He was trying to process, like, what do I even say? Like, I was, he, man, he said too much, bro. The best thing you could do is stay away from Crawford. Now, Crawford, a dog, a dog man, tell me what makes this sport great is rebounding off a of loss. Drop Spence versus Fondora going to do well in Texas. Tell them, Zena, they ain't like that. They ain't like that, uh, Zena. They ain't like it. What Spence said, they was hot. EJ said, we going back to Texas out here, big. We going back. We going to back to Dallas. 
Uh, it's okay. Hit different. <laughs> Gertz, you a fool. <laughs> she did sound like it sounded like when you trying to console somebody. It's okay. <laughs> like don't she letting them know she do she do a great job. Shout out to Jordan Plant too. Shout out to Jordan Plant, man. She do a great job, but it, Roly ain't know what to say. She was trying to make sure he was good. She wasn't making fun of him or nothing. She like, bro, it's okay. You took more shots than you thought. Roly sound like Elmer Fuck. Cool JC in the building was good, fam. Nah, he was. He ain't no. Yeah, he was. He, he was definitely concussing. I heard he struggled getting out the ring a little bit. I heard he struggled getting out the ring a little bit. Turn religious in times of hardship. <laughs> Larry, you a fool, bro. And he gonna say it. Don't laugh at him. He like he dead serious. Like we all get like that. Now I get it, but he just happy Easter, everybody. And all honestly, like bro. I, yeah, she told him it's okay. I didn't expect him to say that, bro. He, his, his joint definitely scrambled. Y'all make sure y'all smash that like button for you, bro. Oh, Stokes in the building. What's good, family? This lady was concussion. Glad he was okay. Nah, for real. All jokes aside, I'm joking, but I like Roley. I actually felt bad for him right there. I don't know why. But I said I thought Pitbull was going to win, but I actually did feel a little bad. I was like, damn. Because it, it, a part of me feels like if Pitbull was to lose, he wouldn't lose the same thing Roley lost, if that makes sense. It seemed like Roley really lost something losing to Pitbull. It, like, it, he really – Pitbull took something with him, bro. Damn, man. Why my boy Pitt doing like that? Pitt disrespectful, bro. Pitt, he only was doing his job. But, damn, that was rough. He got up in there, bro. He – he all that's all them jokes you was telling, Roley. I told you that the Chihuahua joke wasn't a good one, bro. Told you to chill, bro. Like the pinata was cool because that was borderline. That wasn't even about nothing. But the, the buying the dog, name, naming them Isak, you know what I mean? Then you got the Chihuahua chain. That was that was OD. Now what I mean, he got in the ring. He wasn't playing with you. He was like a man possessed. Now he was fighting you like, man, yo. He was fighting you like if he didn't win that fight, he wasn't going to be able to afford a, a tortilla. I'm telling you, yo. I'm telling you. Kicked your ass. You playing with that boy, man. You don't name it. Name your dog Isak. That's wild, bro. He done off the kick your ass, man. A lot of people thought he lost that fight. He just got hit. He just got rocked by Cruz. Cruz looking to drop Romero here in the first round. Romero's on his life skate. Isak Cruz looking to. I mean, to stop the momentum, to stop the fight. Cruz continues to walk down Romero again. Launches the right hand. You gotta Romero grab him and hold him. You can't still can't him. Grab him and hold him. Hold him. Hey, uh, Isak Cruz has done it. You're supposed to grab him and hold him, bro. You can't just let him well on. You're supposed to grab him and hold him. Telling you, I knew that Chihuahua thing was going too far. The dog was one. Nah, I don't know which order. Did he get the chain first or the dog? Either way, it was OD. You went too far. Pitbull wasn't playing with you. He was fighting for his name in there. <laughs> Pitbull was in there fighting for his name, bro. He like he already calling me Chihuahua's bet. I got he got he was like, hey, hey, pops, hold my mask. You know what I'm saying? Hold my mask, bro. Yeah, punch. Man, big Rolo would be all right, though. He should be able to bounce back. Rolo should stop Pitbull in his tracks. He did Akello. He hit him with some good stuff. I seen it. Think he locked his legs up a little bit, but Pitbull poker face is unmatched. I ain't nobody got a poker face like him. Upper echelon, my guy. What's good with it, family? He really got with his zero. <laughs> nah, the spin stuff was low. I thought that was his get back. The spin stuff, you're right. I'm with you with the spin stuff. I almost forgot about that, but you're right. The spin stuff was low. Yeah, the Chihuahua chain, TM. He wasn't going. Why would you play with that? This man said he remember a time where he couldn't afford a tortilla. The minute I would have heard that, I don't even know if Roly is aware of that, first of all. The minute I would have heard that, out of all bets are off, all trash talking, trolling, everything, I would have just stopped everything, yo. Like, that dude, why is different? And you playing with him, you gave him an extra reason to want to beat you up. The dog was over overdoing it, then you went and got a chain. Yeah, he wasn't playing with you, bro. You just wild out. Now the the dog joint was funny. Roly is a fool. He really went and got bought a whole dog, bro. <laughs> he got a whole damn dog. I'm telling you, Banks, he got a whole dog, man. Chihuahua. He said, "Yeah, this is Isak." I said, "Bro, what?" 
the chain guy, yo. Then he, yeah, he got a pawn the chain, yo. And he got to get a dog back. He got to get a dog back to a new owner or something, bro. Can't have a dog, bro. Just like Caleb went too far a bit of you that's website. <laughs> Kello crazy, bro. Why you go? Why you breaking up? Why you breaking that up, man? Why you doing my boy Caleb like that? You doing Caleb like that, bro? Just just Coach Calvin good, man. Eight workers, his street, huh? Yeah, listen, my 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 thoughts on Coach Calvin. I had several conversations with him because I'll, I'll be going over there with the Rise family and building. Um, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Is Coach Calvin good? Yeah, man. Um, I think he's great for boxing, bro. I do. I mean, he's a selfless guy. He believes in the talent that he's pushing, and he could get the most out of the the, the fighter that he's training, the fighters that he trained. He put the dog down. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, up, up, up. He, they say he woke up looking at the dog, side eyeing the dog. Your yeah, dog ain't doing nothing. Yo, somebody got to check on the dog. Somebody hit Rolly and see if he still got the dog, bro. And the dog's too much. Manny did the same thing to Thurman. Did he? Oh, he did. Yo, Manny, yeah, Manny, you is bogus. Man, he is. I forgot, man. He is bogus. He did that, bro. Yeah, you is bogus, man. He gonna do that to my boy, Key. I saw he'll be back. Rolly is an A1 troll. Yeah. The only wish I'd never get is to beat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, we, Pit Bull just was, his pressure he was bringing was too much. The thing is, like I said before, Rolly is not known for his feet or his defensive capability. So when you, when you factor that in there with a guy that's bringing constant pressure and, and winging shots with both hands and swinging you know putting all his body weight into him it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a rough night you know what i'm saying like roley had some defense to get out of the way some of the times but for the most part he, he couldn't get out of the way he was getting he was getting countered caught not even counter he was just getting worked i don't even want to say counter pit bull was just on his helmet like nobody's business roley said happy easter asked for a big <laughs> <laughs> Big Mac, bro said, "Happy Easter, everybody." I honestly, he said, "Honestly, I thought he was gonna say something else." Like, what the? Honestly, Happy Easter. I was like, "Yeah, this loss affecting him." That bad boy still concussed. He's y'all trying to get him to talk. Pit Bull said, "Take his arm to Roly." Oh, a word, did he? I ain't catch that, did he? Uh, Tank, I'm telling you, Tank got real power, man. It's it's technique and everything with Tank. It's real natural, I think, God-given power, but I think it's like his technique, the torque that he get on his punches. Lorenzo Chuck Simpson was talking about it one day. I think he's spot on, like the torque tank get on his punches, the leverage that he get on his shots. And I think the way he transitioned his weight behind the punches, like he really understands how to punch. Like he's really a born, a born, uh, you know, puncher to me. Really said happy. Yeah, I'm telling you, happy Easter was wild. I was like, damn, what do you mean? He said, in all honesty, you know, happy Easter, everybody. And I'm like, damn, not Big Rolo. Big Rolo got humbled. Man, one more time, I got Rolo Bean footage for Big Rolo, man. Big Rolo was like, oh, honesty, everybody, happy Easter. She was like, it's okay. You got Obviously, you took more punches than we <laughs> than you thought. <laughs> you did take more punches than you thought you would. So what went wrong during this fight? Okay. I, I, I want to tell everybody. Okay. I like Jordan. Uh, Thanks uh, for coming out job. and uh, and honestly, happy Easter, everybody. You guys, Jesus, it's like Jesus was re 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 resurrected. I'll be back. I want to tell everybody happy. Yeah, Easter. yeah, you yeah. You know, you know what? Me. Thank you. Yeah, you know what? Salute the big Rolo. He, yeah, he definitely was still concussed because he didn't even get his words out right. He was still like slurring his words. And I, all jokes aside, I do hope he good. I know he talked trash, but I think for me, the only thing that was low was the Earl Spence stuff. Like I thought some of that was like the low hanging fruit with that. But aside from that, Roley seemed like a, he just seemed like a character that knows how to sell himself. You know what I'm saying? Legacy. I'll take Barroso. <laughs> Big watch Barroso out here. Man, everyone was booing him. Yeah, Miss Joette, you caught that? They weren't trying here. None of that. They're like, nah, nah, big Rolo. We ain't trying here. <laughs> Ash said Roly deserved it. <laughs> Roly was hitting pit bull with some heat. Tank tweeted that he knows pit bull was filling those shots. Yeah, nah, he had to feel some of them because he was hitting them. He was hitting them clean, but pit bull poker face, like I said, is he like a, a stone cold, you know? 
You know what I'm saying? He got a stone cold, you know what I mean? Stone cold face, man. He don't change his facial expression. No matter what he get hit with, his face stay the same. It's crazy. Yeah, I tried to interview him. Yeah. Yeah, he I ain't yeah, he was definitely concussed. And it's crazy because he never went down. He was fighting, he was tough. He was tough, man. Salute the rule. He he fought, he tried, bro. He did hit a pit bull with some clean shots, but that dude just was on another, another type of time. Pitbull was he had his mind made up that he was he wasn't walking up out of there. He wasn't trying to go back to them not being able to buy tortilla days. And I ain't even joking about that. I'm being serious. That dude, why is different? Pitbull was bruised out. No, that's oh yeah, 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 for sure. Roly, that's what he didn't do enough. Zenith, that stab to the body, I seen him do it a couple times. He just didn't stick with it. He was supposed to try to take the air out of Pitbull. So you have to. That dude walking in there blasting you with big shots like that is going to be a matter of time, bro. Nah, <laughs> Duran, Duran too real for TV. Salute, fam. He said Roly be setting up his own car. He do. He do. But I, I like Roly, though, man. I mean, Roly grew on me, man. Roly grew on me. I was thinking chilling for Roly the old fight. I, I don't know. Maybe he was wanting them to pull it off, bro. Maybe he was wanting them to pull it off. I don't know, though. I wasn't I wasn't on Twitter. I'd be missing a lot of that stuff. Y'all be putting me on to some of that stuff. I became a fan. Yeah, he couldn't feed his family. That's what I'm saying. Yo, uh, a upper, his why is different, bro. He ain't trying to go back to that. And not saying the loss means he go back to that. But you get what I'm saying? He remember those days. He fight for something different. And, and uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, like, this, this – this, this, his name is, like, kind of buzzing. Even though it's Roley, he's being talked about. His name is in a hat at 140. He in a talent-rich division like 140s, and he's a player because he got a title, so you can't ignore him. You get what I'm saying? Couldn't even buy a tortilla. It's crazy. So that's what he that's what he got in the back of his mind while he fighting. Roley study trolling. This dude, like, man, I ain't going back to that. I'm telling you. <laughs> Roley. You said seen him seen an interview saying Roley was retiring. I know I've been seeing some videos. I've seen like three or four of them saying Roley was retiring, but it was all clickbait. It was all clickbait. It was an old, it was an old thing where Roley, you know, it was an old uh clip of Roley, and people was trying to treat it like it was new. They was clickbaiting people. Mr. Empire, what it do, family? Said Pitbull was walking through some hot. Yeah, he was, bro. Hot, some hot, some hot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was. He took some shots. While I say you got a, the problem I think that that Roley made was not throwing more, not landing more than one or two punches at the most at a time. I think you got to put some combinations on on um, Pitbull. You get what I'm saying? You got to keep him all balanced. Failing for months, Trinidad versus De La Hoya. Mm, probably didn't want anybody bothering him about a rematch. <laughs> Yeah, Roley said he coming back. <clears throat> the statement he released, he said he'll be back. He said he sacrificed, you know what I mean, his health and all this. And he sound like he, I don't know, man, maybe Roley might be humble now from now on. Now. I don't know. Leonard Elgin said Roley can't retire. Yeah, he ain't going nowhere. Roley ain't retiring. Roley ain't going nowhere. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd left him a, a nice little message for Roley and everything. I thought that was dope. I mean, keep your head up. That's what you got to do. Losing is part of it. Pit Bull is a tough guy to deal with, bro. Very tough guy to deal with. Very tough guy to deal with, for sure. That's what I mean. Spence got to get from Calvin. Oh, I know, I, I know what you're saying. I'm not Look big for that weight class. He is. It. Roley's a solid dude. Roley's solid, yo. He ain't no small guy at all. Roley ain't a little guy at all. Y'all make sure y'all smash that like button, man. PBC is a joke. Nah, <clears throat> I don't think so. I think PBC, you know what it is, Duran? I think too many people focus on the things that's, that don't go right with PBC. But if you look if you look at any promotional entity, banner, company, whatever you want to phrase, however you want to phrase it, right? They all have things that don't go according to plans. They all have things that don't work out. They all have you know events that's not the biggest or the best they all go through these things but you know nothing in business is 100 percent great but if you just look at the overall 
you know, um, impact that PBC has had on boxing, I think it's been a lot more good than bad. You know, it would be foolish to, to say that everything has been perfect because that's not the case in any situation. But if you look at any promotional entity, not just PBC, any of them, they all have areas where they fall, where they come up short or, you know what I'm saying? C. Wood in the cash at my bro, always supporting the grind. Much love and appreciation to my God, man. Appreciate you, bro. And we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I, I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time yeah. for you to get your just do. The heat in the pan daily. Much love to my guy, C. Wood. <clears throat> in the games that they playing while the boxer are not their camp, especially games they play. The Bud Crawford. I mean, I hear a lot of things, bro. Done the same for Shaki Wilder and Luba. Yeah, I hear a lot of things, bro. But just look at it like this. In any situation in, in, in business, in any company, you're going to have disgruntled employees or workers. You're going to have situations that people feel like that didn't work out as best. And I'm just being realistic. I'm not saying it's cool, but it's just being real. I mean, any the same, some of the same problems that PVC might you might think they have, the the other companies and, and promotional entities deal with some very similar issues you get what i'm saying like some people say like for instance people complain about pbc fighters being inactive a lot right okay that's one of the issues so i'm pretty sure that's something that they always trying to work through right and then you look at the top rank people say you know well top rank will only get you so far they hold fighters back they only promote you but for so far and you know they they like a starter kit stuff like that right there's a knock on them you know, people, the zone, Eddie Hearn, they put on bad cars and Eddie Hearn is bleeding them with money. So it's just like every promotional company got something out there about them that, you know, ain't ain't the best. But, you know, what I mean, at the end of the day, I think all of these guys put on, they're responsible for putting on good cars. No one promotional company has all of the fighters. You know what I mean? So if they, it makes more sense for them to work with each other, because even if you feel like you got most of them, you don't have all. And that's going to always them not being willing to work with each other is always going to kind of put fights in positions not to happen. You know what I'm saying? So all, all these dudes suffer and deal with similar issues, man. You know what I mean? And none of them are all good. It's just is what it is. But I, I just never look, I never understood the problem that people, people have with the PBC or any other promotional company. Cause if you look at the bright side of things, they've been responsible for putting on a shit ton of good fights and cars and events stuff like that so i don't know it's hard for me not to like them but again everything ain't gonna be all good for everybody you know what i'm saying that shit so blood <laughs> pretty no aggression <laughs> not obligated to call for any bones now nah, that and then you got to think they're not really playing games with crawford maybe it's some things that you might not know like you don't know that feist was offered to crawford he just wasn't interested in like feist with uh Jamel Charlo Erickson Lubin from what I understand those fights were offered to him he didn't want them but the, it seems like the Fundora and the Zoo winner he was interested in but I don't think it, when it pertains to leverage and, and who they go again we said this who they're going to be loyal to that's easy it's going to be Earl Spence so I don't think they shitting on Terrence Crawford but it's just a matter of putting their guy in position Joshua Cabrera what's good with it fam how you feeling What's good with it? Legacy to finally feel the fight should have been stopped early for Rowley to not take that much damage. Uh, I thought it was right on point. I think he gave him a fair enough chance. I think he stopped it right on time. I think he stopped it right on time. Yeah, they did PBC in that first rollout. It was uh, wonderful. You know what I mean? The only thing, it was some speculation as if, if they should stop the fight or not. You know what I mean? It was some different opinions on that. Cabron Cabrera fighting Shakur this fair to pay it as uh Josh uh Shakur fighting Artem already in July 6th. So Zapata though, Zapata is the fight that they working on, Josh. So uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Shakur already got an opponent for July 6th. That's Artem. That's the guy that uh Frank Martin fought last. You get what I'm saying? Uh, and um Zapata and Cabrera is being worked out on here. So yeah, you you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it was intentional. I think she was just trying to give him a chance to speak when she interviewed him. You know what I mean? Crawford turned down the Charlo and Lubin deal. Y'all be saying, no, PBC not responsible. We gave Bud everything he wants. And that's the part that they're not looking at, um, Zenith. There's no slight on Bud. It's like you can't say they shitting on him when they offering him opportunities. He just don't want them. So it's like just because they don't give him exactly what he want don't mean they shitting on him, right? And if, if, if you go going – 
if it comes down to who you're going to give who what to who it's going to be the guy that you you've been in business with the longest you were supposed which is easily earl spence so it's, it's easy to understand when you look at it that way people need to separate the difference that you know your talent don't always put you that your talent don't always translate into dollars and although Terrence Crawford is by far one of the most, if not, well, he's the best pound for pound fighter in the world than me, right? So that doesn't that mess mean that he, he still is a bigger draw than a guy like Earl Spence. And you're going to always have to consider the business side of things. So they're going to go with their guy and they're going to be loyal to their guy. And on top of that, it's a plus because the guy that they're being loyal to just so happens to be a bigger draw than the other guy that they offer opportunities to. It's very simple to understand. You know what I mean? I don't think nobody could expect it, uh, PVC to give Terrence Crawford everything he wanted. I mean, think about it. They just had a situation where some would argue that they gave him more than what they initially wanted to give. I ain't telling him what he deserved. I'm just saying from what you hear, he gave up more than they was willing to. So you think they're going to then turn around and do it again? Like it's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? More times than not. So, Or is it paid? It was just named mandatory for tank. Yeah, that too, Aisha, that too. But – we know how the mandatory things go so i don't be i don't i don't make too much out of it because i don't think oscar but at the same time even though he might be made mandatory right look who they uh trying to line him up to fight aisha you get what i'm saying cabrera they ain't going nowhere near tank davis that's what it seems like to me so it, it's, it's very interesting though you know what i'm saying it is but I wouldn't be against seeing that fight. I know people probably acclaim, complain, but I won't. I, I'm not against seeing it. To pay the good fighter. Having a rhyme ticket still not sold out all this time. They might not sell out. I mean, from if it's if it's if how it's been selling recently is any indication of how it's gonna continue to go, it, it might not sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, facts of Kello, he was. I did hear about that, but I, I don't make too much out of it because I don't believe Oscar gonna even try to make a fight with them. He did think about it. He was just calling Shakur name out. Then Shakur say something to him. Then they go in a completely different. It's just too much, too many games. Oscar be Oscar be just BSing, man. He be having fun, man. He be having fun with it. I, I try. I just say that. I don't be taking him serious though, all the time. Dude be tripping. No sense. You do that shit, you will never get a job again. That shit out. I'm telling you, that's real, bro. Worker and get paid shit. We don't know what your contract say. Well, we all work before we can. Best worker. I mean, hey, listen, the end of the day, they they going to take care of the home team for sure. Mm -hmm. Oscar be tripping. Devin and Ryan and Flop. I hope it don't, though, for the sake of boxing, because I want to see boxing do well. I like both fighters. I want to see they fight do well. I'm going to support it. Um, I'm gonna be calling. I'm more than likely gonna call that fight April 20th. That's gonna be a week before my birthday, too. I might as well. Why not? And they still work with him after that. Like I can look at the spent shop. Gaze it pushed back events put on hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a domino effect for sure. I'm door out to next year with the broken nose. That's what I think, uh, Kello. That's what they're saying, potentially 2025 with the, the surgery on the nose. And um, Earl fights next. I kept saying it. Castaño is a good fight for him. If Fundora is a good fight, then Brian Castaño is a good fight for Earl. They got a history in the amateurs. Man, I don't see why they wouldn't make I, I would like that fight for Earl Spence, to be honest. I think it makes it makes sense. It's a good scrap. If if Brian, I don't know where Brian Castano been at, but bro, they still don't have any undercards in the arena. Still have and the um they got uh Charles Conwell Al Booger is on the Haney. It should be on the Haney Garcia card. Charles Conwell and damn somebody else. I forget. I gotta go check my my own um, messages, man. It's Charles Conwell and somebody else. I don't know if he had an opponent, but it was a couple couple people they named the undercard. My God, Dub named it. Damn, I, hold on. Let me check my messages, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all smash that like button, man. We close. We in the ninth inning, man. We closing strong. Salute to everybody in the building. Appreciate everybody that stopped through. Y'all just make sure y'all smash the like button and sub to the channel, man. We going to keep rocking. Uh, Charles Conwell. You don't know Charles Conwell? Oh, there we go. 
Samson said we will give the rematch, but not at this moment. Now I need to maximize the most money for my fighter. So everybody talking about that rematch. Let me just go to this real quick because it this just I just seen it just came across this. I say he was ready and he will win. The only thing I thought that he would knock him out, but, but I need to give him credit to the Zoom. And he will get the rematch, but not in this moment. Now I need to maximize the most money for the fighter. Now, that's correct. Over Crawford? Like, he just spent more money? Or? No, I'm afraid we're not sell out 90,000 people in the house. There say, you go. So look, man, they talking about maximizing their money for their fighter. So everybody that's mad at Earl Spence, be mad at the business of boxing. Earl Spence is doing what a fighter is supposed to do, put himself in position and take the opportunities that are presented to him. He's not doing nothing wrong, just like Terrence Crawford ain't doing shit wrong by wanting to pursue a fight with the winner of Zoo, which is obviously Fundor. So that's just what it is. So you clearly hear these people, the powers that be, the people that's responsible, that's going to help put on the fight, are talking about maximizing their earning potential for their fighter. And Terrence Crawford is not going to fit that bill. And and, and I'm telling you, they know, just like we know, they know it's going to be a loss. So they're going to go the other way. It's more money. It's some unknowns over there, but they feel like they might have a better shot to win over that way, too. It's just simple. It's very simple. It's not everything is not about bitching and complaining and thinking that boxing is trying to shit on somebody when they not. It's just understanding what makes sense for the business of boxing. Again, what what makes sense in terms of, you know, well, I beat this guy. This guy shouldn't get the opportunity over me. I get that. But then you got to consider the business that's at stake. You get what I'm saying? Earl Spence ain't going to take no backseat to nobody. You heard the man just say he ain't, he, don't, he don't do no lines. You know what I'm saying? So it's just what it is, man. And, and I just wanted to highlight again. It's not like they didn't offer opportunities for Bud. They did. It's just not ones that he, he, he was interested in. So, you know what I mean? That's just what it is. Maverick can choose whatever voluntary he wants. He wanted Spence before he fought Crawford. He did. They don't get it. They don't, they don't be getting it. They don't be getting it. I swear he did. That fight would be big in Dallas. That's what they saying, B-Dog. And that's what they plan on doing. That's why Spence said we going back to Dallas. Oh, yeah, for surgery on the nose is why I had surgery for a broken nose. Bone. The doctor told me I can resume physical activity within a few weeks. I guess physical activity, but I guess that's different than if you actually box, right? You know what I'm saying? And you got to get punched in your face rather than doing something physical where you're not taking like blunt force to the, you know, to that area. Or that today is not some grand conspiracy complaint. Yeah, it's it, I'm telling you, and not and I, I say it in ways that Bud is just he he has the the opportunity or the right to try to you know select what opportunity he feels like he wants, but I just don't think he's gonna have as many options as an Earl Spence would, if that makes sense. Like they obviously Earl Spence people. So that just naturally he's going to get first dibs and stuff like that. And don't give me no shit about no rules because you know, they make and break them as they go along. So it's not like the rules are just being broke this time and, and the effort to shit on Terrence Crawford. They do it all the time and it, it shit on fighters regularly or they do things that sometimes we feel like don't make the most sense, but that's just what boxing has been. I got big after whooping Mike Garcia. Tansy the whoop on a beast Mexican to get the rest of them fans. Hmm, interesting. But what I signed to do would capitalize off the spin swing, then he would be big fight for Fondori. Yeah, you said no, that's on him. I think that that that's holding him up too. The unwillingness to fully commit season him because they might be looking at it like you want us to roll a carpet out for you, but you're not willing to commit to us. And that's just me trying to understand. Maybe that's what they what they looking at it as but look bud ain't starving for no money or no fights man he gonna be fine and he gonna get he gonna get him an opportunity and we're gonna see him beat somebody ass because <laughs> that's what's gonna happen so salute the bug keep being great i mean keep doing your thing i mean we just want to see the best fights possible i got the dallas stadium yeah after the fans black mx i'm telling you they rocking with ej heavy man down the line with Jerry Jones right now getting his head up cash, eh, right? <laughs> Rubbing it in. He said they on the line with Jerry right now. <laughs> they could get Jerry. Somebody get Jerry on the phone. And it's funny, y'all, because I'm really a Cowboy fan. That's the crazy part. That's my team. That's just crazy. I love to go there and see Earl Spence fighting da Dallas, Texas Cowboy Stadium, man, for sure.
I know what it'd be. I know that atmosphere out there would be crazy, man. That's pretty traumatic. Boxing is serious business, no doubt. Facts, bro. It is. It's an unforgiving ass sport, too. An unforgiving sport. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like if y'all haven't, man. Like I said we is wrapping up. Um I wanna make sure I miss some. I feel like I missed some. The post says Barboza, Scrappy Ramirez, back to bully Charles Conwell, Derrianchenko, and Mara Jones on the Ryan Haney undercar. Appreciate you in separate box. Much love. Appreciate you, Aisha. She always on it, man. Appreciate that, Queen. So, yeah, they do have an undercar. I just couldn't remember all the names. And it was Derrianchenko was one of the names. Only Charles Conwell. Yeah, Ramirez, Scrappy Ramirez, Barboza. Yeah, they got some P. It, it should be solid. It should be decent. Hopefully, it turned out pretty good. You know what I'm saying? The undercard. Hopefully it turned out pretty good. I hope it do. For what it's worth, because, you know, I, I it's going to be a good one. I flew out there for the Ugas fight. Definitely had a great time out there in Dallas. We'll do it again for sure, man. I know, I know you probably, yeah, Dallas Cowboy for a lot. Don't mess with Texas, man. You know, we got that. I got to, that's, that's only been my only team always, bro. Only. Only team I rock with. Oh, but real quick though, before while we rock, while we rocking, I knew it was something else. Um, what y'all think about Ryan Garcia leaked sparring footage, man? How y'all feel about this sparring footage he leaked? This little clip, Ryan out here working. Y'all think Haney? He trying to send Haney a message. He told he told Dev he in trouble, man. Ryan out here sitting people on their ass. And Rye out here putting hands on people, bro. What y'all think? Y'all think Dave got something to be worried about? If they he looking like he in rare form or what? Thomas Hill, my guy, with it, with it, man. The human copy machine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I appreciate her. She be on top of it, man. She be on top of it, big dog. What about Ryan talking about Mexicans? Yeah, I, I touched on that too, Al Booger. I had it in here. To, I had it in here. I just deleted the post. Yeah, um, I thought he was bugging with the with the with the you know referring to Mexicans as the modern day slaves. I thought he was tripping out. I thought that was a uh, left field. I thought it was weird to speak on that. Like I said, that dude he done a pretty good job at at making people question if he's good or not. You know what I'm saying? But he damn sure better show us something with that little sparring clip. Man, at least we got some type of, you know, he in there putting hands on people. You know what I mean? Happened in Devin Camps, and then the fight night comes. <laughs> B-Dog ain't right. <laughs> Said they out here selling false hope, huh? Said they out here selling. Erickson Lubin out here. Ooh. 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 Telling me you don't want to see this dude back in there. I do. I know that's sparring, but man, I want to see Lubin back in the ring, dude. Man, he out there chopping, chopping folk down, man. You see he had the hammer out there. He says, oh, hey, false hope is a mofo. <laughs> <laughs> to be set tripping out here. That was Lubin, uh, Tim. That was Erickson Lubin putting that work in. Seeing him chopping, he was putting some work in, man. So I say, man, man, Lubin nice, man. I like him. I like Erickson Lubin, bro. I want to see him back in there. I want to see him back in there. Him and Xander Zayas had talked about a fight with each other. I wouldn't mind seeing that at all. Me too. Yeah, and me too, Mike. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I just want to see him take advantage. I get back in it, man. Lubin, Lubin is 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 battle tested, man, and he ready. I think him and Jamel Charlo will be a great rematch right now. I swear I do. I think him and Mel Charlo will be a great rematch. Yeah, Ryan better he he better be he better be uh uh uh, uh well he did put some little yeah, put a little bit of food in the fire up always on point. His problem is, though, he still be having those bad habits. He got to stop dropping his hands. 
he got to stop dropping his hands after he shoot a shot because he's not going to always land. And if you continuously dropping your hands, you you in there with a sharpshooter like Haney, you're going to get countered. I'm going to counter. Oh, yeah, Zenith. Now tell me, Zenith. Now tell me, bro. We know it was a little bit early when Lubin first got it. He was like 21. No, make no mistakes. Charlo capitalized. But tell me right now, especially, you know, you know, Jamel had a tough, tough out against Canelo, right? You get what I'm saying? Tell me that rematch won't make sense right now. Tell me Lubin ain't been winning and it just wouldn't make sense to make them fight. I would love to see that rematch. And, and I, I know all of us for damn sure could pretty much guarantee that that Lubin won't get knocked out in no first round. You get what I'm saying? That rematch make mad sense right now. I love to see that fight. I love to see it, bro. But, they, you know, maybe they're going to say some business this. But I, that if there was ever a time to make a rematch, that's one. Kendrell in the building. What's good, family? How you feeling? Yeah, I'm telling you, I, book, I love that rematch too, bro. We will eventually go up to 60. Yeah, 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 that too. That too, because you see what he was doing with Edgar Berlinga. And they spar. Uh, Zenith, he was piecing him up. He was touching Edgar Berlinga up. So, and I know he probably in that ring. I know he ain't 154 pounds. He probably over 160. So I know he can go there. And I think his power, I think he got the power to, to compete up there too. So I like Erickson Lubin, man. I like him. People, we just throw fighters away after they take losses. And I don't like it. He got a couple losses, but he could have beat Fundora. I don't give a damn what nobody say. And I love to see him get that rematch with Charlo. Yeah, better. Yeah, I'm telling you, more experience. I'm telling you, make all the sense in the world, bro. He he'd be more equipped to deal with him. I'm telling you, man. He offensively, man, he got a bag. L Lubin got a good offensive uh output, man. I mean, a good offensive arsenal. He do. Yeah, he was going to the body, man. L man, let me go back to that one more time, man. Lubin was putting in some work right there in that clip. Let's go break it Look, the body shots hurting. Yeah, he about to he about to poop himself, bro. <laughs> Lubin about to make Buddy peep poop poop himself right in the ring, yo, in real time. He hammering his body, bro. <laughs> Damn, yeah, he was digging from the first shot. The first shot he landed was solid, bro. I like Lubin, man. Dude about to poop himself, man. He even felt it. He backed up like, hold on, man. He bent over, slide. Nah, one more time. <laughs> hold on, y'all. Look at him. Look at him. Play. Play. Like, hold on, Lubin. Oh, Lubin, look. First one, he was cool with that one. Like, yeah, he backed up. Three rounds, bitch. Yo, you hear dude in the back recording like shit. <laughs> yo, nah. He's beating his ass, yo. Punching the hell out of his ribs, man. Man, ain't about to, yo. Salute to Lugan, man. I hope we get to see him back in the ring sooner than later, man. That's another dude I like. Always rooting for him when lose or draw. I don't care. I like Lou. <laughs> he could fight. He could fight, and it's fun watching him. Uh -oh, I wonder who that was he in there with. I, I don't know. Sometimes we'd be knowing. I, I couldn't tell, though. It's crazy. Certain fighters from watching them spar through the years and watching them fight and stuff like that, you know when they be in certain sparring matches. It's crazy. Certain fighters, I can tell when it's them, regardless of who, who, is, who they in there with, I can tell. It's crazy. It's crazy. And um, real quick too, one one something else before we get out of here too. Um, Frank Martin again. I touched on this before, but I'm gonna just keep it brief. If anybody's been keeping up with, you know, Tank seeing him posting, he putting in some real dog work. I know everybody heard about the weight that he's at right now. You see Frank Martin. 
He putting in dog work. Spence say he's staying focused. Frank Martin is extremely focused. Tank Davis is extremely focused. I think this fight can, could potentially be one of the best fights we get of the year, man. I really do. Because both guys are extremely locked in and focused. And, you know, I still understand that people say it's levels and stuff like that. But I truly believe that despite the level separation, I feel like preparation is so key. And I think Frank Martin is doing everything in his power to be 100% prepared for this fight, if that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? I think he's going to be as good as he can be, as good as a challenge as he could be for Tank. And I think Tank understands the moment, what's in front of him, embracing, you know, his role and being this star that he's trying to be. And I think what comes, you know, what comes with that is what he embracing, the fighter's lifestyle, keeping the weight down, no fat camps, sharpening your tools, staying out the way, staying focused, locked in, and just understanding the mission. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's why I think that's going to be one of the best fights we're going to get. You know what I mean? The card as a whole could end up being one of the best cards of the year as well. So I can't wait to see it. Yeah, ask me. Yeah, nah, I said the same thing, Rob. I was laughing at that. I said, yo, little stuff like that make me laugh, yo. <laughs> he said, ask us, do we care? Like, when you say he focused, I was like, yo, Tank is a fool, bro. <laughs> Just the littlest shit is funny. Like, it's funny, and it go far. Like, he he, he reach a lot of people when he say the slightest things, yo. <laughs> ask us, do we care? <laughs> I was like, yo, you could just picture him saying this shit. I was like, man. They both put in that clever lane work. Facts, Mike, I think it's going to be one of the best fights, you know, that we're going to get. I think it's going to deliver. I, I'm I'm excited for that card. And I, I'm excited for that event that it's going to be. You know what I mean? Salute to Frank Martin, man. I don't think it could have had that opportunity, couldn't have came to a more humble person. You know what I mean? Um, you know, we all know the fight. Well, I know the fight that I would want at 135 the most, but. That ain't a bad runner-up fight either, you know what I'm saying? So Tank just moving one step closer to the type of fights that they say he won't deliver. And that's all we got to ask for. Josh was good with it. I just tighter like shit. Tank say that, say that. <laughs> yo, I'm telling you, every little thing is funny, yo. It's funny to me. Like, but Frank, Frank, too, though. Frank said, man, if you if you a Debo, I'm a Craig. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? I like all that talk, man. I like, I like the back and forth. I like the fact that Frank energy seem authentic. It don't seem it is authentic. Like, I don't think he, you know, just talking to be talking. I think he mean what he say. And he definitely is, bro. Unintentionally funny, bro. Probably don't have no idea we'd be just laughing at these tweets, bro. It should just be funny, man. I'm telling you. You could say anything. The littlest shit he say, man, it, it's funny. <laughs> and one more thing I'm going to touch on, too, man. Um. As far as the Sebastian Fundora fight and Tim Zhu, it was a bloodbath. I see a couple of clips that I'm gonna play where Tim Bradley gave his thoughts on it, and I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I'm gonna respond to it like he he gave his thoughts on what he thought about this fight and his cut. Doctor asked Tim Zhu every time he brought him over. He said, "Can you see?" Guess what Tim Zhu said? Yes, I can see. Can you see, Tim Zhu? Yes, I can see. Tim, we are conditioned that, that point, not to quit. At, wait, hold up, hold up. At that point, Polly, it's out of the doctor's hand. He's saying that it's out of the doctor's hands at that point where he asked him, could he see? And Tim Zhu said, yeah. Paulie was saying, yeah, but as fighters, we conditioned not to quit. So even if Tim Zhu couldn't see, he still was going to say he could because he wasn't going to quit. And I could believe that. I could understand that coming from Paulie and just given how tough Tim Zhu was. Look, the cut, the big gash happened. And he didn't waver. He just kept fighting. You know what I'm saying? The people that said fault, the ones that said fault is the ones that didn't know the rules. And that's the corner. The corner had no clue what the hell they were doing. Okay? A little bit to do with pro uh, pride. And there's a lot to do with the fact that they did not know the rules. After the third round, I would have stopped the fight. Yep. Mm. Man, if I and if I didn't do it in the third round, I would have done it in the fourth or maybe in the fifth. And if I was coaching him and I was thinking that we may possibly have a chance to knock this guy out, I would have said, "Give me two more hard rounds, win these rounds decisively, and then we gonna get on my we gonna get on up out of here." Because I would have saved my fighter. Mm, that's, that's interesting. And it's like I think be stopping it at four, it would be a draw. But I think at five, then it would go to the cards. 
and I feel like um he made he made he made sense there. It, it, that is a deeper conversation to have. The corner was not prepared to deal with that cut at all. They wasn't. They could they clearly didn't know what it seemed like they know what they was doing. And then while I level with Tim Bradley, and again, I'm just again in terms of saving a fighter, not I'm removing myself out of the I'm taking the fight fan hat off and just being, you know, the corner man. If that's my fighter, and I see him get a crazy gash like that on top of his head and it's bleeding right into his eyes. I don't know if I, you get what I'm saying? I don't know if I, if I want my fighter to try to gut it out, you know, 10 or so rounds with a cut in this, you know, top of your forehead that's bleeding directly into your eye and you continuously pawing at it, pawing at it, pawing at it. I don't know if I want to put you through that or do I want to just cut my losses and try to get a rematch? You get what I'm saying? But I do understand them allowing it to continue. I understand them letting Tim Zhu do what Tim Zoo did, but that was like a oh yeah, it's like it wasn't even a cut uh, a scale suit to my bro scale. It, it was like a, a a real wound, a gash. Like his head was opened up, and that joint was pouring. That blood was dark as hell coming up out of his head, man. It just looked bad. Cal cool and blessed to my guy. You feel what he said? I don't think there was a corner man that could have dealt with that cut. Vein there don't stop gushing. Yeah, it's possible, but I just still don't think they was they was equipped to deal with it at all. It just and maybe and again. To your, to your point, Kyle, if that was the case, then I think they definitely should have considered stopping it for that reason. You get what I'm saying? Just because what you're saying make a, a ton of sense. It's right. It was a vein there. It wasn't going to stop, and it was nothing they could really did that was going to completely stop it from leaking. But it was just terrible, and it was a mess. And I think just realistically speaking, like Tim Zhu's a hell of a warrior because I, that had to affect him losing that much blood. He continued to fight and land big shots. I think they were supposed to save their fighter maybe from themselves. You get what I'm saying? I think they was maybe supposed to save them fighters from themselves. I've seen fights get stopped with way less. So if they wasn't going to do it, the corner should have saved them from itself and lived to fight another day instead of put your guy through that much to the point where you lose. You get what I'm saying? The ju Notice Justin, only, the only time you would hear from him is when he locked into a fight. Yeah, or after somebody posts. Yeah, some nonsense in reference to him. Yeah, Tank Sal, he stay out the way. He be out of sight, out of mind. Definitely a dice roll. So look, there's no right or wrong thing in this in this in this situation. It's just an honest conversation for me. I get it, Paulie. It's also another clip, but Paulie, um, he kind of spoke about the ring physician, the medical doctor that be on ringside, and he kind of tore into him about, you know not doing his job properly like i said that was a ton of blood like that fight looked bad man salute to my bro skills too man but you know no bradley fan but he, he got some game this in him oh yeah bradley was tough tough as they come he definitely was tough as hell definitely tough as hell so look it, it was yeah it's no it's no right or wrong in that in that situation i can understand the team and wanting to allow the guy if you say you can see to continue i can understand the powers that be wanting the fight to continue and not end in the fourth round due to a cut and in early with their first rollout. So it's a lot of moving parts and, and variables in there that maybe were at play. But I think Tim Zhu really is a warrior. I think his team felt that and they just didn't want to pull the plug on a, on a, on what was a great fight because they they was going to war. You know what I'm saying? They was going to war. You know what I mean, they was going to war. Peace to my bro William Old School. My God, but man, yeah, man. So I don't know. It's, it's just tough. It's tough, but I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? Uh, look, Tim Zhu, he was a warrior. He he dealt with it well. He seemed like he dealt, He took his defeat just like he take his wins. You know what I'm saying? So he, he was gracious. They took a picture on to the next. But I will say this for conversation purposes, in my humble opinion, had it not been for that gash, that damn sharp ass elbow that split his head, um, it was like a pencil point, like just split his eye. It was like a his elbow was razor blade sharp, man. Split that man head like that. But had it not been for that, I think Tim Zhu beats him. Uh, I think he did a lot of damage very early. He 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 did some damage to uh, Fundor in about two rounds. Broke his nose up pretty good. He was hitting him with some big shots. I'm telling you, I really think him pawing at that blood and just kept wiping the blood. It was killing him. It was killing him. Absolutely killing him. M nothing but respect for Tim Zoo. Can't wait to see him again. Can't wait to see him again. I, I definitely think he was going to beat Fundora, Cal. I think he was, bro. Had it not been for that gash in his head. 
Yeah, Gash was some nasty work, bro. It was some nasty work, man. Like that in the building was good with it. He was gonna stop Fundora. I think so too. D. I I was trying not to let it. I was one gonna go that, but I think so too, bro. I really do. He was hitting him with some some serious shots. Y'all make sure y'all smash that like button, sub to the channel if you haven't. Much love to everybody that stayed to the end of the show, man. This been a hell of a one. Know what I mean, we closing out from losing all that blood. Makes you weak and dizzy. I'm shocked. Yeah, he lasted another level. You get what I'm saying? All them damn rounds with that gash in his head. That wasn't a cut. And good emphasis that skill put on like wound because that's what that was. That wasn't no damn cut. That was a real, you know, split in his head, in the top of his head. That should just look crazy. So it, it's it's tough because you believe in your fighter and you don't want to stop it if he can see and you want the show to go on. You get what I'm saying? But that at the same token, the, the spot, it just sometimes you just gotta you gotta chalk it up and cut your losses. Like had they probably known that it was gonna affect them the way that it did, they probably would have pulled the plug. They just probably figured that their guy would find a way to get the job done. And I, I ain't mad at them for feeling that way. I I totally get it. I totally understand them feeling like they job the guy was gonna get the job done because he's tough as they come, man. Salute to Tim Zoo. That was a blood bath for sure man they absolutely went to war no one in this situation stop it they say he could have won yeah yeah let it go on face permanent damage to the career a monumental damage to his health yeah cut equals red blood vietnam war that purple i'm telling you it looked it looked crazy then it skills the blood it was dark it was looking crazy i was like bro just joint look like an mma fight didn't it bro i was like man that looked like that and and, and you know what not for nothing you could tell by the way he was bleeding, that was clearly an elbow. You know a punch won't do that. A punch didn't do that. You know that was an elbow like MMA. That's what that was. He That was a lot of blood. I got scratched on the right side of my outside of my eye, way smaller than that. On the outside where if, if, if it was bleeding, it wouldn't have bled into my eye. Man, I can't tell y'all how lightheaded I felt. Like I want to say like three or four minutes after it happened, not even a full five minutes, the, how lightheaded I was, I was so glad the fight was over. I would have definitely lost if I had to keep fighting. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I was lightheaded as hell. I'll never forget that. So I'm just imagining a gash and it's pouring, like what it could possibly do to your, your, your you know what I'm saying? Your, your, your energy levels, you know what I'm saying? They really could sap you. Open door. Mm -hmm. They said everybody in front row of the main event got blood on their clothes. I believe it, Macho. I believe it. Remember when um Warren Buffett watched watched Mayweather train? Remember when Warren Buffett watched Mayweather train and he was like, "I'm gonna get some blood on you," and he ended up getting really getting blood on him from watching him. So it's real. That blood be splattering and flying, bro. It's real. Cap Duno, you cap case your core on the street. I don't know what Daniel talking about. It's like you speaking English, but ain't speaking English. Um, um y'all smash the like button, man. Y'all keep smashing the like button. If you haven't, make sure you smash it. But like I said, man, this is you good. I got Canelo for you. The end of the year pay-per-view, rest of champ. You'll be ready to find this beauty. I'm kicking Canelo ass. I want that. I want payday. I want payday. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> you know it, you know. I want payday. I damn sure I'll fight Canelo tonight, bro, for the money he giving. For the money people making fighting him, we could fight tonight. You dig? I'll fight him tonight. You feel me? But uh, hold on. Tim Zoo fought Earl Spence Jr. Who would win? Who do you think would win? Because again, it's it too, many, too many variables with Spence. You know, the yeah. one positive variable is he says at a 154 he's going to be stronger. He doesn't have to struggle to make the weight. And he was, you know, it was pretty. Pretty known news around the business that Spence struggled a lot to make 147. So the one positive, the, the four Spence, the argument for Spence is at 154, he's more fresh. He's going to be able to breathe a little bit into his body, and it'll be a better version of Earl Spence. The opposing figure is we're basically what everybody's been saying. Is his eye okay? Has he been the same since the surgery? Has he been the same since that bad car accident? Is he going to be the same after getting beaten from pillow to post by Terrence Crawford? Which also, though, that's the kind of loss that you know fighters don't really recover from once they're they're past the 30 years old. You know, it's they, those kind of beatings change change you if they happen when you're older. You know, there's a lot of question marks. Personally, right now, if I would you put a gun to my head and say, okay, what do I think? I think Zoo probably knocks him out. 
And Paulie said he thinks Zoo went by knockout. Lieutenant Rob, make sure you smash the like button, sub to the channel, fam. You said Earl Spence is out of shape badly. He should retire and enjoy life. I don't think he out of shape badly. I think what you've seen is a guy that's not in, in camp, obviously, and in the gym every day training from day to day like he in camp, right? Um, His weight, I know Terrence Crawford said he looked like a linebacker, but Terrence Crawford just a different type of dude. That dude stay in the gym around the clock. He just what it is. Earl has been recently seen been taking pictures on the beach. He probably was just enjoying himself not too long ago. So it's completely normal for him to be a little up there in weight. I don't think his weight is as high as, as what people making it seem. And um, I still want to see him fight again before somebody calls his retirement. I don't think, think about it. Miguel Cotto would retire, like I said earlier, after Margarito beat him with them hand wraps. Think about how much he would have left on the table, right? You get what I'm saying? Fundora. Would have retired after getting knocked out by Mendoza. Think about the missed opportunity he would have had beating Tim Zoo and being a unified champion. So we just have too many examples of guys being able to recover from losses. And at least you want to be able to give him a fair opportunity to see what he got left instead of just calling for the man's retirement. I think people that's doing that are, you know, um, kind of shitting on him and just not giving him a fair shake as a fighter. He's put he's put on as a talent in every way, shape, and form. I definitely want to see see him in the ring one more time before I say he need to call it quits. And even then, I'm not I can't make the decision for him. But I would say he got a real question to add, ask himself and answer if he gets in the ring and looks like a shell of himself. But you at least gotta allow him that opportunity. Like I think people gotta keep in mind, Terrence Crawford is a hell of a fighter. So you know, Fundora is not a Terrence Crawford, and neither is Tim Zoo. You know what I mean? I can you think, let alone box, constantly wiping blood, flowing. Yeah, porn remind me of the cage. Old school MMA matchups. I'm telling you, back then, fighters into the cage where their lives, previous blood stained. Facts, bro. It'd be blood all stained all in the carpets. I mean, all in the uh, mat. Stitch Duran said Tim Zoo cut me. Didn't know what they were doing. Oh, cut man, Stitch Duran. Salute, salute to you, bro. Uh, cool, JC. Um, I, I ain't catch that, but. You know what I mean? I was feeling like it was something to be done, but at the same token, if it's in it's in the spot that it's in, right? Uh, maybe they did the best they can, but I thought it was they was a little unprepared to deal with that moment. You get what I'm saying? I'm not saying they could have fixed it, and you know what I mean? It wouldn't have eventually been a problem, but just from the looks of it, it looked like they just wasn't prepared for that to be part of the fight, for them to deal with fixing the cut. Do we believe Fundor? Do we, oh, do I believe he deserved a Fundora fight? Now, now check me out. If you if you looking at it from in terms of well, Terrence Crawford beat him, so Terrence Crawford should should get the fight over him. Well, we I was talking about this earlier. Then I would get where you coming from. But if you just look at the body of work that Spence put in, could you really say he don't deserve to fight a guy like Fundora? Because I give you something different to think about. What has Fundora done in the sport of boxing? Obviously, outside of beating Tim Zoo. That says he deserves to fight a guy that's on Earl Spence level, even coming off a loss. You know what I mean? That's still coming off a loss to the best fighter in the world. Don't mean you not elite. Just mean that you not better than that guy, right? So does Fundora deserve a fight with either Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence? That's a different way to look at it too, right? But if Earl Spence deserves a shot, absolutely, because he always stood on business. He always gave you the fights he said. Is This is no Mr. No Tune Up himself. So... Yeah, I don't have a problem seeing him get the fight, but I damn sure don't have a problem if Crawford was to get it. You get what I'm saying? People just be mad at these fighters, forgetting that they're supposed to put themselves in the best position po possible. They're not supposed to consider Earl Spence ain't supposed to look over at Terrence Crawford and say, oh, man, you know what? Well, he deserves a shot. I'm going to go ahead and sit it down. Nah, and the same thing for Crawford. Crawford going to make sure shake the best way he can. You know what I mean? He still hasn't recovered. It all depends, bro. And uh, you don't know if he has recovered fully because he's had a win since then and then a loss. So it's like been up and down. So you want to see if he's able to return closer to form. No evidence 340 in the building. He's just lost one fight and they treat him like he's a journeyman. That's what I'm saying, bro. I'm just not with the journeyman. Got to got to get that man some his just due respect. One loss is not equated to immediate retirement. Absolutely not. And we rocking with you, EJ. Go get that fun door of smoke. Got to see how he how fit. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Where he at with his skills? Level alone cha cha championship one, you give a good-ass whipping, chances are you may have to take one. Facts. If you can give him, you got to be able to take him. Thoughts on Saudi fights? Are they great for boxing? Salute to Lieutenant Rob. Um, 
I don't think Saudi fights are bad for boxing, but I think this the mindset or the mentality that they're fixing boxing, I think, is wrong. Listen, I'm not against nobody that's trying to put on fights that we want to see, but I definitely would rather see these fights be made over here in the States where I at least have an opportunity to possibly go to them. I'm not going to Saudi Arabia for no fights. I'm not even going to hold you, but um, it could be a good thing in boxing if they in it for the long haul. Right now, this could be a flash in the pan thing. I don't know how long they're going to be doing this, but we'll see. But I don't think it's bad for boxing, right? Anybody that's trying to put on great fights and give us our money's worth, you know what I mean? I respect it for what it is. You know what I mean? Kodo, I got this. Don Cell, Rob. And them people, yeah, I was about to say something. <laughs> Salute to my guy, Don. Uh, and Junior, one loss. Butter being one loss. Yeah, media railroad him. You can't do that. You, you got to give him a chance to at least see what he'll be. See what he'll be. You know what I mean? But salute to everybody in the building, man. Again, y'all make sure y'all smash the like button. You know I'm going to keep saying it. Make sure y'all sub to the channel and y'all notifications is on. Another dope build in the books. In the morning was saying Saudi is dangerous, but it's safer in the U.S. That's why I'm asking. Um, I listen, I know everybody got different different opinions, right? I just try to see things openly. Um, anytime that somebody is responsible for trying to put on fights that they deem great for boxing or we deem great for boxing, I can't knock them for doing that. But what's the longevity like with the Saudi situation? Do they plan to be a part of boxing in the foreseeable future for the long haul? Or is this just, uh, you get what I'm saying? Is it one of those things, right? So that's all. If they just in it for the long haul, then they they obviously got the money to influence guys that want to go over there and make fights with them, right? So I'm not against it. You know what I mean? I just want to see the fights as a fight fan, but I prefer them to see them in the States where we can all get to them. You know what I mean? But with that, man, much love and appreciation to everybody that stayed to the end of the show. Another dope build, man. Ain't too many people going to give you these four-hour lives like that. Just smooth rocking. No narratives. Narrative free. Just building on boxing. Salute to everybody that's super chatted. Cash at. Much love to y'all. Y'all make sure y'all smash that like button. Peace to the queen. Aisha, the queen. Miss Joette, my bro, Mike Kirkland. Skills. Salute to Lieutenant Rob. Appreciate you, Daniel. No evidence. My God, Don Thomas, the rest of the gang, Macho. Ace D for the win. My guys, my family, y'all appreciate all y'all. Y'all make sure y'all go tap in the hardcore boxing news. My good brother Jay Hardcore should be on in his second live of the day. If y'all do stop over there, make sure y'all tell him I said what's up, man. And y'all see me over there. So much love and appreciation to everybody. Salute to my guy, David Marcus. Peace to all y'all, man. Y'all already know my bro skills. We will be back tomorrow, 4 p.m. As always, to build on this good boxing. So with that, we're going to get up out of here, y'all. Peace to the fans. <laughs>
You know what I mean? I, I enjoyed uh, every moment of it. No, it was a great fight. I hope to get a rematch one day. I, I didn't feel too good. I mean, I, I felt a little weak. My legs didn't feel too much under me, but it is what it is. I signed the contract, and that's that. He's one and all on you. Yeah. You're the two biggest names in the division. I want to see it again. Yeah. I want to yeah. see it again now, and I want to see it when nobody has this yeah. Shut the f up, bitch. Shut your mouth. Shut the f Shut up. Shut your mouth. You good, bro? We already ready to go to 40, bro. We already.